Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome here to day number two of PCS3 Europe as we're getting into things for A and C, fighting against one another, juking it out, getting it going. We all thought we'd wear PUBG hoodies. It's just a coincidence. That's kind of weird. Welcome back here to the desk here with Team AFK. We've got Avenger, we've got Frost, we've got Kolaris. We're ready to go into the battlegrounds once again. Martin, yesterday we had a phenomenal day of games. Crazy hardships, phase dominating, looking good. Yeah, and I don't think we can put the, uh, a fatter, thick line be below the part of face dominating because that was mm. that was insane. Like we haven't uh, we haven't seen that in in some time. Like the last time I remember someone dominating that, how was Navi with their uh, wins back to back to back? So it's good to see the, them being able to come back after a short break and then uh, really showing the other guys that a, a short break is good for you. You can skip a tournament or two and then you can still be able to come back and dominate everybody. Yeah, definitely so. Part of me really wanted to interview them at the end of yesterday, Froz, just to kind of get their thoughts regarding the break that they had, their games yesterday, because mm. it was fantastic to watch, especially after that break. So uh, I think a lot of people are going to have to be looking out for FaZe here in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people wanted to see FaZe for DreamHack. They, were, they didn't play that one. They took a little break, as you say. But they came back very strong for a PCS start here. And yesterday mm. was just total dominance. And uh, speaking a little bit with them yesterday with uh, Gustav after the games, they were a little bit surprised themselves over, especially the last game, how they actually managed to get to the shack, how they would manage <laughs> to actually win that game itself as well, because they shouldn't have done that. But somehow, yeah. AT and Gustav, they just made it work. It was actually ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> as you say, of all the teams that should have won that game, FaZe in the position that they were in on Military Island to then move over and swim and find their spot. It wasn't to be them, but it was in the end. They got themselves yesterday 81 points across six games. And as you can see here, they are playing once again today. So Martin, everybody's going to have to be looking out for them here in the first week of the group stages. Uh, but we've got plenty of other names in the mix, especially Group C now joining the fray. Yeah, it's happy. I'm good to see. I'm happy and good. To, it's good. To, it's gonna be good to see, and I'm happy to see. Let's put it that mm. way. Uh, the guys that didn't play yesterday, like it's Liquid, it's Navi, Omakin, Northern Lights, Pull Up, Apex, and the Olympics, and after all, they obviously have zero points, uh, and it's gonna be kind of scary for them because I'm quite sure that Fixan is not gonna be afraid of pushing anyone, and they might be having mm. a little bit of fun with it today because an 81 point lead. Uh, to the teams that are coming in playing on the first day can be scary. Yes, I do. Know, I know we have uh, five days, including today, uh, more play days. It's going to be fine, but still, a team that has that big of a lead already and is sitting in such a comfortable position can be hmm. a kind of a scary team to go up against because they will not have any fears today. That's right. No, no fears here, FaZe Clan. Uh, but one of the teams, of course, that we have to talk about straight away here when it comes to Group C, uh, Patrick, is Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. They come off the back of that DreamHack victory uh, in brilliant fashion. Yeah, I mean, brilliant winning that one. But you also got to remember it's back to back. They also won the PSL just before that as well. So having two victories under the belt and coming out on second place for PCS2, I mean, they want more victories. No one, no one is... Uh, never like happy enough having only two wins and also of course pcs is going to be the big one so after getting a second place in uh, pcs2 this is their way of getting the uh, first place now but of course we're only in the group stage and for now yeah. they got to figure out okay what teams do we have close to us who do we need to deal with first as martin said as well face guns they are, but they are going to test their boundaries they have such mm. a good cushion they only need to be top 16 and with that lead they can basically go and do a little bit of whatever they want. They can take a pretty chill day today. All right, I'm going to ask you a question, Martin. And you can give me a yes or no if you want. You can justify it if you want, or you can dismiss me if you want. Is Group C the most stacked group we have out of these three? You're dismissed. Oh, uh, really? No, I, I, <laughs> no it's, it's hard to say. Like, looking at the names, yeah, they are definitely very strong. But mm. uh, you have to think that it's a stack group but they also go up against another group as well like it's it's mm. the combination of two groups we have to look at and uh i think today is uh is a super interesting uh, matchup here uh with a and c playing and i think uh, we're gonna see some yeah i think we're gonna see some interesting stuff to be honest yeah i think so too i think so as well i mean if you look at a, a digital athletics for example here froz a team that mm. you know for a long time 
it was a little bit of a meme, but now you can absolutely not call it uh, the meme. The, the meme has been dispelled by some of their recent form here, Froz, because they are looking so on point. I, I had fingers crossed to see if they would actually win DreamHack, but it wasn't to be in the end. But they looked great in the tournament. I mean, they looked super strong there. And back when they were a meme, it was a totally different lineup as well. So you can't forget about that. It's totally yep. different now how they play it from back then. Back then, that whole meme was that they would just dive center with four man, no matter what circle it is. Just go center, mm. go prone. And that's about what they would do. Nowadays, what you see is that they are taking basically every fight they can. And they got such strong fraggers that you want to watch out. You want to make sure that you keep your helmets for the late game. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Code Marco is an addition to that roster. Avenger has been great. We saw glimmers of it um, at the beginning of the DreamHack thing and then moving into the final. I think that's really where it kind of came into fruition. Yeah, for sure. Him and uh, Smash have been really been fragging out. And uh, I like the combination of rotations, uh, being able to find open spots in the center and then being able to really frag out mid and late game. <laughs> Uh, it really enables them to be in a great spot. I'm uh, I'm actually really curious to see how well they're going to be able to to perform today and and what their form is after be being having done so well in uh, in Rima. Yeah. Let's talk about another team that's uh, kind of one of the in inverted commas newcomers here to our PCS circuit as a whole. Froz. Oh, but I'm um, hearing that predictions are almost ready. But I was going to talk about Apex. You spoke about them yesterday. They're looking good. We'll see how they're able to do. But let's get to those predictions now here. Uh, and I will actually start with you, Frost. What, what are we thinking for today? I mean, I got to go with the back-to-back -back guys, right? I'm going to go with Team Liquid for today. Uh, I feel like they're going to come in strong here. They want to grab a lot of points. They want to have the strong start because then they can start figuring out, okay, what's happening here? What are the teams that are going to be the big threats for the finals and so on? All right, Martin. Uh, yes, I am going to go with a team that I think is uh, is coming back into great form. And I think they're going to be, uh, be doing well here in the group stage format. Uh, mostly because I, I think that they will not slow down. They will not uh, change anything just because it's a group stage and you only need to be top 16. Uh, I'm hmm. going with Navi. Uh, I, think, uh, I think they're going to be fragging out and uh, coming off strong today. All right. And then it falls now to the end of the team AFK, the K in that to make his prediction. And it is going to be Digital Athletics. We're going for it. I believe I would genuinely was rooting for them uh, to win uh, DreamHack. I after the road that this organization has had, the roster swaps, the changes in play style and things like that, I want to see them do good. I want to see it happen. Uh, so those are our picks here. Who's going to be doing well today? Noticeably, all three teams from Group C here, uh, which is interesting to say the least. I will say one thing, Martin, uh, when we look at the results from yesterday. Group A, I feel, had a little bit of a rougher time, aside from FaZe, obviously. But everybody else in that group, if you look at, like, I think it's two through six, all of those are Group B teams. So right. Group A's going to have to a little you know get a bit more on the board today what do you think uh yeah, mm, yeah i i can i can accept that uh faceland is, is gonna be leading group a quite nicely they're gonna probably yeah. uh, smash the the three ciphers um three digit points today honestly and i uh <laughs> like i was talking i was playing among us with some of the guys that were playing yesterday and um <laughs> the, the, a, a quite like the, a few tsm members a few faceland members and like and uh, every time we start a new round, they were like, face up, guys, face up. Like, they were jokingly <laughs> saying at each other, like, we're playing this game for fun. But they're just like, yeah, guys, let's go. Like, it's going to be, it's a good game. This is going to be a good game. Like, so they were, they were not denying that face was dominating yesterday. I, I think it's going to continue today. Uh, I'm just curious to see who else is going to be able to step up and who else is going to be, uh, be, be kind of following that charge. Isn't the whole point of that game lying? Yeah. That's why they put deep there so good at it. <laughs> they were lying. They were like suspects. Suspects, all of them. They're sus. Oh, dear me. What color do you play, Martin? Uh, mostly red, actually. Oh, Phaser. Oh, it's all That's a lie. Right That's a lie. He never plays red, That's by the way. Get him out of here. I do. All right. Eject him from the station. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Froz, Froz, what are your take here when uh, A and C are going up against one another? Floor's open. 
I mean, I think it's going to be super interesting. As you said, a lot of the teams from A yesterday, they got a little bit behind. We saw a lot of the B teams, their teams in Group B, being a little bit forward, except for Face, though. <laughs> so those teams are so close to each other right now that yeah. all of them need to actually grab those points, not only to make it up to the uh, teams in Group B, but also you want to have that cushion as well. You want to make sure that you kind of secure yourself a position into the finals. And I feel like... To do that, we might see some of the teams maybe try something else, maybe try going a little bit more aggressive than they did yesterday. Mm, fair play, fair play. Uh, well, woof, from us to us. Uh, I think uh, what is important as well to note when you look at Group C is I still want to see, I want it, Martin, I want to see the Northern Lights resurgence. I want to see them back to where we had them when they were challenging for the top spots. What, what are your thoughts? Um, yes, I, 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 uh, oh, it's the Navi lads, they're all going for the, the hair down the, which are we back to the late 90s here, uh, hair in, in the, on the forehead, look at that, oh yeah, let's go, more of that, it's going great, I'm gonna go with that, with that for tomorrow as well, no, uh, I think this, this part of like NLT, they have been, he's in a, he's in the bathroom though, NLT have been through a rough part, and it's, hmm. it's also coming down, it's also coming down to them having to like adapt and come up with new ways of playing yeah. rather than play the same style because a lot of teams are kind of copying the style and there's not too much space. All right, let's get to the commentators here for our Miramar to start things off. We're heading to Toby and Hypog for all of the Sandy action. Thank you so much, James. Hypog, let's get this one started a little more calm today than where we started off yesterday, right? Straightforward plane. I know it's new teams in there and all, but... But how how about if we just just chill out a little in the start of today? But well, hopefully we're going to be eased into things today, unlike yesterday. Uh, <laughs> one thing I refuse to discuss with you today is circles. Um, <laughs> so that's the last mention of that word that we're going to make. But uh, Faze obviously pulling away from Monty. Poor plane for Monty. They don't want to stretch across. We saw them do the same thing yesterday. Yeah. On a similar plane. Um, again, obviously a bit of a switch up here. Omicron and DA are where my eyes go towards because we know yeah. from DreamHack and we know historically this is, I wouldn't necessarily say a contested drop spot, but it's definitely pressure, um, obviously for circle one, depending on where it pops. And it has been an issue with uh, rotations a couple of times. We have seen DA try and contest vehicles up here before. And I think as you can see, Murd already scrapping a car there. Smash doing the same thing. That's kind of been their thing. They go up here. They make the rotations out from Chubasera a little harder for the Omarkin team. But, I mean, as you can see here as well, there's plenty of vehicles for everyone to grab. So it should be all right. Also, pay attention to Ents not playing today. Apex will have yep. space out on that east side towards Impala tomorrow, though. That's going to be a different story. Tomorrow is going to be an east side cluster on, um, on Miramar in particular. So uh, I hope Apex are <laughs> enjoying all the space they're given today because well, they won't have that much available tomorrow. It's actually good because tomorrow, obviously, we take Wildcats out of the equation. So there is potentially a little bit of space to ease that pressure. But you're absolutely right. I mean, Apex and Ents have been pressuring each other for, from the get-go, to be honest. And talking about pressuring from the get-go, we've got eight seat. Obviously, this is their backup drop or audible drop, I should say. And Texas Did Rangers are over here in close proximity. Did we just jinx Apex and saying they need I think we did. So they didn't have to enjoy it. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> immediately was the pink pony take down Simsy. Oh no. It was too much space, guys. You didn't have that much space. You couldn't spread that much. Just just a little, little less next time because oh, that's that's unfortunate. Either way, as you were saying, I mean, Texas Rangers and, and FaZe. I did see Rangers jump down here. And honestly, I thought we were going to see FaZe go further east. I, I don't know if they were expecting Porto Paraiso to probably be contested. There were a lot of teams jumping out early, practically instantly, to be honest. So they were probably expecting more teams to go in that direction. But instead, they've opted to, I don't want to say contest the Texas Rangers team, but they are they, well, real close to them, which does, in fact, limit their um, their looting kind of opportunities down here. Pink Pony, a few bullets fired. It's going to be Archip shooting up towards the, uh, the guys from Wildcats. And I think he's... He's got to consider maybe getting the hell out of here before more Wildcats come in this area. A little bit of a flex north out of Leonis here. We haven't really seen the Wildcats go for any space along that road. So it's interesting to see Levent up there. Maybe just thinking they've got a bit of a, an opportunity early on to find some ground. Mm. Again, that, that road can be an absolute nightmare if you, if you want to... Uh, if you want to look for something early on, again, uh, teams that drop around Bendito, especially to the south side, they do tend to flex along that ridge. 
And uh, I mean, that hangar in particular, the, the, the compound we just had on the screen is, is usually a hot spot for teams to group up early on. We have Liquid coming out here to the top of their ridge. Code Marco's got over here pretty sharpish himself. Obviously, we know they were dropping north side of Tumor. So Mexi's got to be careful here. If there's a storyline you can pretty much always bring into the early game when DA, I mean, that, that would be DA and Liquid on Miramar in particular. They always find a way to intertwine somehow. Whether the kills come out of it or if it's just a few a few shots going off here and there, they always seem to want to go in the same direction. So obviously, I mean, they do look close to one another. But let's see this time around if any casualties will be found off of it. Oh, no. Yeah, Mexi's way out, away from the building. He's actually shooting at one of the other DA members here trying to pull up. Clip is coming to back him up. Marco lands a couple of shots, but he'll be careful now. Mexi going to find himself in a 1v2, potentially 1v3 situation here. This is unusual. Shift up, you have plenty of space towards the other half. Of course, Face Clan, I mean, Face Clan, sorry, TSM ain't around. And uh, and, and bystanders who were looting up here as well yesterday aren't around either. So maybe Rich Edge thought we were going to have more space they were actually given. Let's see Clip now, though. 1v4, at least for now, against the entirety of Digital Athletics. Will Liquid be here to help him, or is he going to have to fight these off on his own? Oh, Nate comes out. Is he going to do damage? Yes, I think he will, but not enough to get the knock. Yeah, Mexi's just got to play his life here by as much time as possible for Liquid to come over and reinforce, but there you go. Mexi going to come through. Mert will fall first for DA here. He's actually going to peek back out. Marco gets knocked, and the beta comes no, in and gets smashed no, down. There no, you go. No, DA, no. you're going to fall immediately. The team kill from Digital Athletics gifting that one to Liquid. That is massive. That is so huge. Oh, and so unfortunate. You really hate to see it. So unfortunate. Wow. Let's see if we can get a replay on that one. With Thralius had the angle, makes it as a quick oh, It oh, just no. lined up. It's it's yeah. too good to be true. Well, that's that, that's why, and that's why pushing buildings that are narrow in general are absolutely well, this, yeah. horrendous. This this building as well as what no toy. I mean, it's the same as the prior building on Arango. It's one of the most notoriously yeah. difficult buildings to clear out just because of that long corridor. It gives players the opportunity to pull off plays like that. And again, it, you're right. They lined up for each other in the corridor. It's maybe just a miscommunication, but really unfortunate way to go out in game one of the day here. But I was going to say, you know, Liquid, we saw them doing a lot of this early flex now, early splitting, spreading very, mm. very thin, taking control of compounds. And I mean, the hard counter to that is doing what DA did. Pull up at four, you get the information. You've got to assume that's Liquid there. So I don't fault yeah. them for going for it. Oh, no, not at all. And Code Marco was up here already. I mean, it was a great play from them, but unfortunately, just a little a little uh, too many players trying to fit through there in the, at the same time ends up getting them killed. Super unfortunate. Uh, because as you said, I mean, the initial play, the initial like aggression early on was a wise yeah. move. Just weren't quite able to execute it properly. Yeah, and I mean, when Mexi started opening up, up onto his teammate, Marco's got the information there. There's only one person shooting. He's only observed one person there. He's got the off angle to cover mm. that crash. So it was a good setup. Mexi, play, Mexi did very well to play his life there. That's the one thing. Yes. The reinforcement was uh, was crucial from Liquid. Stay alive until the cavalry arrives. And, uh, <laughs> well, for, for the sake of Mexi, the cavalry was kind of also on the opposing team, but it worked out <laughs> the, for him regardless. The cavalry regardless. was already in the building. Yeah. The, the cavalry was there. <laughs> Unknown to him, the cavalry had already arrived, and, and, and they helped him a little bit. It was a 5v3. Chris, well, he's going to find himself an arm. Sure he ain't going to be too uh, displeased with that. A nifty gun to uh, put in the hands of a guy with that caliber of talent. Let's see, Omar can now try to wrap up from the south side. Omar can actually, I mean, they don't normally have trouble in these type circles, but they don't get it easy either. They're coming in late from the south, this time around actually getting further center than I thought they would. But then again, of course, remember, we just kicked out an entire team that would be pushing in from that south side. That's going to open up some space. DA and Liquid, had they not been fighting there, DA would probably have been rotating further east, and that would have been... Omar can, if not forced to take a fight, yeah, then yeah. maybe forced to be in some some trouble there. Face, well, they're going to be coming in from a side of the circle. They're probably not used to coming in from, given the fact that they normally would be in Monte at this point and going, it's not over power grid, they're somewhere south around. Now they're finding themselves next to Impala, and we'll see how they fare coming in from the east. Yeah, going to head all the way up towards Oasis, potentially. Apex still lurking on the side of Bendita, as we know. They did lose Simzy early on. I'm not sure exactly where Pink Pony relocated to, whether or not they're still kind of aware of Apex positioning. But uh, FaZe 
Gonna stop early and gonna try and scout something out here. Intent's gotta be careful here. If they get an open angle onto the rooftop, we know how easy it is to to get flushed yeah. out once you get down on our rooftop. Well, he does have the chimney to work around, but uh, we'll see if they are to aggress on him or not. They're split three way right now, Apex. I mean, they're still close enough that they can bag a bit, uh, can come back each other up, but one quick knock and an immediate rotation on it. And I'm not sure Calvin is going to be over that hilltop in time to help out. They've seen him. They know that he's on the roof. And you can see Ghost Stuff. He's giving the info across. That's two players spotted. When do you start shooting? He wants one more there. Now two guys are shooting. And what can you do you if you're intense in that situation? Absolutely nothing. Now the question remains, how does FaZe play off of this? They just got the circle now too. So are they opting to aggress towards that position? Or do they say, great, we got the knock. Now let's reposition. Now we know they won't be looking at us. That allows us time to rotate. Incense will fall. Enough damage was done to him after he got knocked. No rest comes in and they will be able to split out accordingly. Well, the problem is here, FaZe are definitely going to have the kill feed knowledge. Nothing really going on early game, so they're going to yeah. know Apex are down one. Fud's face already crossing paths with Ival, but Calvin did send it straight across to that concrete. And Pink Pony actually might be pulling up on the same compound as Fuzz. Well, they're thinking about it at least. Market coming in full speed from the south. Where are we seeing Gustav and Uber right now is not usually a hard prior spot in this early circle. Also, they probably aren't expecting too many people to be out here that early, especially in that phase clan. Let's see now, though. Shift trying to hold off Shift W. They already lost one to the German team, and uh, they don't want to lose more, so try and scare them off here. It's uh, going to be their strat moving forward. Oh, Market. Going out to the east, they usually play these circles from around there. Oh, let's hop back to Ray Stretch though and see how they can fare here. Yep, Shift W full committing to the mean ass pull up. Ray Stretch did lose one earlier. Doozy gonna catch a headshot there as well. This is gonna try and follow up with the nade. Well, actually, the nade is fantastic. Ow. It's actually Shift that falls, <laughs> not a doozy. He will get the first aid kit off. Well, actually, med kit. He's up to 100 HP now, but only two people on the feet and actually shift w got split angles on this they've surrounded razor edge inside mean ass could be razor no, edge no. going out as our next team here what uh panko hello mirados last time i checked they make quite a bit of noise regardless of that seems like texas rangers weren't ready for it. at least panjo was and he's gonna go down mexi now trying to reverse the vehicle down the hill get into safety they know they're there. They got the knock. They'll probably get the flush on it as well, but I don't think a whole lot more of it will happen. Shift W in the meantime, you see them trying to yeah, get around. Sucker will find Udyr, and that is going to be Razor Edge off to a tough start here on the first game of this day as well. Greg, got to be careful with two members of Navi's tenure and the tab going to pull up, and there you go. Not careful enough, I guess. And that's the, uh, that's the problem. We're still holding on to these splits here all of these teams yes. that are rotating in trying to wrap they're going to be moving as four so if you're holding an edge compound like this it's very risky to do so as a solo and they don't they don't gain anything from that toby look look at, look exactly. at where the other three members of after all are exactly i was just gonna say you don't gain anything first off and also if you're going to play splits you don't i mean if they call your bluff you get the hell out of there once you hear one like more than one even one potentially vehicle come rolling your way you move out when you have a split like that's why that's why you have those splits because you can afford to back off if you're sitting four in a compound well you're probably not going to run it you're going to take the fight staying there but when you have a four-way split like that you need to be faster at backing out and unfortunately for well, the after all player there wasn't quite able to do so liquid moving as a death ball here all in convoy Are you chasing and them I think they might be chasing onto the Texas Rangers here. They obviously did get the first kill onto this. Clip actually going to pull himself right oh, into no. danger. He's actually going to fall. He has gone behind, but the nade might actually confirm him. The rest of Team Liquid, meanwhile, are going to try and mount an attack onto the long building. I like the play. They got the initial knock and kill, and then when they saw them rotate out from the hillside, they go, well, they're only three. We have four. Let's push onto it. But fortunately, Clip caught a little opposition in that vehicle there. Now let's see if they can hold off against Liquid here. Texas Rangers, anyways, looking around for something. They came in dead last yesterday. They want to get off the better start today with what happened for them yesterday. Maxi finds one, but he's going to go down and return. Wildcats over the hilltop, able to get a third party angle. Just leaving James and Ibby. You see, actually, James going to find any way on the front door. So it's just top standing now. Wildcats foaming at the mouth now. They can, they can sense the kill points down there. Circle did shift all the way back over to the west. I didn't want to talk about it, but this now is a very, very tricky situation. Again, they are in the circle, so they've got a lot of time. But you can see on the minimap, FaZe have also pulled into the mix now. They've heard all this going on at the compound, and they are four-man strong. Oh. 
think they made wonders against the oh, ages oh, moments oh. ago in a similar building and here they find the kills to face though gonna be the third team to come say hello up and around this area let's see if they can hold off against the now some extended wounded team liquid they will have to get out of this building eventually it's sure it's inside the current circle but also against the fact that it should be inside the next the thing is right now i mean if you don't have love and Vita, which currently no one's residing in you're gonna be in trouble getting any kind of control because there's so much open space between bandita and minas where you just cannot find yourself in the open at least not this early in the game yeah i like this from phase though again that you know they've seen this in the kill feed they want to come yeah. across yeah. pressure whilst this fight was still going on unfortunately liquid did manage to clean it up so they can play time right now but they're relying heavily on the wildcats keeping phase at bay Look at how they're positioning 2-8C is the one in charge of making sure the Wildcats, even if they peak, he's got to shoot, he's got to pressure them down again. But now shots are fired once more. BSD, unfortunately, not able to land the shots. Might want to start shooting at the buggy to shift the cut the tires. The base gets caught here. That could be rough rotations coming out for them should they want to try and make a run somewhere. Yeah, there's actually Apex, I think, pressuring from the north as well. You can see yep. some traces dropping down on the minimap, so... He's definitely pulled themselves into harm's way, but they haven't lost anybody just yet. I mean, it's going to be a massive investment of utility to keep them alive. And meanwhile, Liquid going to slip out the back door and head on their way. Liquid going to say, nope. In the meantime, FaZe are being shut at now by Omar and Ant Navi as well. Everyone can see FaZe. No one can see Liquid anymore as so they venture into the blue. But though, it's going to make this run on up. You have to expect that Wildcat to prep for a potential push up the hill. Go stuff. Actually going to, I guess you can say, allow for Rupture to back off here. I thought Uber was going to be the one with the surprise angle. But no, Uber is going to sit tight. He's going to be the, uh, the spring trap that they can run into. In the meantime, let's see where the circle is headed. I mean, this just makes it, I was going to say, it makes it really difficult for FaZe to find a way out here again. Yeah. Getting across that, that ridge into Bendita. You're kind of committing yourself to playing down there. Liquid do actually the engine cut, but Gusha did hear it. After all, still pretty split. They're doing exactly the same thing they were doing in the previous oh. circle. There's one member down wow. here. That name, that's the, I thought we would have done more, but maybe it bounced a little too fast, but learning from their mistakes. Goose, you're going to regroup this time instead of, trying to lurk a little late on the compound i love uber that immediate creeping. disengage get out of there you can see him <laughs> uber is just waiting for the uber is waiting for the wildcats players to focus elsewhere once he hears them shooting once they're busy that's when he goes like that's when he peeks over and uber does this so dangerous like, he can get those like two knocks in the matter that's of one and a half seconds just get the instant transfers down find the kills but now he heard a vehicle move doesn't know how many people were in it of course but he knows that if they take the fight to them now, they will have the numbers. Question is, is AT and Gustav, how are they positioned to try and take this fight now? I like this now. As soon as Gustav and AT get contact, Uber and Fuzzface have a fantastic angle downhill. He's got to be aware of what's going on. You can see in the kill feed, Uber's actually just found Rupture to potentially open that up. And there you go, AT going to spring the trap. So two will fall from the Wildcats, and it's just BSD here to defend. Levent was the man in the vehicle that went all the way down into Bendita. <laughs> It's actually liquid again. Third party. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot you can do with your Wildcats. Do a great initiation by face and knowing that Levent had pushed over the hills up again. We didn't know how many people were in that vehicle, but they knew for a fact they would have the numbers if they engaged in the fight. They say we gotta take the fight to them now if we want to be able to make moves here. Levent is gonna find himself now a solo player left alive. Only one kill for the team so far, and Wildcats are gonna be in trouble. But now look to the east. We have Navi pulling up right behind face and they're going straight into a death trap here the tap is driving across the open but Senya is going to be the one to find first base oh yeah Gustav will fall as well great off angle from orange there Fade it out. Uber going to try and get the tap down he does get that one probably just going to take this flush instead of looking for another now I mean Navi not necessarily in the best of spots Uber going to have some fantastic shots onto Senya as well can they reset? It looks like AT is going to try and go for a res or two. Uber's got to hold the line here. Senya falls from afar. Vasco getting involved in this. Orange now coming over, just hunting Uber. Against 
buying time here. Wants to allow for the rest to come up. One is already up. Let's see if they can get the Sagan up. Ooh, but those fall. That should be a flush confirmed in a matter of seconds. Senya will fall. T-Bone able to find him from afar. Now, AC3 damage towards Orange. And Navi are going to be the ones now in trouble. They were the ones laughing, shooting down towards face earlier when they had to fight with both Liquid and Wildcats, and all of a sudden, they find themselves in that exact same position. Best of luck on his own now. And you know what? Face Clan might be able to get Uber up here. Yeah, they might do. Best I'm going to try and send a nade over to try and confirm Uber, but the timing on that res from AC is just absolutely perfect. As soon as he sticks it, leaves his teammate to go for the res on the other, and he's there to back up and trade Uber. Fantastic play from Face Clan so far. Brilliant defense against Navi again. They showed really, really good awareness to try and pull up and cast phase off guard, but they have their head on a swivel today, Toby. Yeah, Navi must have thought that like, like the face clan committed more to pushing into Lapentita and that they would have the backside free when they saw the fight escalate with uh, with Wildcats, but no, they stayed down south. Face clan, they weren't able to be shoved around, and Navi, while they tried, did not succeed and take them out. Best of luck's gonna be by himself. He is in the center of the circle, but he ain't gonna have a whole lot of space to move around now. So much action here <laughs> after all tried to get something going did not work out their way whatsoever they will be slaughtered in a matter of seconds Omar can try and now get players up on their feet. Vasco was down. Let's see if he will be able to get rest. Page is going to toss some smokes up there, but Northern Lights, they should have enough knowledge on this one. Actually, you can see Ivel is the one trying to pop the tires, or maybe explode the vehicle to get himself a kill there. Page going, no, Ivel, don't do this to your former teammates. Yeah, I think, yeah, Lou's going to try and send a Molotov. Oh, we're hitting oh, the tree. No. Oh, no. So unlucky. So unlucky. That yeah, nice. perfect. That nice. perfect. Oh, <laughs> Right on the money. Sauna boys now trying to push in. Let's see what they can do. Chris swaps over, gets the barrel out, gets himself one knock. Let's see if he can find the second. Will he find it? Oh my lord, Chris, you absolute beast. Finds the second immediately. Here comes the third. Chris finds it. Will he find the fourth? No, just exactly not. But Frank is there. And that, my friends, is how you eliminate Sauna boys. Shift W building momentum right now. Already up to 12 <laughs> kills, I'm pretty sure, after that one. But what a fantastic hold again. Around the south side of Minas, a double drop coming across the center of the circle. That could be tempting for Shift W to clean up before they make their way in to the next circle. Fenerbahce did pull up early here. They haven't been too active. And I mean, when they've already got an orm on the table, why not get another two crate weapons, right? And when you can land shots like that too, everyone's got to be fearing for their heads. Holy moly, Shift W, was that a great hold there? Faze have got themselves down into their uh, PGC comeback territory. We know how deadly they are from that spot. See if they can hold on to it. Some nades now from Shift W getting sent Fenerbahce's way. That one oh, just bouncing off the rim. The problem is now you can see <laughs> there's two vehicles wedged in the trench. So they don't really have a get out here. <laughs> No, and the vehicle that's out doesn't have any tires anymore. The thing yeah, is, exactly, shift up. Yeah. I mean, they had to invest quite a bit to get to where they were. I mean, might as well just give them an MK as well while you're at it. Um, the thing is, for shift up, you mean, oh my god, they get two crates off of that too. Yeah, that's... there's a double crate. Yeah. Yep. Why not? Uh, why not get yourself three times level three gear? And they get the circle as well. Could not have asked for anything more. Oh my god, I want. I really want. <laughs> I really want Chris to just run the MK and the Orm. That's what I want to see. Yeah. Why not? Just greet it out. <laughs> and then we'll see someone go well i get the grosser i guess and be a little a little sad about that like who's the who's the player that doesn't get level three gear here that's gonna be the question who was the guy who, who did something to not deserve level three gear in this game we'll have to uh keep our eyes on that but of course i mean for now it's gonna be all about love and Dita. best of luck well he's inside the circle for now he can chill for at least a little bit pink pony they will have to take a fight eventually either to liquid or face all well to be honest both of them they have to make their way out of here but um it does not come without a fight. I simply don't see all these four teams staying alive there on the south side. You see as well, teams in Ibby still up. But they're not going to have an awful lot to hide behind once this one closes. Pink Pony. They have a good spot on the edge here. And again, they can stay out of line of sight of anybody really and just wait out Liquid Chris. 
<laughs> Chris just holding Fenerbahce inside those trenches. Not going to allow them to do anything to get out of there. Do you think this is perfect? Because if Chris lands that, if it actually goes in, oh, it's going to be just Ooh. short. If it had gone in, they would need to jump out to stay alive. You can't do the whole Counter-Strike thing where you throw a smoke on the fire and it goes out. That entire floor would be completely like filled with like moldy fire and they would have to jump out and that's what we would be waiting for them. So a nice attempt, unfortunately, though, for Chris doesn't quite work. He's going to slow down a little bit. We are into the top eight now, so we are in placement territory for a couple of these teams that did take casualties early on. It's good that they've made it this far, but... Again, it's how much you can salvage out of the situation. It really is. I mean, Pink Pony, they've taken their vehicles inside the circle. They know they're going to have to take a fight at some point, but I'm surprised to see, again, maybe it's one of those we're not as experienced a team, or maybe they don't dare take the fights to teams that are... I guess you can say it's bigger than them in terms of fame and whatnot. It's just I want to see some of these open qualifier teams there to take the aggression to even the more known teams. Pink Pony oh. have a chance here to even like to, to go in and on the other side of oh, potentially no. liquid, and it's not happening right now. Oh, look at this! I am. Well, he pushed up the hill. You go. Oh, hello there, Uber. Gets himself a kill. Packs off immediately after. That's gonna weaken phase in. Arguably one of the better positions inside it. Deems going to eat a little bit. Just 38 damage from that nade, but you can see Giria did push up a little bit to try and find an angle. Uh -oh. That second one is perfect onto Deems, though. He'd be now doing what he's often best known for, hiding inside this smoke, creating a little smoke drain. And actually, Brexco going to pull up on top of Fenerbahce and try to take the fight to him. You see Mr. Sadat has fallen. Schofield is down. Rid does find Brexco, though. Shift oh, W, full speed falling. Watch out, breaks for there's a vehicle coming. Oh, oh can he find it? No, he can't. Up. Level three gear. Ain't gonna keep them alive. Chris, though, once Holy again, moly. is there to save the day. 16 kills and counting for Shift W. Team Liquid in trouble once more. Pink Pony did do as we expected, try to wrap around and get those kills, but Eevee somehow remains on his feet, at least for now. Face up, preoccupied, trying to deal with Apex out towards the east as the circle once again hits north, and Chris might be able to get all those reses up there. Oh, the last bullet to the spray, spray there catching <laughs> Ibby, yeah. I, I'm, I mean, that didn't look good from Shift W. I'm hoping they can get three back on their feet, but it looked a little bit uh, disjointed. Oh, Calvin's was... going for that molly into the shack. Gonna get taken out by FaZe, who are peeking over. A bit of instant karma there. Ivel still up. But again, he's not got many options here, to be honest. It's, uh, no. it's a matter of when, not if. Yeah, if Pink Pony can get a knock down towards Northern Lights, you might be able to do something. But I think this is, hey, I'll try to get a kill. If I can't, I am might just tank the blue. Having said that, it does have a bit of a ridge, but nah, Spiro is going to be able to read that one. Takes him down, and now she tells you, as you can see, three back on their feet. Oh, no. slug. He had to shoot from the push. Eventually, okay. he's going to find Fuzz Space immediately. <laughs> But then he's going to be met with the wrath of the entirety of face there. But look at this pink pony trying to salvage of the top of it. Okay, good stuff now. Actually going to catch some good damage onto Vampire. Force him off that head peak. Giria got to hold the line here for pink pony. Ace, he's actually going to find one. Ace, he comes over the top now. Look at this. They could completely backstab pink pony here. Phase mounted for Vampire. Going to find both. Ooh. Archie finds the final. Phase will be eliminated in fourth place. Good hold from pink pony. Yeah, nice shooting there in the end of it. Good timing on the third party as well. It was, as I said earlier, anticipating. I wanted them to there go aggressive. And when finally happened, it worked out for them too. Now let's see the circle. It's going to oh, just exactly allow for circle to stay up on that hillside. And uh, they need to do as much damage as they can now. Do not allow for the other teams to get in positions where they can hold you off. Do all the damage you can here and now before you're forced down that hill. Oh, I thought there was a connection. Chris, no, Chris, yeah, Chris I, just I casually thought... swaps over. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Chris just cashes swaps from his, from his arm over to his MK14. Just, I got them all. I got them all. And they do get Brexco back up as well. Again, this is the benefit of holding on to this high ground position. Zocker's actually in a fantastic position mm. to punish Vampire and Archie down on this rock. You've got two frags that you could send out that way. And you can also potentially get some free damage onto aim lol, because I don't think they left him a vehicle. Unless I'm mistaken. Oh, he is still behind the Bronco. Yeah, so unless the tires are gone on move. that. Yeah, exactly. 
can't get away from that position. Sokka is going to be... Well, the, 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 the dip itself won't be in up where he is. So that's why you can see him trying to smoke off. He does have the hillside to shoot from. But as I said, they want to do as much damage as they can. They will be forced down the hill eventually. You can see already now, Pink Pony are in a great position to hold off. They need to get... If they can get Perfectus down on this rocket... Oh, nice shot, Sokka. 17 kills for Shift W. Can you find one more? That will be massive damage. Comes in and Chris with the last bullet in the chamber finds it. We're at 18. If they can bring this home for a chicken, then that would be massive. But right now, even though they have the numbers, it's a 2v2v3. 2 2 but correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, I think if this more is a 4v2 right now, everyone's looking towards Shift W. It is indeed, yep. Yeah. Haven't got a lot of space. Zocker does finally <gasps> land the nade onto the backside of that. And this could be yes, one more. the opening. Shift W has one more nade. Zocker takes a lot of damage. Vampire game fending him off so he can try and get this res going. Another nade coming out on top. Oh, actually, no, it's a flash. They're going to try and push They're it. Flashing them to make the. This is so chipples. You run, you have to make that play. No, it won't happen. Vampire finds some sucker. Falls as well. Oh, it's no. all Chris now trying to see what he can do. And it's a dangerous run to make. And it ain't going to happen. Shift W will fall. But I think, regardless of that, they will get the overall win in terms of points here in the first game of the day. Northern Lights now up against Pink Pony for the win. Yeah, you got a question if that second nade could have been invested on the Reds there instead of pushing down. Yeah. But they did have to come down eventually, so can't fault them with the game they've had. Northern Lights now a 2v2 with Pink Pony. Nade getting cooked out from Lou. Spyro coming up. Try and back him up here. I think in terms of ridge control, it's actually in the favor of Pink Pony, to be honest with you. Northern Lights have got to crest this hill way before Pink Pony have to move off their spot, but... Depends really on how it lies the other side of this ridge. You can see Lou holding. You can see he's conscious of this flank onto the rock, but Archie and Vampire game can't play slow here. They need to look for an opening. And yeah, that's what is worrying me right now. You can see Lou and, uh, and Spiro both being aggressive, looking over the top, eliminating angles as they peak. They know for a fact that there's only one direction the remaining two pony players can be in, and that's just over the ridge straight ahead of them. And as you can see now, Vampire, they will be forced to make a move. Flashes are coming in. Molly's being thrown in the other direction. More Molly's up available for Spiro. Now shots being fired. Lou, plus the first, won't be able to get the knock initially. This being hit a second time round. No one have a Vampire. Will fall. This is a 1v1, and it's going to be Northern Lights to claim the win. An eight kill one at that yeah really good stuff from uh, again it all depended on when they would have to push up to that ridge that's not <laughs> us that's that is now us um <laughs> i don't want to know what frost was doing there but anyway uh yeah northern knights do manage to uh hold onto the ridge long enough there and um, pink pony just falling at the final herder but a good game from them nonetheless they uh they need a couple of those confidence boosters getting up into the end game and, and picking up some kills along the way for sure. I think, I mean, this this was a wild game. I mean, of course, we got to address the Shift W 17 kill game here. I believe 18 might be, actually, if they got the last one there in the end of it. But absurd that they can get into Minas, take it away from Research, and then just hold out everything from the north. While our eyes were completely tunnel visioned on the south from an observing perspective, we saw Face, we saw Wildcats, we saw Nilami, all these teams fighting down towards the south and then around La Bandita. I mean, the only team really doing anything towards the north was Shift W. They were just claiming kills all over the place. And now, well, we can talk about it all day, but we want to hear from the desk as well what they think. All right, Frost, now you're on camera. We're back. Welcome back here to the desk for Team AFK as we break down this game. Jeez Louise, uh, I wanted Northern Lights to step things back up. They get themselves the victory, but they might not have stolen the headline when it comes to this game. Avenger Frost joining me here for this one. It's, it's a great win here, for Avenger, to start their campaign off here for Northern Lights. Yeah, you were asking if they could uh, at some point come back to a bit of greatness and, and do a bit better than we've seen them so far. And definitely they're able to. Like, this win is great for them. They're able to rotate and take out a lot of positions. That was nice. Uh, mm. But yeah, the big story is obviously Shift W getting an 18 kill third place. Uh, that was just insane. Yeah, ridiculous to say the least. Also, what was ridiculous was Team Liquid's initial start to their campaign as well, Froz. They took out two teams very swiftly here on their road through this game. Yeah, I mean, straight up, we had a fight between D and Liquid. And uh, Liquid actually got a little bit of help from DA themselves there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to revitalize the meme, but I'm just saying... Uh, they did get a little bit of help, and uh, but they did manage the situation. They lost two plays uh, later on, but with two plays, they actually managed to get a lot of things happening as well, though. 
uh, losing two plays in the second fight against uh, was Texas Rangers, but they got also yeah. third parted by Istanbul Wildcats, I believe it was. But we saw them doing a wide rotation, actually, going down on the south, which was a pretty smart move, making themselves, uh, taking themselves out of the way from face and uh, the Wildcats uh, fight. They got into some trouble, but I mean, in the end, nine kills and uh, seven plays, it's a really good start for them. Yep, very respectable, very respectable as well. Looking at some of the final uh, look, closing moments of this game here as well. I, there was part of me, Martin, that thought FaZe was going to do it again, but they were stopped in the tracks. They had a bit of a harder terrain to work with, especially when the circle shifted away. Yeah, considering you're coming over as a, like a high ground brow of the hill and everybody's looking at you, not just from below, but also from across the, the ridges there. So overall, mm. like they, they played super well, but they were just stuck in a super hard place here. Lou able to finish it off with the barrel. Uh, it is going to be nerfed, but uh, it's definitely laser and these players are able to control it so well. Here's our 9th through 16th. Unfortunately for my prediction, Digital Athletics goes out pretty early in this game. However, I know they'll bounce back. Uh, we take a look through our 1 through 8 as well. A ton of kills were sponged up by the top leaders here when it comes to this game. Only 6 points uh, being attributed to our 9th through 12th uh, placements here. Let's take a look at that 1 through 8. Uh, and see who is at the very top. As we do have a shift W being able to take the top spot here with wow. 23 points, despite Northern Lights getting that first place finish here for us. It was just, it was an amazing performance from shift W here. Totally amazing performance throughout the whole game, just taking out team after team after team. And even towards the end there, we saw that they were forced up on the plateau there, or that's where we were playing from. But they didn't give up. They knew that they were up against two different teams. It was basically, like Toby said in the game, a four versus three. All the other teams were just focusing on them, but they were still trying to make the move. We saw Soccer coming in there with that nade, getting that one yep. knock. But also, following up on that, they tried to make a move straight away. It's Chris were trying to hold out Northern Lights by himself while uh, Brexco was uh, running towards Pink Pony. And Soccer was actually just um, throwing those flashes against them. Uh, sadly, mm. the flashes didn't flash them enough, but that's the kind of moves you want to see. That's a game-winning move. You have to make something happening or you're going to lose. Yeah, definitely so. Pink Pony with the lovable chainsaw being compared here to Northern Lights. Now, Northern Lights damage was quite low, but correct me if I'm wrong, but nade damage isn't on that damage, Martin? Oh, uh, yeah. Stained. It is on that? Okay, well, yeah, never mind then. It was go. just very efficient damage because I thought the loot nade that actually got like three people. Uh, I thought, or two people, three people. Uh, I it's thought just that maybe that was... It was ah, just damage yeah, yeah. and not players that don't count. Yeah, that makes It was sense. one of the sense. players was knocked and he got the, uh, one Ooh. more, if you're talking the old market one. Speaking of damage, she's Louise. It's Chris. I mean, we interviewed him at the end of yesterday, Martin, and then all of a sudden, 1,300 damage. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> I, <I'll>, I have... <laughs> I don't know where to go with this, honestly, that that's just a record. Uh, like, we've not yeah. seen a, a big amount of damage like that before, and it, it's just huge. Like, like, the whole game was just massive. Like, mm. what an amount of damage. Massive coming out from Chris there. Impressive stuff by him. Also, Eibel being able to pop up uh, there towards yep. the very end. Nice to see him uh, popping up here as well. He has a nice curly mustache going on. The, the curly mustache is coming back in fashion here, Martin. What do you think about that? Well, I encouraged the hyper yesterday to take the, his mustache and twist him a little bit, and he actually did that. So that was quite nice to mm. see. Me, myself, uh, it would take me about 20 years to grow the same length mustache that Hyper has. Uh, it makes me look young, and I'm uh, quite appreciative of that. Have you ever had thick facial hair, or has it never, ever happened? Well, I, I could grow a fat goatee, but nobody wants that anymore. It's not the 70s, right? <laughs> A fat Just do it. Team. Just do it. Please. I need that in my life. I just, for some reason, I need that. I need that. Uh, okay, let's talk about some of the other teams uh, as we take a look at the standings here so far. FaZe got themselves 93 points after seven games plays. Mm. Shift W will move up to the second player spot here. Uh, Froz, what, what do you make of the standings so far? I mean, let's talk about a face thunder because they got themselves eight kills, right? And this yep. is tangent with what they had yesterday. Over the three games yesterday, they were averaging eight kills per game on Miramar. So they're still keeping up that average. And that is an insanely high amount. And if that wasn't enough, yesterday they had 9.7 
per game in average on Aaron Hill as well. But that comes later on. Uh, mm -hmm. If we talk about Shift W, for example, they were averaging three kills per game yesterday on Miramar. And today, just on this one game, they had 18. So even if they go out with zero kills in the upcoming two games, they're still going to have double amount they had yesterday. Yep, saw of nuts, to say the least. Northern Lights, of course, moving up to that 16th spot after them getting themselves that chicken dinner here. 18 points going their way. But, I, I mean, Team Liquid uh, has got to be very content with that game, even though they went out pretty early here, Martin. Just getting that many kills off of a, an early going out, it's enough to get your average nice and high. Yeah, we're saying, you know, a bad game is anything below two, three points. This is a fantastic game. This is... Uh, a, a great game. Like uh, having an average above six is is gonna get you into the to the grand finals. So, yeah, uh, that's completely fine. So this is if this is a bad game to start with, then I'm curious and excited to see what the good games are gonna be for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did so well in DreamHack. So I'm looking forward to their progress here throughout PCS three. I'm not. I can't even call it progress. Uh, potential blasting of the lobbies here uh, Mar uh frost pink pony has really impressed me over the last two days i think they got themselves 27 points yesterday correct me if i'm wrong but uh beyond that getting a nice point boatload of points here as well they they're not one mm. of the teams that was on my radar properly i want to say when coming into this stage uh no i don't think they were on many people's radar but they definitely have showed us the potential they have and mm. uh yes you're correct they had 27 points after yesterday with 18 kills this game, they got a second place and a six uh, kills on top of that. Of course, they basically moved about two meters in total in this game. But that <laughs> happens sometimes. <laughs> basically, you start somewhere. Oh, the circle ends there and you didn't move anywhere the first circle. Um, so they didn't have to rotate with any vehicles, but they still played it pretty well. Maybe a little bit more passive than you normally see. But this mm. is something that Toby was mentioning in the game as well. Maybe it comes down to maybe having a little bit less experience and you want to play more safe because then you can guarantee yourself getting more of those placement points when you know that you don't need to take the risk, which they didn't need to. And yeah. I feel like they still play really well. You saw how they were gatekeeping Liquid, getting those nades on uh, Jeems and then even pre-firing a little bit uh, onto AB, but also cracking him into the smoke there and follow up with um, with a kill as well. Like that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. That, that just shows you how good they actually are and what kind of potential they are. And they're still mm -hmm. showing up time after time after time. Not every game, but if they have these kind of spikes, they're going to keep themselves up there on the leaderboard. And all you need right now is just getting that top 16. Yeah, uh, of course, as 33% of our lobby will be dispensed of, I suppose, when going into that grand final. So top 16 is the all-important position. Even if you get yourself first place, it doesn't matter how many points you've got. You're still just qualifying the same as the 15 teams below you as well here, uh, Martin. But uh, any final thoughts before we go on to our next Miramar, Martin? Um, not too much besides that. I'm curious to see where the circle is going to go and where our plane path is because we, we see some teams that are having to go to our their secondary drops and it's uh, mm. it's giving them some rough times and I think that can play uh, can play a huge role depending on if we get some some rough right. plane paths. I'm kind of hoping for you know an east one. All right then, let's get to it. Toby, Hi Pock, bring us the curly mustaches. Well, um, Martin wanted to go east. How about west one, Martin? How do you, how do you like this plane? Because if uh, Impala is where you suit yourself, then uh, have fun rotating. You'll be over there by the time phase two pups. <laughs> how, what, do you, what do you make of this plane and what we've seen so far, Hyper? Because this is just curveball after curveball in a group where teams haven't played each other yet. Well, we didn't talk about it too much, but there were some funky shifts uh, in the previous one. Obviously, we had the, the initial hard west over towards Bendita. Then we had obviously the Minas unplayable, technically becoming a factor and, and shifting back yeah. down to the south. But uh, FaZe going to get themselves back over to Monty. Again, uh, your eyes are going towards Apex, which we can already see now coming out on the audible job. They're not going to get themselves across to Los Leones. The Wildcats as well. Um, they're obviously going up north there to cruise. So going to be a lot of space over on the east side, but fully expecting the south. Well, it could be a central, it could be a power grid circle but uh expecting this one to be a little bit easier considering nobody's really stretching across anywhere wonky and actually we've got we've got pull up all, all the way up in torre mm -hmm. so three teams actually up around cruise so that could be a problem 
I'm looking at after all right now. Are they vehicle contesting? Are they actually contesting El Poso? I mean, after all, That's... to be fair, they do loot El Poso as well. They don't have to give it away to Sauna Boys, but I was just assuming that would be the case. But no, look at that even. Already picked up a weapon. Gushiara is going to leave immediately, but but seems like they're, they aren't all that afraid. I mean, I, I'm just feeling if you're going to drop into the same city, at least bring all four players. Yeah, and if you're just grabbing the vehicles, don't drop into the middle of the city. Um, yeah. Because Grag's way down on the west road. Uh, you can obviously see... Damn on, I mean, pretty much on top of Sakura, to be honest with you. I don't know if we're going to get an opportunity to hop in there and take a look, but it looks like they're kind of in buildings opposite each other. So uh, that could be a problem. Uh, Circle did obviously post pretty similar to the previous game, sent it up mm. just to the west of Bendita, maybe slightly over to the west of what we had in the previous, but... There'll be a lot of teams that need to rotate into this one from the west side, as we know. A lot, of, Not a lot of space to the north because uh, of those teams yeah. around Cruz. So that could be a problem for Apex or on their audible drop. Maybe just expecting to be able to drive in there. I think it's a lot of fun watching Shift W play. Like just while now, while we're looting, they're playing this. Like normally when you have your Hacienda split, there are certain compounds that teams like to split around. They're playing this as somewhat different from what most teams around here would normally do. And I think that's why Ratio Edge got caught by surprise when they first started pulling up the hill. Because TSM would never be the ones to aggress in that area early. They'd either wrap yeah, around yep. or maybe go down over Graveyard and try and get in from there. Shift W, they're just like, you know, we'll take the fight to them up in Minas. And with the way they're splitting right now and... I would expect most likely up to rotate east over um, Minas. It's just, it's different. And it's got to keep you as the team on your tippy toes if you're the team on the receiving end of of a four-man roster that you don't know what to expect from. You just got 4 zeroed by them. And it really, like for Ratio Edge in particular, having had a tough day yesterday, now coming off to a rough start in the first game today as well. And then you see a team like them go out, get 17 kills. There's got to be a little bit, okay, guys, maybe we rotate a little earlier now than we did before because we don't want to have that happen again. No, and that's the sort of thing that plays on your mind in the early game when you're trying to plan out those rotations. If you do need to move or even just if, you know, you get you get a favorable circle, where do you split? Where do you prioritize? Uh, where do you mm. want to hold? Whether it be you want to hold down for position or you want to set up a trap and maybe kind of set up in front of some traffic and, and get some rotation kills. It's uh, It's something that can play on your mind there. Now let's see. Wildcats rotating on in. They're going to go straight through the Shift W split. Are they going to try and penalize them forward? I'm not sure. Let's see. Chris has his AK out. Is he going to come out and shoot? Oh, Rob, you're making it easy for him now, aren't you? Yeah, is Chris going to shoot? That's one buggy. That's two buggy. Let's go for the Bronco behind. A lot of damage. Shot. He just needs one more attack and find it. But oh, I was just going to say, I mean, Wildcats, they're a team that are pretty known for, for I guess, daring to stop their vehicles, turn around and take the fight to uh, whoever is trying to gatekeep them. But no, up to, to continue their rotation, they want to get further inside the circle before they stop and shoot back. Yeah, that's it. A lot of the pressure around Minas and Bendita been relieved early. Raise your edge, pulling all the way down to the Ents compound. A doozy kind of lurking at that compound to the southwest of Oasis. So a lot of space here for some of these teams that do need to come in from the north side. The problem being if Obviously, that's not really going to be their first assumption if they try and over-rotate this. You can see Apex coming down past water treatment now. My eyes go towards them because they've got a clear path all the way to Minas if they send it. Oh, and Sago is sprinting for the road. He's hurt the vehicles. Does he want to take the fight to them, though, or does he not? He's at least coming up here, showing his presence and telling the guys that they got to think twice before coming to this compound. Same thing is happening with Pink Pony, trying to tell Omar to get the hell out of that position. Vasco is still in a... Nah, he's going to go in the car again. Okay, fair enough. He's going to leave as well. I was going to say he's still in a position to maybe maybe get some shots fired. But now, let's see. Chris is going to get a chance. Number two, this is where one of those annoying areas where sometimes you flip a vehicle. Apex, are they stopping? First field goes past. Second goes past. Yeah, Third one, one stop. Yeah. That's the commitment. Here they are. Chris, they called the bluff. You're in a 1v4, buddy. Good luck. You're going to get some good damage. The problem is, again... Similar situation, oh. Chris actually going to get Ivor down initially. He's going to re-peak off to the second. That's what has dropped onto Calvin. Calvin's actually going to swing around, and there you go. Just getting pinched. <laughs> oh. Perfectly played by Apex there, and you're absolutely right. Calling the bluff. Sim similar situation what we saw with Mexi in the previous game, but you can't play your life there. You you're so split. Again, it's, it's a huge risk to open up, but that's one of those positions I was talking about, you know? 
some teams want to set up where they know it's a high traffic area and go for some kills and rotation. But if you don't get that knock, that's what can happen. All four members turn around, they pull up on you. That was a clean jump in that buggy. But also, I mean, for, was, for, for the yeah. sake of... <laughs> it was super clean. Um, for the sake of Apex, I mean, last game they lose too early, right? I feel like this time around is one of those, you've got to be kidding me. This is the last time we're going to settle for people shooting at us early. We're going to stop our vehicles and we're going to take the fight to like, they were just tired, sick and tired of getting used to us punching back early game. And now they stop, they take the fight to him and they get themselves a first, uh, well, first kill of the game. Unfortunately for Chris, they uh, they call this bluff and maybe that's going to make him think twice next time before starting shooting at a four-man rotation. Wildcats now I'm going to pull away a little bit of pressure over there when FaZe pulled up. And obviously Raise Your Edge, well, there was a solo from Raise Your Edge, but Pink Pony still holding on to the hangar here. We saw them pressuring another team previously. Now Shift W are going to try and set up. And this is, uh, I mean, this is something I was going to mention. I didn't think it was going to come into effect, but that compound Apex have pulled up at now, it would be very easy for Shift W to kind of set up on the hill surrounding that and prevent them from rotating mm -hmm. away. So the fact that all four of them came into, and again, we talked about this last week, that road going into Azaha, it's so difficult. I mean, if a team sets up on the high ground around it, it's really difficult to get yourself out of that situation. Sure is. And I mean, again, while we can't guarantee it, there is a very big chance that that area is going to be miles out of the next circle. So it's really, really on the north, like north very edge of it. So unless if they get some massive double north hard shifts up there, it's... It's not even going to be very like valuable terrain in I mean, just a matter of 45 seconds. So I'm glad to see Shift W say, nah, you know what? Let's not commit to this. We lost the player. Let's just uh, grieve for a second and then uh, and make our way down back. Yeah, a few teams still out fishing, looking for something. Faye's going to pull up in a similar position as the previous game. Pull up, coming down the East Road. Yeah, the team, we didn't really get a chance to talk about them because they weren't really present mm. in the previous. I know they went out pretty early, but definitely one to keep your eye on as uh, one of our, okay, finger quote, open teams in this lobby. Well, they are. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, they made it through from the open qualifiers. And I think that I've been, what do you say, worried? about them because they came through with aggression that was one of their like that's what got them qualified for this tournament oh we're going back east again exactly this is gonna be rip, rip, i was exactly gonna say repeat the of the last game exactly pull up came into the finals playing aggressive daring to go take the fight at any point in the game if a team challenged him i'm seeing them already play it very passive on the edge and tap on the other hand ain't con quite gonna do that that is some massive headshots coming in there. Gets the knock on Nokia. There is just nothing you can do in response. That's simply done too fast. The Sona boys don't even get time to react on that one. Down they go. Sakoa will be able to get up over the hillside with the 4x4. Four four, but, uh, oh, the 4. What do you say? Oh, I don't know. A car, I guess. We'll just we'll just say the car. Well, and the then, Bronco. Uh, the Bronco. Thank you. I can't even, can't even talk anymore. Um, he'll be safe, but, but only for now. Liquid, they have a chance to stop here, take the fight to D8, but seems like they opted to rotate forward or forward as well. A little bit of pressure coming from the Wildcats to the south here. Now it's going to pull straight past the other half of the Wildcats. Levent going to get some damage with the AK, but not going to get a knockout there. One of the players inside that Bronco is very low. But they are just trailing Liquid in rotation right now. and. Are they waiting? I mean, if Liquid, I was going to say, if Liquid wanted to, they could stop along this road because DA are literally following them in their tracks. They're actually going to pull up at the compound instead. Yeah, I think Liquid are going to eye the compounds and the opportunities. I mean, they, they, they had a pretty good jump on everyone else, to be fair. Again, of course, no having no ends here and uh, knowing that Apex were moving down from the north. We saw them in the kill feed. They were fighting Shift W. That is massive information, like actual crucial information to Liquid in making this rotation. When they see Apex fight Shift W, this was a good Shift W plane, so they know that Shift W wouldn't have opted away from there as a hard north side rotation. When you see them take the fight to Apex, that's the call that Apex ain't south around. That would be your team that plays the end spot. That's the call that they could have gone for that gave them the information that this area was free. Unfortunate timing. I was going to say, if uh, with me saying anonymous there, I could have potentially had both of those bike kills. Navi coming in close proximity to them. 
Ooh, a little bit of a scuffle here. Shiv gonna fall. Well, yes, Hayatan finds the first knock, needs the cavalry to arrive, though now they're here. Smash is gonna fall. EP is gonna be the one from afar to get the knock there. So maybe a little bit of a uh, a slowdown on the aggression here. As I say that Mithralia is pushing fast forward. Monkey is here. Trying to uh, hold an angle. It's gonna be mid. With all kinds of danger, though, Mithralius finds him once again. 2 for 0 in terms of taking this fight to Ray Shred so far. Wants to secure the points, finds the first, will fight the second as well. And the story for Ray Shred continues. They have trouble here on Miramar. Unfortunate circumstances there. And I mean, it'd be getting involved from afar. Definitely didn't help things for DA, but. They managed to keep up the momentum and sweep out the two members of Razor Edge. Another drop I get. I, 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 I want to just see Chris with the Orm again. <laughs> He's that dead. was we'll have certainly to have to the highlight. You. Well, <laughs> well, I'm just saying for the rest of the day, I want to see him running an Orm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. We'll, we'll make sure that happens. We'll just uh, send him a DM every time a crate comes up with an Orm and be like, Chris, Chris, it's over there. It's over there. Go get it. After all, they have a, a rotation to make. They are one of your, again, edge teams that, that change to change this. Well, they, they, they tend to change their strats depending on the lobbies they're in. And I feel like they change too much. You know, like teams that go center in some lobbies, edge in others, they can't quite find their home because sometimes they have success with both. Sometimes both of them fail. And I feel like they are trying to grab too much. Like they're throwing way too many apples in the air and you can only catch so many of them. And I feel like that's why we're seeing so much inconsistency from a team like after all they because maybe they don't know themselves really what they have to rely on when they're trying so many different things in uh, the tournaments they play I mean, just looking at it now we've got a pretty similar setup as well i mean obviously phase slightly off to the waist i'm, I'm talking about the previous game phase mm. probably going to make a play to wrap bendita here at some point apex now Running through the field. This is just off to the east side of that long highway that comes down from Minas. Vesto actually got himself an Org in hand. He had a lot of damage, and Tab actually finds Ival from a distance, so the nade going to follow up on that. Oh, actually, no, Bents yoinks that one away. <laughs> the Apex will lose one in rotation here, but they get set up underneath the ramp, but Na'Vi's setup is, is actually really good to punish this here, Toby. It really was an aggressive play by Apex, and they might be uh, feeling the hurt from it real damn soon. They've already lost one. Now Sims intends on Calvin. We'll have to try and see if they can kind of force off Na'Vi here, because they have a good chance at fortifying this position, and Senya actually crosses over to try and make it even harder for them to stay safe. After all, still rotating forward, trying to avoid the fire from Wildcats, and they should be able to do so, but where are they going to go here? Big Pony's still fired on the edge, and this is a clear-cut example of what we saw yesterday. Yesterday, sender heavy. Today, everyone is chilling on the edge. You see Senya has pulled down a little bit here. Tab pulling up as well. So, Na'Vi after that first kill. They are in hunt mode. It's going to look for another opening to try and pressure this. But Fenebachi pulling up on the backside could cause a lot of problems mm -hmm. with how much Na'Vi are opening themselves. Well, this could be terrible for Na'Vi if they pull up on the backside of the Tab and Vesto. Talk about calling bluffs. There's only one player sitting down in the compound. That's Orange. He's on his own. He needs the help down here. You can see Bestalog immediately moving back. And now Senya yeah, actually is going to be left. Yeah. The fact that Bestalog leaves means that Senya is going to be left all on his own over on that other side of the road. That could be trouble. Keep in oh, mind, no. we still have Liquid. They have eyes on some of these angles down here. Yeah, Besto, I'm not sure if he just lost a tire, but he pulled up on the back side of that ridge and the vehicle just slid a little bit away from him. Orange will fall. There you go. Wow. Wow. Pulls all the way down to the south. So this area that Na'Vi are in, if they can alleviate some of this pressure, they're going to be in a fantastic spot for this circle. You might have a laugh at what Sonobos is doing, sending it full speed forward, but this is what you gotta do. I mean, there's so many teams currently still outside the circle that, to be honest, I mean, at this point, <laughs> every viable spot in the circle is contested right now, and Sonobos pretty much just took the last one that could potentially be played from, depending on the team that sits above, but we know DA, they ain't gonna shy away from a fight. Code Marco finds the first, but they have to worry, though. You cannot overcommit to this. Teams will be able to shoot at you from afar, and that's exactly what Liquid are doing, actually, to some extent, helping Sonobos stay alive here. 
As I've James actually going to find Misa from a distance. Yeah. And the Wildcats obviously send her in a lot of bullets down this way. Sakura still down. The anonymous last man standing for Sauna Boys, but more utility coming over the top from DA. Again, it makes it difficult for DA to flex out just because of how many eyes are on them right now. And actually, on the back side of the compound, is that the range is pulling up on them? It is. Mm -hmm. They're going to pull into the dip on the back side of the compound. So this could be really, really problematic for DA. Smart rotation, but again, same situation with them being in a spot where they can't really over. Like, either you go full commit or you stay back there. You have so many other teams that can get ice on Pestalock. Nice shots come in. Unfortunately, not enough to get the knock, but the Molly will do the rest of the work for him. Schofield falls. That's an MK for you to pick up. Should you want to go for it? Creator looks over the top, tries to see if he can get something in there too, but pull up. Again, as said before, a team that normally aggresses, aggresses, aggresses. Kind of tied on the edge right now. Let's see if they're going to be able to move further forward. Loki, full speed in. Will he get an angle here? I don't think he will. Ridden will... Uh... Well, we're going to have to sit tight, at least for now, to try and stay alive here. If he's got some utility to send up onto that rock, it could be really bad for Luki. I did see Na'Vi getting knocked in the kill feed. I think they lost one. But this is another team to throw into the mix down on the southeast side. I mean... This is, I mean, this is going to be so awful. Regardless of what happens down here, that should be a clear-cut kill. Nope, Manti can't see him. Actually, teams from miles away able to do damage. But look at the West. I mean, the West is so damn congested. And half the teams, I mean, all the teams are outside the circle still. In a matter of seconds, the kill feed will light up on the West. But for now, best of luck. Trying to grant some more points for Na'Vi. Waiting for him to sit. Still can't quite find the angle. So, uh, our dear friend Rill will survive for a little while longer. Yeah, that's what I was saying in the previous. If Navi were able to control some of these teams and again put that pressure back onto Apex, it would have been really, really good for them in this circle to set up along that road. You see, Pink Pony will be our first team, Olymp 16th place. Code Marco finding the second after Levent on the first. And soon after, Fenerbahce will fall in 15th. Yeah, those solos, they only had so much space to move around. Vantu will probably fall immediately after now as well. Indeed, he will <laughs> pull up out in 14th. We're losing players by the second, and to be fair, I mean, as I said, it's just a matter of time before the chaos really will commence once more. Unless if this circle goes massively northwest, all these teams that are current, you can see it in the minimap on your right-hand corner, there are so many teams kind of stuck on that west side. They don't want to go into the field, because as long as the hill is in, you can do nothing from the field. But look at that circle right there. Have fun, guys. You're all going out. Docker actually going to open up onto phase here. Uber will fall. And Gustav taking a lot of damage. And Brexco will find him. Zocker getting the one onto 8C as well when he tries to res. That just leaves one man standing. It's Fuzz face over on the backside next to Gustav. But I don't think Shift W going to ease up anytime soon after getting three knocks. It's a good day to be a Shift W fan. And, uh, well, if you're Brexco, you're going to be sending it full speed forward, trying to see if you can get some more damage in there. They know that they were resing. The runoff is going to come in immediately. Braxco is going to try and throw a Mali over. That should give up his push, but I don't think he minds too much having said oh, that. No. no, he turns on him. Fuss face taken down. Now they have wow. the information of where Gustav's going to be because they previously knocked him. So just a matter of time before Shift W systematically clear this error. Gustav can still do damage from here, though. Shift oh, W yeah. don't stack up. They're... Uh... And Kiwi Kai actually going to grab the bike and move a little bit further in. You can see Gustav just stalking now. Leave him. We'll find the first. Got to hit the deck, but will he be able to follow up from this? I like this. Biding his time a little bit here. He could get Brexco actually on the res. Thing is that the more time he's wasting, oh. the more chance they have. Yeah. There's no saga. Fortunately, we'll be able to get him down, but they still lose one. Phase out in 12th place will fall. They still lose players over. And I was surprised to see Kiliakai move out the way that he did there. So on the boys, they'll go immediately after everyone tried to send it into the dip. And now it's Texas oh Ranger God. trying to take control. And no Omakin actually putting up here too. Yeah, lots of pressure on this compound. DA taking casualties. Marco and Mert bleeding out inside. Zocco going to make a mad dash in the Bronco, try and find something on the inside. Spyro with a good spray, but doesn't get the knock there. And he's got to run the gauntlet in the open. Nothing blocking any of those sight lines. Zocco going 
really, really wide on this, actually. Again, this is back at the compound now. T-Bone going to find TTSN outside. Ohm can clean up here. They've already put the pressure on to DA, so expecting them to be the aggressors in that situation. Surprised to see Omar being allowed to take that much uh, attention towards the south with DA still being alive in the compound, but they're not nothing to aggress out right now. Raise your edge. There ends your nope. journey in this game. There is nowhere for them to go. There's already enough teams over here. Can't fit in anymore, but it goes to show how little space there really is to play around here. Omar can, they've taken over control of the compound. DA has been forced to move out. Mert now falls to perfect in the hills. And it really is a troublesome situation. Having said that, Pancho, a little help comes in from the compound. One down, Mert will fall. DA out in ninth place, and Northern Lights immediately there to follow. Pancho going to try and get some damage onto Page, but now he's left himself exposed. Didn't land enough damage there. Top also got to follow up onto Vasco potentially. Going to send the Molotov onto his vehicle. The Molotov actually looks good. Oh no, it's a little, little short little there. Little short. Here comes the backup. Omer can get to clean this up with easy. Actually, <laughs> pops in the Murado. That is not where you want to pop in the driver's seat. Be in the one spot they won't expect you to be in. Just sit in the car and let them run past you. Nope, ain't gonna work against Omagan. They're clearing out on the north side and they have kind. They've kind of won that whole control area there. There's only really Lou around still, actually. Oh, tap. Don't mistake me, Northern Lights were not eliminated. They were there and tap with the. Oh my lord, tap with an MK. That is terrible. And it's dangerous, Navi. Coming off to a solid start here in game two. Ten kills for them already. They lost Orange way earlier. And now they have a chance here at really making something happen. With the circles leaving the way that they are. If they can contain Omar into the dip and wrap in underneath, they'll be in all kinds of joyous position. But they have to keep Liquid in mind as well. You can see Liquid right now. They're full on focused in the north with EB just looking down toward the south. He's a solo guy containing all of Wildcats. This fight for the north control could potentially be a fight for the windshield, the next circle, not include Liquid in that compound. It is indeed, yep. Yeah, and. I don't oh, know no. what is going oh, on here. No. Lou's Lou, uh, Lou thrown. He's actually going to catch Pesto off. Just nobody able to see him there again. He's wait. prone inside the buggy, effectively. So the tab and send you're going to have to try and find something else. Jeems does find Lou right after that. The audio cue giving his position away. So now we're going to have to reset back to the road. And this is what? this is a treacherous cross into the field here for Navi. Did they want to go up and aggress on Omar and on that rich to then just re reverse? That was, I mean, even with Lou there, stop the vehicles, get the kill, and push down Tovarkin. They, it seemed, that, that, that seemed somewhat, what do you say, miscoordinated. Now, Navi, they need to find somewhere else to go. They saw, they seemed so dominant just seconds ago, but with the positioning of Lou, that completely threw them off. Now, they need to see what they can do here instead. Senya, not in the best position, but at least he's inside the circle trying to stay put for now. Tap still has a bit of a run to make. Let's see if he can get some knocks here. If he goes down now, though, there's no rescues coming in. No, this is what I mean. It's just so difficult to get into this field once the road is out. Again, Navi kind of made the most of that situation. You're actually getting up to double-digit kills already, so can't argue with hmm. that. They've also got themselves into placement points. So, again, really good. A favorable shift for them, though. They're able to oh, stay here for another circle, wow. Toby. That could be huge. <laughs> is that top two guaranteed? I'm not sure I'm a... Uh... A little interested in see what Wildcats are planning on doing because they know about Navi's position. They had an angle before. Now they don't. They have two and a half. I want to say, actually, no, three full vehicles. All tires still there. Is this the Wildcats push to Liquid? I mean, everyone's waiting for another team to push Liquid. I think that's the case. Omargan saying, come on, Wildcats, do it. We'll come in right after. Shift W waiting for something to happen here. Everyone will have to make a move. And Liquid, you can see the way they're splitting right now. They need control. They have to have people on all sides ready for an eventual push in towards the compound. Because if one team goes, they all go. Well, we can now line up the Murado charge in formation. <laughs> Are they going to pull up? Oh, it looks like they're going to pull up on top of Danimon. Actually, Danimon with some pre bottom Going to do a lot of damage, but Vasku going to run him over there, but he will fall. Wexco finds him. T-Bone burning. Burning doesn't fall, though. No one up there to go for the compound. That info is now given to Liquid, which means they can start splitting out and trying to see if they can third party something for their own. Senya trying to hold off against Wildcats. James will be down here to assist. 
to his best of his abilities. Let's see Molly's thrown forward. Two guys alive still, but they're playing a real damn close to one another. Flash is coming in return. Sokka ends up exploding himself. Omar will stay alive. Shift W out in fifth place, but two good games for the Shift W team in a row now. Liquid still four alive. Have the opportunity to wipe out some teams, but seems like teams backing off here a little. And like uh, kind of waiting things out. Yeah, no reason to overaggress. Again, we've talked about this before, Hype, but how Liquid, like they never, especially when it comes to late game, they don't overaggress. They play it so smart. We saw it on uh, on Mirror, on, on a Wrangle as well. They are so damn good at just taking a breather in the end of it and go, we are not in a hurry. We have the numbers. Let's yeah, just play yeah. time. I like that there. He did, James didn't get the initial knock. Didn't get any value off the utility, so there's nothing really for him to commit to there. He's actually going to find BSD. Tab steals that one away, though, with the MK. That's one more kill going over to Na'Vi. James might spot the... I was going to say, he potentially could spot the backpack on Levent, but the scope blocking it right now. It's actually Levent that's going to spot him. Should be a simple enough res if they can get the timing right here before Circle. Rapture actually going to find Senya. Tab going to respond onto him. So, back and forth here. Na'Vi might be able to reset and get this res, but the angles are not great from Liquid. So huge for Liquid that they get the noggin. Oh, it's all attack coming in. Unfortunately, level 3 gear is there. So a little bit of damage being denied. That knock there and the flush of Wildcats is going to allow Jeems to get back up. But I was just going to say that's yeah. what couldn't happen. The only thing that could not happen is that Jeems gets knocked there. So really fortunate for them that Wildcats are eliminated by Na'Vi in that situation. T-Bone, solo player, can't do a whole lot to aggress. He's simply just playing placement points right now, maybe. He will try and see if he can catch someone off guard, but if he can get top two here, that is all he's hoping for. Circle is on him. Just wait it out. Let Navi and Liquid fight and take that second place home. Yeah, it's unfortunate as well. Navi's best time to move was when James got knocked there, and unfortunately, they had exactly. to reset and get the res themselves. So it's going to be really difficult for Navi unless they get, I mean, ideally two knocks, but I don't even think one's going to do it for them. Mexican going to find Senya on a little off angle. Going to reset. Maybe just deny points here, to be honest with you. It is liquid, so Ooh, Clint might be able to confirm both, actually. Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah, it's Senya. Oh, it's Senya bled. Yeah, that means both points got the yep, kill yep, point. yep. Exactly. Clip gets the second. Two points confirmed on that one. Ain't going to let those run away from you. And now Tebow. Well, how is this one going to fare for you? He's holding an arrow <laughs> angle. A very broken level one best, and he's going to attack one. 13 HP now. He's been chilling for a while. Now he's going to be on oh. fire. That should be GG, and indeed it is. Liquid takes home game number two. They rotated early. We said it. They knew. They knew Apex weren't on the south side. They knew there was going to be space. They had all the territory in the world. They could have stopped to take the fight to DA, but they said no. We've seen Ens win these games before. Once that compound is in, once the circles go there, that team wins the game yeah. and Liquid did just that. Yeah, a, a slow progressive push. So again, kind of a polar opposite to Na'Vi, really. They had a lot of pressure in the mid game yeah. where they had to clear off that ramp and obviously the the, the valley through the road. Um, I'll say the, the road that acts as a valley down to the south side <laughs> there. But uh, really good stuff from Liquid. Again, just good control. Kind of getting a kill on one or two teams in the mid game weakens them. It means that, you know, they don't have that pressure in the late game. So really, really good stuff from Liquid. Interesting game for sure, guys. Let's take it back to the desk and see what they have to say about that one. That's right, from a decent fragging game in our first game now to being able to get themselves a very good place here in our second. I've got Martin as well as Patrick here joining me for our breakdown of game number two for the day. Team Liquid Martin, a good position and they were able to farm from there. Uh, yeah, they were literally sitting in uh, the good old end compound that if they usually hold down in, in a situation like this. And uh, they got a southern shift when uh, when Digital Lakes was actually in the center, uh, close to La Bodita. And then all hell broke loose in the north because there were so many teams that had to be compressed in such mm. a little area. And the best area to kind of play is the dips and the ridges around the La Bodita crater. So it was overall a super interesting game. I, I really loved how the... Some of the guys are able to kind of make their way in and still survive for a long time and also play some of these open hate L shakes. Even though it seems kind of RNG, it's also about timing and how you survive it and what angles you try to cover. Yep. Uh, speaking of angles to cover, DA had a pretty decent compound until they were pushed out here, Froz. And they made the most of it for, for the most part. But the problem with these circles is just how open kind of what Martin was alluding to here, just a bit about it, like just how open these circles can be towards the end. It creates a lot of problems. 
Yeah, when we, you have those counter circles, as Martin was saying as well, everybody's going to be compressed against some of the areas. And we saw mm. so many teams being on the north and west side that all of them are kind of going to be on the northwest side because they didn't rotate early on. And basically, they, they're not going to take the chance to go for a blind rotation that late into the game. So you're going to try to work your way the closest way into the circle. And you're going to meet so many teams on the way there. And it was basically just a big bloodbath going on. So it's super hard for any team to be able to hold anything if you're out there. Uh, that's why you see teams like Liquid and Navi towards the end because they took really good positions from the start, being able to work their way into the east side very uh, early on. And Liquid, for example, we saw them having that 2-2 split directly on Circle 2 when they rotated there. They basically yeah. did a 2-2 directly. Navi crashed the east compound and they left that compound straight away. They didn't even want to take the fight because they know if this is going to come down here, the circle uh, towards the late game, you're going to want to have many people up because you're going to basically just be turkey shooting everyone, but also you're mm. going to need so many people trying to hold every uh, angle you can. It's our rankings, 9th through 16th. Quite a few points coming on in here, uh, but a lot of these teams were falling around that circle pot where it just goes majoritively to the fields. So a few kills here and there as everyone's trying to squeeze on in. Uh, as previously mentioned, our one through eight, Navi getting themselves 12 kills throughout this game. And it started from the very beginning, Martin, and eventually wound towards the end. Navi had a great game, all things considered. Yeah, they had a great game. They were also sitting on the southeast side of that circle where it shifted uh, towards them twice. They managed to hold down the east and managed to push a lot of teams away from this. 12 kills from this. Uh, obviously it talks to their uh, their, enga their engagement overall. Like they're mm. keeping the players away. They're um, kind of maintaining control of the southeastern edge so that was just that was really well played besto on top here with six and the tab at five yeah the tab already starting pretty early in that regard as well one of the, some of those sprays as people rotating crazy stuff shots i'm never ever going to be able to hit in my entire lifespan but there you go the tab able to hit them very nicely indeed but let's go mexican t-bone showing on up t-bone uh towards the end there for us valiantly being able to stay alive in what was effectively that bloodbath up towards the northwest where everyone was crunching down it, it can be difficult to survive those situations yeah they were one of the last teams coming in from the north side and they had free vehicles they could use and they utilized mm -hmm. it to the to the maximum i'd say that uh was it i think it was was it vasco that got the the run over um on uh, the last half after all there on dynamon i think it was uh basically <laughs> they knew people were they were gonna lose people on that rotation in there but they all they needed was to keep one guy alive in this case it was t-bone that managed to stay alive barely though because we also saw the nades coming in from liquid uh yeah. which is it's super scary when you're the last guy up you hear the nades you know you're already low you're not 100 percent sure exactly where the nade landed as well but uh, they did manage and they got himself that second place. They did get a few kills before as well. So seven kills in total as well. A pretty good game for them uh, to start off uh, things here. Oh, yeah, very nice. Very fiery. And uh, even though we had first initial similar circles, ended up with very different endings. We're going to go to a short break, ladies and gents. And when we return, we got more here from PCS3 EU. Don't go anywhere. That's the one that's the yep, next one is. is about to touch on. But look at Batulin's already eagle-eyed here with the lethal nades. He's getting ready to cycle these one through and just start the bombardment. Anything comes through, any damage. And this should be the go signal for the this rest of Northern Lights to maybe just pound in them. Finish off what's oh, already been started. Nade. That's first second nade actually makes contact. Now he's got another follow up. Squid is already bleeding at the wayside. This could be another target. And Batulin single handedly is just crushing oh, the, the hopes boy. and dreams of ends. How is Rustamas somehow still boys. alive? It's very obscure. Shift W, not Top quite two fight. player, but my god. Very, uh, very <laughs> little help on Docker. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, for Shift W, they've been kind of in the pocket of Na'Vi for the entirety of this, right? Starting off towards Campo Militar, and now Besto's going to probably get this on Zocker unless he can make it out the window in time. Does. Nice moves from Zocker. Quick on the feet, double dipping back in. <laughs> not going to spread too far. Zocker can stabilize for now. More util coming in. Zocker, the thing is, I guess Shift W has more support here than Na'Vi in essence. So Besto, is he actually going to openly push into that? Keep in mind, our smokes are a little bit thinner for you viewers at home. So they're they're far thicker for the players. They, they can't see through it as readily. Threed up Best, AK. Besto's not in a bad spot here at all. Ends could maybe be a pain in the ass and try and set up shop around cubes. Four stacks somewhere up there. Get a cutoff point. Try and bottleneck a few teams. Navi's on the bridge. I had no idea. I've only just noticed they're, they're set up. They're ready. They're waiting. They are camping. First contact made onto Gustav. There's blood in the water. It's been spilled all they over the floor. The there back. is a small response. If they get this third player, that is just... Oh, my God, 8C. He's doing 10 the last HP. stand. This so he's only got 10 HP. Oh, he's going for the flushes. That's nasty work there. One more game of Miramar to go here for a day number two of the PCS3 EU group stage for A and C. As we've had, again, relatively central-ish circles here for our first two. But then they've always been shifting over towards the east. In general, a lot of second circle hard shifts, Martin, throughout both of our days. Does that create any big problems for any of these teams? Especially, I mean, when it ends up in the middle of a field like that, it can only be problematic for a lot of the teams. Well, obviously, with the um, with the circles going away from center, like I, it's obviously better with a hard shift than it is with a with just complete center mm. from from the beginning and the get go. But the reason why second and third circle hard shifts is rough is because you have uh, long rotations to be made. Uh, but let's yeah. take a look at the standings here, baseline and the lead still, but shift W and sixty nine for us. Sixty nine, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Pink Pony goes up one spot here as well from a few points that they were able to accrue. But Team Liquid up six places after two games manages to breach into almost the top 10 here for us. So great stuff mm. by Team Liquid so far. Great stuff indeed by them. But I mean, we have a few teams that has done really good. I'd say Shift W and Navi, both of the teams has only had top five so far in the, in the two games we had today. And mm. that is kind of what you want to see, even if you don't get the wins, that you have that consistency staying up there all the time. Uh, instead of just like getting a win and then having a few bad games on top of that, having that consistency will always make sure that you'll eventually you'll get that win and you will just spike up and you're going to be towards the top. Yeah, very much so. Nice to see Navi having the performance that they did in the previous game here to raise your edge. Um, unfortunately for them, uh, Froz, I th was that mm. the... The, they were they lost too early to the DA crash, right? So they had to kind of consolidate their losses. Yeah. I mean, and then it was kind of a Hail Mary. They were in a bad position. They had to move mm -hmm. uh, into the circle. Uh, just went with a bike and uh, lost the two guys. So far, zero points for them uh, today. And hopefully that won't be the end of it because we still have four more games to go. So they need to catch up a little bit as well since yesterday wasn't the best of days they had either. Um, yeah, we definitely know that this roster can do much more uh, so far. It's been a little bit unlucky yesterday We saw a lot about Shiv. Shiv got himself 11 out of the 20 
one kills they had yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and normally you would expect uh, the others to be fragging out a little bit more as well. And I mean, that's what we want to see from this team and this lineup. Uh, are we uh, uh, one, another question, uh, Martin, that I have regarding Razor Edge is: Are we over the new roster honeymoon period for Razor Edge, or do you think that they can still, you know, keep pushing forwards like they did when it came to PCS2, where we saw the resurgence from them? Well, I gotta say that the circle's also been extremely rough to them, right? So mm -hmm. it's and that can continue to be the case, but also they need to be more progressive. Um, they need to see where. Uh, like look into the future in terms of circles like if you have an edge position or a slight edge position where you need a hard shift uh, yeah. a couple of times for for you to be able to play that game then you need to make a play that ensures that you are in late game it's also mm -hmm. often the case that they lose two players and they have to play late game with two players and that is not enough to win games like the other teams are so hard focused on making sure that there are three or four guys alive for late game that it's going to be impossible to win a game and especially if you have to make a push or a breach that will ensure your better position then it's going to be so rough all right final thoughts for us before we go in my question to you is where do you want to see a circle go go wild give me something i mean i want to see a camp of militar ending that is always going to be one of the best endings because it's kind of open but at the same time there's so much space to play up there that's always going to be interesting it's sort of a urban ending but really not because it's kind of an in-between urban ending and a field ending so that's yeah. what i'm hoping for well we did have that pre mosque ending uh so anything is possible when it comes to circles that <laughs> lately so amazing stuff and hypoc is here so you know that's also a little bit of a jinx towards it as well thank you very much gentlemen it's time to get on to our final miramar for the day take it away hypoc and toby thank you james if there was a plane that was gonna tell hypoc no and tell patrick no it's not gonna be military this is probably going to be that plane. This is probably yeah, the yeah. furthest south you're going to get a plane <laughs> on Miramar. And uh, I think we can say it already. That is definitely not going to be a Camp Militar circle. As much as I would like to see that happen too. I, I love how James is now just embracing my curse. The more we talk about it, the more it comes into effect. So uh, yeah, <laughs> buckle up, I guess, for the final game of Miramar yeah, for the day. Yeah. Los Hijos, is that where we are uh, headed once more? It, it could be. It, it, to be fair, I mean, the games have been pretty pretty calm so far. We have seen some hardships, but as we talked about in the break, the players have kind of been prepping for those hardships before they even happen, because over towards the east, as long as you doesn't include Impala, there are only so many places you can really play from, and even with hard shifts, teams were already forced to play those positions, and thus it hasn't really been that big of a factor. So uh, I, I want to see something where, where teams really, really are forced to go out and get creative in terms of where they play. I'm just looking at it again. We don't have, I mean, other than uh, Hibako, obviously still using the toilet when the plane took off, but uh, he's <laughs> obviously holding down for a Western circle and it's going to pop actually all the way over to the east, up north of Impala, off east of the, uh, the junkyard is about the center there where the Rangers actually are and again another good opportunity here for some of these teams over on the east side i'm looking at apex pink pony raise your edge um again raise your edge are kind of squandered their uh hmm. their uh foundations for good games to be honest with you toby yeah it really is interesting i mean while on paper it's looked like they've had a tough time and they have given that they've gone out early two games in a row now it's not been the circles because they have been blessed with like two games that ended just south of uh, Mina, so you'd have to think that they have the initial rotation opportunity, and now they're, I don't want to say blessed, but given the fact that there's no one committed to rooting Impala, they have an opportunity to rotate and get some really good positions early on here. I just want to see them be able to hold off that initial push, which has really been what they've been taken out by. Yeah, and well, the, the, the problem's been, I, I think they've been dragging their feet a little bit, because there's some of these early rotating teams that have beat them to some of those priority compounds. Like, it, in my mm. eyes, Liquid should never get to end's compound before a team that drops Minas. It, just, it shouldn't happen, especially with Ents not being in the lobby. Apex, again, definitely a factor. But, I mean, if, if you're four up there, you know that Apex aren't all going to be dropping to the same compound. And uh, as I say that, look at what's going on here. Udyr going to get a little bit of company. Vampire game going to pull up. Uh, if don't... this, if Udyr goes down yeah. here, this would be the third team to take out a Ratio Edge player before the, I don't know what, eight-minute mark? 
That would be the most yeah. unfortunate start in the universe. But fortunately for Vampire, I think he might have seen an open door somewhere or something close to it because he moved out. But we got to keep in mind, we got to keep in mind that the teams that have kind of been causing Ratio's trouble are the teams that they haven't really had a chance to know that much about. I mean, even with Shift W, yes, they know them, but they're not used to seeing Shift W coming in from that direction. They're normally further east than that. And now, I mean, Pink Pony, well, they're that's... also a team that's rotating into them. Yeah, and that's the secondary layer too. I, I absolutely agree in, in terms of Razor Red's losing somebody early. It causes you to play that circle very differently. So regardless of how good it is for you, you can't position up. Um, hmm. Especially if you have that, that early pressure. Um, you know, you're held down at a compound. You've got to rotate away to help a teammate, things like that. You're not going to be able to get to the spot you want to. Uh, so that's definitely a factor in, in the way they've been able to, uh, I mean, not play oh, these circles, to be honest with you. They know he's here. Do they, do they know? Did they see him? What is FaceFan doing rotating west right now? They, oh, they're going over to pick up first base. Like, maybe, are they rotating north around on this one? You know what? That is a good call. The plane was in south. They talked about it. We weren't granting uh, Frost his northern circle. That's a smart rotation of their part. It's going to take them longer, but they know that they have Navi south. They know they have Omar and down in Chumacera. Just rotate north around. Just make that north side rotation. Unfortunately for you, don't get shot up by Hibako. As you see Apex making moves up the <gasps> east road, they're gonna the crate. force them away. What what are you what are you gasping at? There is a crate. Is it on there an is island? A crate. <laughs> it may or may not be on, on an island. <laughs> Look at the map. For those of you guys who don't know, crates predict service. <laughs> 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 and this would be the worst. I mean, as 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 unforgivable as the like circles have been today, this would be absolutely horrible. Well, look, I, look, I, just from the last two weeks of casting with you, this theory has been proved right three times. It has. So we got the um, equal circle off of it. All all I want <sighs> is for Frost to, to really break down the numbers behind why the circles follow the crates. Uh, I think James yeah. should maybe dedicate some time for him on the desk to, uh, to really drive that home to the viewers today as, as to why we should always follow the crates. Even if this one doesn't, because that would just be an animality, right? It, because oh, other times it always does. Guys, we're saying this with a big smile on our faces, by the way. Please don't <laughs> take our words. Please don't take our words for, um, for, for info. There's going to be another just... Reddit thread. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe there will be. Pull up. The well, they're going to make their way. Crew. Oh, no. Making their way straight through Aminas in the meantime. You can see Northern Lights. They're actually I mean, rotating in somewhat slow, to be fair. They didn't have the easiest chance to rotate in earlier than that with a lot of teams in front of them. Fenerbahce trying to get out. Shift W. few shots fired, but they won't connect anything. So, um... This is going to be a lot of teams rotating in slow. And even if it doesn't go to the islands, the east shift here to any extent would make it so much harder because we still have to look at the amount of teams that are still miles out west. The A, they will, uh, they will start the kill the kill counter going down, I guess you can say. Curia will be the first to fall. That's going to be a pretty, pretty clean swept kill for DA. No punishment coming in. They'll have a chance to rotate forward. And Raise your edge did... Managed to keep four up, but look how much pressure they've got this around. I mean, look to the north of that as well. Liquid now running through in between the Rangers. Jeems actually looks like he's he's going very close to the compound here. Pancho flexing out a little bit, and Jeems actually coming right next to him there. That is the dangerous line to run, and Top and TTSN are up at the second one. Cal Kalimdor falls up in the hillside, and that's two members of Fenerbahce going down. The Liquid very split in rotation right now. Ibi gets picked off by Brexco. When have we ever seen a face one fight in this area i want to say never i want to say never an east side junkyard fight in phase one it goes to show how how teams are still trying to split out in an area that's to be fair really hard to split in but with a lot of a lot of random factors in between all of it that you can't really account for clip Lucky to stay alive there. Now let's see if more than more than good uh, more than three teams want to tune in. Well, Clip got his first aid up, but ain't gonna really grant him a whole lot. It's gonna go down regardless. Mex is trying to trying to push it and see if he can get something done here. The yeah, problem being James stuck down in that shack now. He's absolutely no help to this. So Mexi a lot riding on this situation here. They're gonna try and follow up onto the knock onto Clip and try and flush him out with a second aid. Does 49 damage. He's down to about 15 now, so that clock is ticking if they want to go for this res. 
Oh, they will see Maxi. They will see him. And TSS oh, no. was already looking in that direction. Headshot comes in. It's going to force him down. And that should give him the info as well that there's no rest possible in that position. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's Ray Shredge. Shredge. Mm. Shiv actually yeah. going to confirm clip and get some good damage onto Mexi as well. This is not how Liquid wanted to start this one off. I think it goes without saying. Nope, not at all. Mexi also prone down. Nate's come in now as well. And it really is on, I mean, for, for Texas range, you have a chance to push out here. But as you can see, there's still two-way split teams somewhat caught down in that field as well. Taking some, uh, taking some fire. But I respect the fact that they don't push out to clear it. For the reason that they're in a two-way split, also Panko has a Winchester. So, I mean, <laughs> they were obviously they rotated there. And now let's see the circle. Where are we headed? We're going back on land, and I guess that uh, leaves Patrick with a sigh of relief that he doesn't have to go in depth with why circles are yep. based on where the crates go. A big sigh of relief from Froz. <laughs> This circle doesn't get any easier, though, because while we don't see it that clearly on the map, if we go from where Calvin is sitting out on the east towards the far west, there's a big mountain line there, and right now, that's really what's splitting the map. And you can see, you can kind of see it on the overview here, there's a big mountain line up there, which means that everyone who's currently sitting on the south can't scout north. Like, you have no clue what's happening up there. Same thing happening on the other side. You have no way of knowing what's happening on the other half of the map. There's simply no way of scouting it. So for T-Bone and Omanken, they're going to wrap south around, hoping the circle's going to go to them. TTSM finally, yeah, finally pushing out and we'll clean up Mexi. So Liquid down to just James. Sakura wrapping the warehouse here. Mr. Sadat might have an open sight line up this hill. He's choosing not to shoot though. If they're trying to bait in a second vehicle here, but Nuki not going to go close enough to, to run the risk of getting knocked. Fenerbahce are down to two though, so maybe, maybe, maybe that's just because they're two. They didn't want to attract too much attention to themselves. Yeah, well, now they did. <laughs> All of Sonobar is coming and saying, hello there. How are we doing in the compound today? And I mean, this has got to be, on all of Miramar, this has got to be the easiest compound to contain people in. It's just it's, it's, it's just made for you to get trapped. With how the compound is, with how all the surrounding terrain is. Now let's see Shift W. We've seen a lot of teams try and send it, send it today. Here's another team trying to do the exact same thing. And, well, surprisingly enough, there's a free compound for you. If you're up to stop. Edge teams, edge teams, edge teams, edge teams. Hmm. I mean, FaZe did make their way up into the northeast corner. Apex still very split. You see Calvin up on the hillside here. Gonna, gonna get a little bit of information. They've got a good trap set up for this eastern road here. You can see some damage tags coming in already. Fuzzface, his position is going to be getting relayed by Apex to Calvin. He might actually opt to come over and peek on top of this here. You can see he's looking in the general direction, but again, it's a, it's a big commitment to overpeak the top side of that hill, not knowing where the other phase members yeah. are. That long side with the fact that him being all on his own, there's no way of trading uh, anything there. And I mean, Apex haven't had the best of starts to the Gustav. tournament so far. So for them, getting four people live into late game, that would be amazing. Gustav was trying to do an interesting flank yeah, around, like which Simpsy like apparently this. has not caught at all. Yeah, the engine cut there, providing him a silent relocate. And actually, now that he's oh, opening no, he up, knows. Gustav is going to hear that, yeah. That is huge. Gustav is on a 9-kilometer flank, and it might actually end up paying off for him. Simsi is completely isolated from the team. He was the one thinking that he was flanking. And look at this. I like the commitment from Texas Rangers. While the Nate isn't really doing any damage right now, they want to get this cleared out. They don't want to have to deal with Liquid sitting next door. They took up Mexi just moments ago, and now they want to see if they can find James as well. He's going to run into the smoke. We know James is a damn scary player, and somehow he tends to get things going his way. When he's in these type of situations. Sauna boys though over the top. Catches Panjo in the middle. And he's going to get taken down. That's good. Actually, I'm just looking at the east side of the map preview right now. Gustav. You can see. Seems he's actually got himself onto a bike. And there you go. It's finally going to pay off. Oh, he doesn't get the last no. tag. So the gig is almost up now. Almost had it. It was almost perfectly timed as well. Gustav was just mm -hmm. running up and Simsy hopped on his two-seater to try and regroup. Uh, Apex now going to pull west a little bit, maybe hold on to that compound just to try and gatekeep FaZe. But FaZe got a lot of a lot of space to just move in direct west here, but 
again, knowing them, they're probably going to try and wrap into a bit of a better position because, I mean, if the next one shifts down towards Junkyard, fighting across from east to west in this circle is so difficult because of that valley. The valley that Jeeves exactly. is in, I mean. Yeah, it's practically going to be impossible for them to do any sort of crossing there unless if you take out all the teams around you. And while, I mean, got to give FaZe credit, they're a good team, but that's going to be you in a... Well, taking out four teams prior to the next phase popping, that's probably not going to happen. So let's see what they're opting to do in the meantime. Ray Shetch sitting dead center on this one. They're split out, currently trying to gain as much info as they possibly can. One of the few spots where you can actually both look uh, further uphill towards Junkyard and also maintain some sort of control down towards the south. That's what really makes that compound important in these areas. So, well, with the circle that goes into these areas of the map. In the meantime, Navi, it's been a somewhat quiet start to the game for them. They're looking over towards the Wildcats, potentially eyeing their compound. You can see Senya up on the hillside. He wants a piece of this. Yeah, Navi have a couple of good off angles, but again, there's just so much open space. Once you come south of those valleys that are just off screen, you can see actually the other half of the Wildcat split, but after all, gonna try and pave their way through the circle. Actually, right in between Omicron and the other half of Wildcats to what we just saw. So this is coming uh, into Razor Edge territory if they go any further west here, Toby. This is what we call a blind rotation. They have no clue what's awaiting them over the hills up, and somehow they're still all four alive. They might be able to stop their vehicles here as well and get eyes on something further forward. We saw players go down. That's going to be Calvin going to get flushed gold. out there as well. This is huge for after all. I mean, this is a greedy as hell rotation that ends up paying off for them smart play there face clan well they uh, knew the apex players the people were coming in from the east let's see if they're ready to take them on here they've already lost one calvin a massive frag for the team will he be able to hold half here and tens is trying to get out of there sims is still alive and inside the compound he might get to surprise them here and yeah, fuzz i don't think he's expecting this at all he is tunneled looking west here simsy looking like he's gonna maybe just Try and slip out the backside. I don't know if he's still got a vehicle over there or what, but Fuzz Face now checking the compound. Mike, oh no, he won't. I was going to say the timing could have been perfect there for Fuzz. <laughs> Wait, Simsy does actually open okay. up now, so what? Okay, you're caught on your own. You want to really isolate them. You're all outside the circle. Like now you're not only playing against one another, you're also really, really playing against time because for both these teams, you want to move forward. You do not want to have to stay out on this blue edge and fight your way in. The circle is only going to grant you 60 seconds until the new one's going to move, so you do not have time. You simply don't have the time to sit around here, take a fight to one another. But look at the way that Apex is splitting around face and out towards the east right now. They want to take them out. In the meantime, Uber, well, he's not too he's not too worried about face, or towards Apex. He's just going to take those 800, 900 meter shots down towards um, Senya. <laughs> Senya's like, who the hell is shooting at me? <laughs> I will... does get the first, but again, just the... The stack up there, the duo from FaZe Clan, perfect trade in that situation. Actually, Inten's going to open up. Simsy back on a wide flank against the blue here. And after all, sending some shots FaZe's way. It's going to pull Fuzz Face away from the Simsy. Might get a deadly downhill angle here, Toby. This could pay off. You've got to keep in mind, though, that Apex are down to two. They lost Calvin early. Now they lost into uh, Ival as well. It's just intense and Simsy left alive. Simsy, but as you said, he uh -oh. might be able to uh -oh. get a god tier angle here. Jeeves fall. Just link without in 16th, but up close. No, Simsy, while getting one, will fall as well. Four kills coming in for Face Clan. Not only that, but they actually get to keep all four players alive. Hold that thought, though, for a second. Pull up, getting pulled up on by the Texas Rangers. Top finds one, trades it immediately. Let's see if he can find the second. He has the angle. Can't quite find the first. First knock there, no, he's still what not able the... to get it, but no, he vaulted. What? Is that what happens when you have vault and jump on the same button? I think it might have been. Uh... Oh, that one was on painful You don't to have watch. vault and jump on the same button. Navi eliminated one... as well. Uh... Mm. And there mm. goes the Rangers. So in the matter of, I want to say four seconds, we lost four teams. Inconvenient. You got you to gotta know your hotkeys better than that. Vault and jump belongs on two separate keys for that reason alone right there. Yeah, that one was uh, tough to watch. Especially, I think That's... he landed the initial damage as well. He was so keen yeah. to follow up on the initial tags that uh, he ended up mounting the window ledge. But uh... <laughs> phase now. Trying to plot their way through the ridges. I love this area of the map. As soon as, as, soon as it comes down oh, to yeah. the south side of the junkyard here, I absolutely love it. Again, there's space for kind of three or four teams to set up along this way and 
and see shift w after all raise your edge over at oasis maybe just setting the foundations for a brilliant phase four here face are really unlucky here they're going to be running in between two full teams let's see brexco he's going to be playing the anchor he's just sitting tight waiting in a contained position not allowing for anyone to push through the board uber has been starting to shoot now he's going to get completely caught in the open uber will fall a2 will fall and as i said they might end up going in between two teams and that's exactly what's happening right now in the matter of no time whatsoever gustav finds himself all on his own they've been seen now chris good angle on him this should be face clan down unless of course the really pulls out some magic He's going to try and find the one on to after all, the close one here, but Brexco with an open angle onto him. And FaZe will fall in 12th place, just taking the four kill points away from this one. FaZe out, Liquid out, Navi out. Some of the heavy hitters in the late game are eliminated. And oh my lord, look at the circle and look at the amount of teams trying to make their way in from the east. My eyes now are drawn to Raise Your Edge. I just said yeah. it. A lot of the heavy hitters are gone. This is your chance to salvage. This is your chance to ride back up that leaderboard and claim some points for yourself. How aggressive are you willing to go in order to find kills out here on the eastern edge? Yeah, they actually have a really good split. Two on the north side of the road and two down at the Oasis compound. So they are in a really, really good position to, to clean up a lot of this. But it depends how many of these fights take place on the edge and how many of them take place outside what is now outside the next circle. Everyone has to play this one from the north. You can have one or two teams sit down south. That's really going to be it. Let's see now, though, after all. And Shift W, it was about to happen. I mean, it had to happen, I was going to say, at some point. And now it does Chris on his own here. Saga, a little further towards the east, trying to hold off. Ibaku will leave in a vehicle. They will have the info of that. So the rest should be coming in. In the meantime, pull up. They peek over the ridge. They find me say instantly Nuki is there. But look at the chorus off angle position. He's actually being contained right now. No! As I say that, Luki falls down, but so does Misa and Nuki in return. And Sakura got to get some more damage off here. Again, this is pretty bad for both of them. I mean, Solar Boy's already taken a Fennib, actually getting involved. They're going to find... You see, actually, Bent's going to get flushed out. Nuki does get knocked as well. And there you go, Sakura and... Riddle from Fenerbahce will combine to take care of pull up and now Sakura can move forwards. Yeah, it's a tough situation for him to be in. Have three up alive. Three up and alive a second ago and now in trouble. Northern Lights as well. Barely even a shadow of their former self. While they got themselves a uh, good win earlier, it hasn't been pretty for them recently. Chris now pushing forward. This is where they need to fight. Take the fight. Raise your edge needs to stand strong here. If they can deal with Shift W, they will have some space to play around. Oh, Chris oh, oh. down. Brax go taps forward. Good damage done. Forces Monkey down. Yeah, I mean, if they can still move on this. Actually, Udir gets picked off. So it looks like Raise your edge are actually going to lose two out of this situation here. That is. Uh... Not what you want to see for another game from Raise Your Edge that could crumble here. Omicron as well, mounting an attack onto the south side of this compound. This is just all spelling disaster for Raise Your Edge. Oh my god, they've got Look at the amount the of pressure here, Toby. To the compound in the world, exactly. And that's why I wanted to see Raise Your Edge split out and push aggressively out of the circle earlier. If you sit back, if you allow the teams to come to you, this will happen. They will somehow find a way to push in at the exact same time, and it's going to cost you. So now, in for way more than they can chew it. Oh, really? Don't throw an outside. Riddle. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Just exactly. Gets inside. The Pink Pony is going to be blessed with another hard shift in their direction. And what should have been Ray Church and maybe one or two more teams on that side is now Ray Church with four more teams. Fortunately for oh them, there's God. a solo and Riddle charming in doing damage, but it's actually going to be the event taking him down and helping out this is, W just a little. This is huge information, though. Wildcats getting that. They know he's just got two knocks. So Wildcats can actually wrap around on the north side of this they terrain. To. They're desperately looking for both of these knocks on Shift W. Look at this. Here you go. Here comes the push. They're stacked up. They're going to try and push through and clear here. One res coming off. Oh, Zocker no. did manage to get it, but Zocker actually spotting Levent's jump peak there. BSD going to try and send a flash over and convert still. Why do you jump though? That's the question. You know exactly where they are. Spiro now over the ridge line is going to get angles oh on two. God. BSD is going to fall. Northern Lights, a counter setup, and that's going to be the second team to help out Shift W in staying alive here. They were never supposed Ugh. to survive. He even had a nade. BSD, I mean, Rupture, sorry, had a nade. Throw it forward. You know where they're prone. They can really only be in one spot. 
Wow, able to stay alive. Well, let's see if they can do so for longer. Research, they want to push up, but they know for a fact that Omar can play as a city just below, ready to push as soon as they engage. Dempsey actually going to open up on two monkey inside the compound here. Omar can still play in time on the south side. DA should have some open sight lines if the circle forces them a little further west. But again, this stalemate of the compound now coming to fruition. Lucy trying to hold off on his own. Again, it's been a game where Richards have had the circles. They just haven't been able to position themselves accordingly to bring the games home. Omar can still fall alive. You see Gem Tip. On the boxes here, trying to get angles over the top, not going to spot anything. And with every second and every centimeter that circle moves, Omar can push further forward. And there's really nowhere Rayshirts can go without taking a fight to them. No, just a matter of time now. Process of elimination. They know where the remaining members are. And you can see how much utility is getting invested here just to clean this out. And give Omicron as much time to look forward into the next zone as possible. Oh, the molly's good. The molly's fantastic. Yeah, Ducey is down. And Ducey might be down. Is he? Yes, he is. And Razor yeah. Edge, what was a great position, ends up with a, I want to say, four-point game overall. Simply not good enough when you are in the position that you are. Brexco is going to throw some nades down, try to take the fight to the team below. They're in trouble as well, though. There's still three guys up now. Make that two with Brexco falling, and you can see Omar. Oh, they are not waiting. They're ascending at full speed forward. Yeah, I mean, these are just free kills here for Omicron. Gemti going to steal Brexco away from the Northern Lights. One more going to bring out Spyro as he confirms Zoka. So that just leaves one member in his kill, Yakai. Omicron, fantastic there. Didn't even, didn't even give, didn't even allow for a lot of time. They didn't stay in the compound. They come straight out trying to pressure. I love that. We still have a team here that we have not accounted for. Pretty much for the, I want to say last... 15 minutes. DA. They are four alive down south. If they can do anything to pressure Vampire Game off to the next set of buildings in that compound, DA might have a good play on this. I mean, the circle just completely in on the compound there. And if any other team opts to go down, which they will have to, I'm expecting Omagan to be forced to make a move before DA does. And I know DA has vehicles as well. They could make a play on that compound. You see the smoke line is coming this in is now. There's two bikes. Oh, oh my lord. This is going to be dangerous. You cannot shoot is with those bikes. You need to get up and need to get off. Yeah, and the pre-nades coming out from Pink Pony as well, but that's just going to pull up outside. I like this. Omer can actually potentially going to set up. This could... Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, and it's actually no, Luke going to save no. it. Smash to get the killing blow. And they had no clue he was there. Perfect position to get kills on Omer again, but it ain't going to happen. He's going to fall as well. Baltulins. What can you do here? Good nade could take down maybe two if you're lucky. It ain't going to happen. Vasco is going to find Code Marco. D8 did find their entry point to the compound. Pink ponies were forced to run off. And now Lou and Batulins, outside the circle, needs to fight their way in. They've got another. Well, I say they've got another. Batulins got another 15, 20 meters to cover to get inside this one. Still trying to send some. Well, that's a fantastic oh. nade, actually. That's wow. done a lot of damage to Paige, and it's going to knock Jempty. Dudin's going to try and follow up. Potentially, the second one could be good as well. Oh, no, a bit far. A bit far, but it does some more damage. He's unlucky not to get another one off that. Oh, does it do damage? It also obscures some audible cues, but Dudin's will have to prone on down. Lou, not a whole lot he can do to help out right now. Vasco does fall. That's good. Margo from down south. You can see Lou cannot help as long as they're on that side of the ridge. But Dudin's wants to get to safety. Can't quite get there. The name tags all over the place, but it goes to show how cramped these Omagan players are on that small ridge line. All they have to work with getting off this hill is a minivan that can, well, concede all of them. But I don't think they want to go back in that car if they can avoid it. Omar will have to run down right now. All that's keeping Batulins alive is the fire coming in from DA and Pink Ponies. Yeah, Lou has a decent angle to stop that push across, so... The problem is, the longer Batulins and Lou are alive, the worse it makes for Omar. And actually, Batulins going to find a fantastic spray onto Paige. That's going to slow things down for Omar again. Does still have a first aid kit, so he can, he can stay here. Lou's going to find Vasco as well, so Omar can... It's getting literally held at the edge here by the two remaining members of Northern Knights. I think Omar is going for a record attempt at how many, how many times can you rest a teammate in one game? 
think they've all been down like five or six times at this point with the amount of fire they've been taking up that hill. Lou trying to reposition with the bike, but Tulin's brought on down, oh, finds no. Gemti. Will he be able to get the flush? Lou is there to help him out. Tipo needs to make a run, and it ain't gonna happen. Oh, no. Code Marco finds him. Omar can simply could not get off that hill. And as I was saying before, while they've been quiet, DA has a solid chance at making things happen here, but Tulin's in trouble. 17 HP, no smokes, no nothing. One bullet will do it. Code Marco finds him. Five kills for DA. Yeah, and Pink Pony allowing DA to get in. Just They couldn't focus to the north and clean up all these kill points. Archie, going to send out a nade. That looks a little bit optimistic, to be honest with you, but... Uh... You see here, Vasco with the bolt. That's a nice headshot if that's the one he landed. Oh, he Ooh. into it. <laughs> oh, the that nasty is, uh, little pre-fire. That was pretty disgusting. He knew, he knew it. He timed it right. He knew exactly when he was going to peek it. Lou, good angle, finds aim. It's just him left alive, trying to fight for that second. Potentially first place. If he can force the fight between DA and Pink Ponies, he is, um, well, he has a valid chance here. There's only two guys left on what? the other side. It's just Vampire, and he's going to fall now. DA, 4v1. Is it a DA Lul, or is it a DA Park Champ? We're just seconds away from finding out. See, now they're coming up, and there you go. As easy as that. <laughs> DA will close this one out. Eight kills and the chicken dinner here. Fantastic slow play again. They were in a crucial position to stop Omicron moving west after that fight at the Oasis, but... Omican dealing with Raise Your Edge in the fashion they did allowed them to prioritize the north side of that compound. Unfortunately, Northern Knights is doing so much damage, not, not just to obviously in terms of outputting, but damage in terms of holding Omican in that position for as long as they did. Just, I mean, their game fell apart at that point. Yeah, I, I, I really loved seeing how DA played this one coming into it. I mean, they, again, sometimes you got to go aggressive and go hunt the kill. Sometimes you get lit. I don't even want to say yeah. let circles come to them because they had to make moves too, but they knew all the fighting was happening towards the northeast and they could really just uh, play time and uh, and wait their turn to go aggressive, which they did. Great game for them. Now let's head back to the desk and see what they have to say about the final Murma game of the day. That's right. Thank you, lads. As Martin would say, it's a DA Pog champion in the chat. He says that all the, all the time, all the time. Martin, Aveng uh, Frost joining me here as well here to break down this game. DA getting themselves the victory, me. Martin. What do you think about that? Well, me and me, yes. Despite being part uh, and the founding father of uh, some of the Pog champions in the emotes and stuff <laughs> in Twitch, you're denying your uh, your participation in this now it's completely fine uh I'll, I'll i'll happily spam some uh some emotes in the twitch chat no but overall uh, another game on a uh an eastern side of it uh up by minutes mm. it's been very very close for these these three circles despite we still see teams played better and better uh or the same like in between changes when we have these similar circles, I want to see improvement from game to game. I want to see yep. uh, clever, better rotations. I want to see this. Obviously, we have some different flame paths, uh, which changes loot spot as well. But I want to see some of these changes that some of these guys make. And uh, we, we've seen some quite significant improvements in how some of the teams are rotating. So that's uh, that's very nice to see. But overall, Pink Pony had a good uh, circle here. They managed to stay mm. in for for the remainder of the, like, or the vast majority of the time here. But this has managed to crash this compound quite nicely. And overall, the the whole end game here was just a like a whack-a-mole in the north. Yeah, we were seeing that here. Northern Lights getting themselves a few cheeky kills here and there. And majority of teams were able to cripple Omicron on their attempts to move into this circle. Uh, and for us to finish, th finish things out, DA just holding on to this compound very, very nicely. Uh, well, sorry, not holding onto the compound. Sorry, I should say crashing into the compound uh, nicely and then being able to eke out the win. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a little bit of a uh, free push, I'd say, because we saw the pink mm -hmm. pony. They were actually holding down the compound, but they were more focusing on the east and north side than the south side, which was the most vulnerable yeah. side uh, that they should have been holding out. We saw that they were trying to pre-nade that push, but those nades never got... Uh, to the other side of the fence where DA actually was so there was no damage coming out as well And there was no damage done to them while they were pushing in and we got the points from the last game of course here uh, DA with the 18 points uh, with the win uh, Northern Lights just behind with 14 and shift W with 10 uh, But going back to that it was a uh, very well uh, played from DA with that crash as well uh, Not only taking care of uh, pink pony, mm -hmm. but also make sure that they had vision on 
Omaken on the east side and also looking over a little bit towards the west side, seeing what NLT was up to, even though they were not really that much in vision of them. Yeah, very nice to see as DA continuing things on from their rhetoric that they were able to set in their dream hack performance. And we're seeing Northern Lights also getting what I feel like in these first couple of games, Martin, is a bit of a step up from the previous form that we saw them in. Yeah, it's a massive step up. We saw them perform extremely well in uh, the PCS charity and uh, then they had a bit of a slumber. Now they're, it looks like from the start here of these first three games, they're really back at it. Code Margo and Riddy with one of all shared place, first place here with four kills. Uh, and mm -hmm. the three other guys are shared on three kills with the third place here. But overall, definitely coming back at it. I, I'm, I'm really liking this and I'm really curious to see if they made any changes within the team uh, or mm. it's just been uh, like the slumber we've been talking about. Yeah, we'll find out later on. There will be our interview in a few moments time, hopefully. Uh, as you can see on all of our kill leaders, let's take a look at that damage done. Lou has been having a great few games here. Mm. Uh, Froze, we saw him in the first game getting a plenty of kills. Second game, some kills as well. Third game coming in, 839 damage. Great stuff. Yeah, we also saw towards the end there how he was the one that was getting that off angle going on the west side uh, while the others were holding out Omak and from the north. Getting that off angle creates a lot of opportunity but also opens up uh, a few more ways how you can actually engage that battle or just hold it defensively. But mm. it was just a great move making sure that he was out of range from Pink Pony uh, and DA at the same time while getting that and that basically got them a, a lot further into the game there or towards the end game yeah definitely so our interview is indeed ready so let's bring on who i assume is probably battle ins here from northern lights yes it is hello Yay. friend how are you doing yeah hello i missed you guys yeah, you <laughs> last you time, uh, <laughs> yeah that's nice that's nice to, to know <laughs> so i'm ready to speak with you uh, perfect, perfect. So, um, first question's a little bit of a, a rougher one, but I'm hoping that you'll bear with me here for a moment. Obviously, uh, you guys, Charity Showdown, did fantastically. The few tournaments beyond that, or at least most recently, it's not been as easy for Northern Lights. What what happened? Do you feel like there was a bit of a drop-off in the team? Or wh what do you put it down to? I think it's uh, like a combination um, between... We were learning some new things that I want to mm -hmm. use on the big tournaments. We um, played very bad as a team. Like our communication mm -hmm. was bad, but I don't know why, but it was so. Uh, and maybe it was a, a plan for PCS3, so we're gonna win it. <laughs> so maybe. other teams gonna maybe. wait. Uh, other teams gonna wait that we're gonna be like 16th place, no fights, and so on. And now we're ready like to smash them all. So yeah, ah. let's go. False sense of security. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin, question? Yeah, I'm uh, happy to see you guys uh, back here. It looks like it's great form. Also nice to have you back on the, the interview. But I want to hear, actually, it's a it, it's more of a question. Why did the deep change his name to Lou? Hmm. Um, <laughs> it's better to ask him because he just want <laughs> to be uh, Lou. Mm, maybe he has some... Chinese players that he's a fan of, I don't know. Um, okay. So, just Lou. Actually, actually, we have like a bit Asian in our team. So, mm. uh, Asians play good. Yeah, so we're good. Ah, right, okay. His, his last name's Lou Kanoff, right? So, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I'm pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah you pronounced it good. Oh, did I? Wow, oh, okay, amazing. <laughs> Patrick, yeah. question? <laughs> um, I want to ask, coming into a group stage like this, when you have the rotating lobbies, the round robin so-called, uh, what do you think is the hardest with that? Is it like having different teams or is it the teams coming in from qualifiers you don't know too much about? What is the hardest uh, during the group stage like this? Um, I can't say that it's hard for us uh, if we're talking about rotations because uh, I think we're like one of the most experienced team in macro. Yeah, in macro thing. So mm -hmm. we don't have uh, problems with this thing. Yeah. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and uh, I think there are some problems with the fights. We have to do it better. And that's all. Like, the only problem for us is it's only us. 
yeah if we play bad we play bad if we play good we have a lot of points so uh, i think uh, on this stage uh, there are no problems for us if we're talking about right. like new teams from uh, open mm. qualifiers we are ready for them no problem for us final quick question are you happy with your first couple of games here yeah yeah i'm happy with the first one with third one and i hope we're gonna play better next games so yeah of course i'm always happy if we play good you know after these uh, tournaments <laughs> like dreamhack psl um i felt like we are not playing the game now we are playing the mm -hmm. game so that's the most fun part of it so fantastic yeah. all right well go play the game some more we'll see you on erangel thank you very much friend let's go thank you bye-bye comrade <laughs> Fantastic to hear from Batulins, uh, as always. And uh, I, we, we didn't have our bathrobes ready. I do apologize, guys. Uh, but that's just how things are going to be. He'll just rock it himself. We're just waiting for him to join the lobby. And then, of course, we'll be getting into our Erin Gels here. We've got three coming at you here for the rest of the day. It is, it's nice to get to talk to Batulins again, Martin, all things considered. They didn't have the easiest of times, but now they're back on the horse. Yeah, they were um, they were playing extremely well at uh, PCS Charity One, of course, getting first place, and mm -hmm. then uh, PCS One getting third. So they've been playing extremely well there. But eleventh at PCS Two was uh, kind of a, a hit to the stomach. I feel like now they've been yeah. able to really step back at it. They uh, they started here with third, like they starting up with thirty six points. Fantastic start from them. They've only played three games, remember, and they're already ahead of so much yeah. so much of the team sitting here in tenth place, uh, bouncing up seven places in in today. And FaZe hits 100 points here, Froz. I mean, who, are we surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, right? After yesterday's performance, and I mean, we've seen them today as well in the first game there, how they were just popping off. Uh, mm. But I, I feel like they've slowed down a little bit uh, coming in today after yesterday, which is something you normally want to do. You don't want to, like, try to use everything you have in your playbook already. You want to slow down a little bit, have more fun, and you're going to enjoy more, try to learn more about your opponents while you're in here in the group stage. You got all the time in the world, especially with that kind of uh, lead they have right now. Yeah. So, so far here throughout our first three games, we've had a, a DA win. We've had a Team Liquid win and we've had a Northern Lights win. Who did who did Martin pick again? I, I can't. Who was what? it? Was it? There was a team you picked. I, hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I can't remember. It was. Yeah, that's all. That anyway, was the team that got 17 points in the last game. Oh, damn it. Anyway, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on swiftly before I say anything more and incriminate myself. Uh, here, <laughs> uh, shift of you still sat nicely in second place with that 79 points. Brilliant stuff. Finabachi actually with 42 points here so far before we're getting into this as well. I've been pleasantly surprised, not only with Pink Pony, but also Fenabachi, considering they were a very late entry here for us to the tournament. Yeah, 100%. But the thing is that their Miramar games has so far been much stronger than their Erangel games that we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of a problem, even though like it's not a bad thing to have one good map, one bad map, especially since we have a 50-50 split going on here. Yeah. But you want to be somewhat more consistent on your bad map. Uh, yesterday, it wasn't really the performance you were looking for uh, after seeing their performance on Miramar. They got themselves 11th place with 0 kills, 6th place, 6 kills, 10th place, 2 kills. Uh, so, of course, in game 5, that was a little bit salvage, but... I hope they can do better because we see that on Miramar, what they can actually do. And Erangel, we know that's the home of everyone. That's the one you should mm. be performing best on. Are there any other surprises that jump out to you, Martin? Be it Fenerbahce or, or anybody else? Uh, definitely Pink Pony and Fenerbahce being up there. They are, yeah, mm. I know we're only on the second day, uh, yep. but still they've been performing very nicely. Um, surprised to see some of the teams at the bottom. Apex had a rough start here after we saw them dominating in DreamHack. Um, but again, second day, only three games uh, done for the day. We have three more today, and then we have four more days after this. So uh, still a lot of surprises to be made. And I, I think we're going to see the, the lobby stabilizing a little bit after uh, all of them has been, have played once. And then I th think the meta might change just slightly after that. Yeah, plenty to come for sure. We had uh, yesterday when it came to Aaron Gelfros, quite a bit of variation. Uh, especially when teams had to do their good old rotating thing. I think we had a military, we had that northeast of Potato Hill, and we had that last ridiculous game, uh, which was down <laughs> towards the kind of new peer area. Um, mm. So 
yesterday really tested people and I'm, I'm hoping for that again here today what are we thinking i mean that's what you want to see because you want to see the teams needing to adapt uh every game that's where you're gonna yeah. see the good teams shine up a little bit more than the unexperienced ones and not just the circle itself but you also have of course some teams coming from the qualifiers you don't know that much about or the qualifying teams don't know too much about the uh the big name teams uh when they come in here so needing to adapt to that is what's great to see because that's when you see those kind of great uh, plays coming out uh great rotations how you're holding out how do you want to play this as a team all that kind of stuff that's when it's so much uh, nice to see here in the competitive scene yeah for sure any thoughts before we're going into our own girls here mr martin i think we've got one more player just waiting to join up so ah yeah i'm uh, i'm curious to see how the arrangers is going to change it, it's we've had these kind of um these changes between the maps and and we see some of the teams that are able to make some really good macro just not be able mm. to transfer that over to a ranger um and I, I hope we're gonna see that they're able to kind of change that and and really step up in that um but also hoping for more kind of wacky circles i've been loving these uh these curveball circles not sure the player has but it's definitely a nice uh, change of pace yeah for sure, for sure. I, I'm hoping to see a little bit more in these next couple of games from a, a team like Sauna Boys, for example, who had a great start to yesterday, Froz, but then a little bit of a fall off in some of the games. How many points have they gotten today? I don't know if they've gotten too many points. I keep seeing them going around out kind of like middle of the pack-ish. Six points. Six points? Okay. Froz, mm. what are your thoughts? Six points, uh, five of the, them came from the last game. Um, and it's looking a little bit grim, but we heard from Anonymous yesterday. They had a great start. They were going to try yeah. to just uh, play on that one, take it a little bit more easy. But it seems like they can't take it easy anymore. They need to uh, shift up right now. They need to go for the next gear. They need to make sure that they get those points that they need uh, to qualify for the finals. And I'm not talking about they need to be a top five or anything like that. You want to be top 16, but you don't want to be towards the cusp all the time. You want to make sure that you solidify yourself being towards the top, have some decent games at least. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You got to get back on the horse properly here when it comes to the points that you're able to accrue. Pink Pony likewise in terms of the surprises that they've been able to show here so far. A second place today with six kills. They got themselves a third place. Only one kill though, Martin, in the previous game for Pink Pony. And when they had a compound like they did, I would admittedly like a little bit more from Pink Pony, even though they've been surprising us. Uh, yeah, but you also have to consider, take into consideration these uh, the circles that they had. Like they were in the southwest mm -hmm. side in an important shift, and the vast majority of the teams was on the north and the eastern side, where uh, there were so many fights going out before. So all the kills went to the teams that was either centered up at that point or on the east side where they fought each other. That's also why we saw the the points spread out. But for sure, we want to see some more uh, aggression. If you're a team that have you know. Uh, four guys alive late game when other teams yeah. are fighting we want to see some third party coming out yeah definitely so well gentlemen any final thoughts patrick before we go into our first airing girl i just want to say that the crate does not predict where the circle is going to be oh that's true you really wanted it to happen this time normally he hates it but he really wanted it to happen on those islands this <laughs> one this one time i believe in it and it didn't happen so i'm never going to believe in it again Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. But it would it would have been a long shot anyway. Anyway, we're going on to Erangel. It's grassy past this time. Let's send it over to Toby and Hypok. Hypok, we all know it's true. We all know it's true. Well, it's just the game. The game all, just took a chill on it, you know? All I'm going to say is the one person that's been most opposed to that theory for a second during that game did want to believe that it was possible. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> he's, he's not going to mention it again, but... We got through, Toby. We got through to him. Is is that what's going to happen? This is going to be like a Santa Claus relationship. Some people believe, some people don't. And now, finally, we converted the... Uh, what's the guy called from, like, all those movies? The uh, Grinchian. The Grinchian was converted to, for just for a second, <laughs> believe in Christmas. And uh, and now we can now we can go back to our to old habits. Now, let's see. I want to I wanna look down south because today actually won't be as bad as we've seen before. But Apex, Shift, W, and Navi... I want to see if they're going to have any clusters. The plane was not going towards the east. Face will go down south. No bystanders. No other teams contesting them. All good and dandy. No big issues there. And towards the south, at least this time around, it's not going to be too contested either. But think of tomorrow when we throw Tornado Energy in the mix. When, when I mean, even today when Wildcats get a plane that goes Milter, there's going to be so much chaos down there. Yeah, there is. I'm, I mean, I'm... 
I'm looking up towards Razor Ed, uh, Raise Your Edge again, uh, just because they're having a little bit of early pressure. And we know that's kind of where their uh, where their game has fallen apart so far today. But it looks like the Rangers are going to scoot off to North George. Pull up actually making the journey all the way across to Zaki, which I know will make you happy. <laughs> and, uh, and nothing, nothing else really stands out. Again, phase down on Soznovka, but again, Mill was not obtainable here. Mm. So no real surprises, but not too much of an overlap. Again, I was, I was expecting it in this lobby more so than yesterday, but no real overlap here. Yeah, especially when you throw in a circle. Where I guess the top of the circle, right from the get-go, the more aware teams will be. Like, had it had this been a, one of those more diagonal, pretty straightforward planes, you'd probably, you'd even, you'd, you might even see some teams actually end up engaging each other, even though they probably didn't want to. But with planes that are already tough, teams are going to be that much more cautious when jumping because they know other teams are having to make those uh, like reactionary drop um, decisions as well. So while no one's fighting, there are a lot of teams sitting real close to one another. And of course, as we can see, with Gustav being down south towards the newly added uh, Ferry Pier area, it's... There really isn't that much space to move around in the circle. No, there isn't. Um, and again, space itself, but also rotation paths. Um, mm. It's always one to consider just with, again, once we see this circle pop, uh, where teams are going to opt to kind of rotate it for, even where you want to go to. I mean, with the center of this circle, Toby, there's there's not an awful lot to dive towards. You know what I mean? There's, I mean, what would you crash if you wanted, if you wanted to go and take something... If you're rotating in from outside of this, what are, what are you going to go to? There are some pretty tasty hay bales towards that western field. <laughs> western, yeah. mm. Other than that, there is a wizard tower by far. You have, uh, if you crash from the south, you have some uh, uh, some uh, pretty pretty low cost planes. You can you can you can opt to to maybe see if you can fix and take a ride on. Other than that, I mean. You know, just just the usual, the usual availabilities. I want to see for Liquid though. This is not the guaranteed military game, meaning Liquid ain't gonna be sending it immediately. Also, Orange is just trying to make Stimsy's life terrible. So even though, even though we did not have that third team in the mix, they're already now causing trouble for one another. That's actually Navi extending over the top. It's and this this is this is gonna be Tornado Energy area tomorrow, right? That's what I'm saying. There is going to be chaos down south, even moving into the finals, because no two games will be the same with the amount of teams that like to loot down here. I can see this is... We did see a little taste of uh, Liquid flexing south towards a Apex, yeah. and it was... Was it Jeems that ran over Simsy? Or I, I can't remember exactly who it was, but there was, a, there was a vehicle mishap. Let's just leave it at that during uh, DreamHack. And you can see Jeems already out on the hill, just pressuring away, trying to get that early control of an area like i said that's that's one of the spots that you'd potentially pull up to try and take so uh liquid denying that space apex they're gonna be uh be able to maintain some two-way control they have people down towards the south and hills you can see here smc taking control of the ducks at least to some extent down here and also um also intense and and Calvin will be able to sit up north. And to be fair, this is a pretty decent two ways, but especially with the newly added um, harbor, you want to, even though you don't need to have people in the harbor area per se, you still want to have some sort of control and vision on what's going on. Calvin able to unflip his flipped vehicle. We'll be able to rotate further down south into what's least days anyway, commonly known as the snake compound. We'll be sitting tight there, probably with, maybe with the rest of Fenerbahce. Maybe they'll maintain a two way split. And maybe. Anonymous will go down. No, he's gonna stay alive for now. That's yes, again a lot of damage onto anyway from uh, the other side. That's me say. Coming up with the drive by or the seat swap, I should say. You see Smash getting an early kill onto Pink Pony, but Archie gonna respond back onto him. And this was uh, the position we did fly over previously, so we know these guys were in close proximity. Let's see what DA do to respond here. The crate that yeah, lures them all in this direction. <laughs> exactly. Archie, nice to x spray towards Murder. It's going to find the knock there. DA in trouble early on, having said that they did find Vampire. So, uh, a little bit of damage going in for them, but it's a two man team left standing, and they have no interest in taking this fight. No, no, Mithralia. She called in the open. Kyria knows how to take you down. Yeah, things falling apart here for the first Orangle game for D8. Just Marco standing. 
He's going to try and back away a little bit. Liquid now pulling up to the double barns is going to create a little bit more pressure, but Marco wisely not going into line of sight. Uh, he's pretty much committed to proning there. Orange, speaking of proning, he's actually going to hit the deck with the Rangers pulling up on him. I really, actually, really Sen hope. Senya gets a knock onto them, actually, from a different angle here. Yeah, that's in the field, though. That's uh, TTSN. Oh, he was the, the player from oh. behind. Yeah, he's still you can just a little further left than where Orange is looking right now. He's on the edge of the field there. They caught him off. So maybe that's actually going to force him to leave. You can see there, Senya and Tap picking them off in the uh, in the midst of the rotation. If we get a little view of the map real soon, we talked about Liquid. We talked to Clip the other day about how in the hell they maintain those rotations and how they can sit in the splits that they do. Liquid has a really greedy split going on right now. For one reason in particular, they can't see each other and they have no way of knowing what's happening towards one another. They have two players sitting in the double bonds that we talked about just before and two players sitting down in the compound just north of what we're seeing. You can kind of see Mexican teams over there. This is a ballsy current center anyway, split that no other team I feel like would dare to do at this point in the game. It and last time we saw Liquid try this, it paid off for them two games in a row with wins. So let's see if they're going to get the benefit of the circle this time around if it's going down to Face Clan. Yeah, and you mentioned Face Clan. They were the ones that made that huge rotation. I mean, huge in terms of how impactful <laughs> it ended up being. In that game yesterday, there's an Orm out. There's an Orm sitting next to the Pink Ponies, but I think that's in view of. Uh, It'd be in clip yeah. down at the barn, so it's a, it's a risky pickup. Yeah, so. There's simply too much military land still in play that anybody wants to hard commit to a compound at this point. We're seeing a lot of those sender splits, and and I mean to be fair, I mean right now Face has all the control in the universe of military bases. At this point, they know they're the only team there too. So 20 seconds to go. Regardless of where it shifts, you wouldn't expect to see any teams aggress, but everyone is setting up for the worst the chance that this one could go south. Yeah, and we're going to find out in just a couple of seconds. I think you're absolutely right. It's a, it's a lot to invest to deal with that kind of early game. <laughs> this one Still, goes south. I mean, not really a 50-50. It's a 60-40 in terms of including the water with the south shift, I'd say. But... Um, yeah, not a lot of uh, teams are going to have to move, but again, there is still a chance. This is just There's a repeat a of yesterday. <laughs> it's show, be a repeat show, show me a crate. Show me a crate on Soznoka. <laughs> Could you imagine? Anonymous does try to find one. It's going to be secure, secure, secure to secure the kill, but best of luck will fall regardless. Orange trying to find himself safe inside, and... Well, this is the issue for Navi. They don't really have to move because the position is actually decent for now. But other teams are starting to get interested in their compound and they cannot maintain control of everything, especially having already lost a player. Where was that crate? We see it. We see you, crate. We see you, crate. Hmm. Oh, military. Oh, military. That's where we are headed. Sikori, see. Did he get him out of the vehicle there? Oh. Those are wow. nice shots, actually. Solid taps coming in. Omarkin letting their presence be known on the uh, hills of Potato. Pink Pone is already up, and we have the Wildcats slowly pushing up on foot, too. Does Emil know of their whereabouts? I'm not sure. They haven't uh, done any shooting just yet, but I think Levent... Yeah, I think Levent saw some movement up there. Now they hear vehicles, too. This is going to be a complete cluster of a third-party fight. Should they be able to find Pink Ponies before they get out of here? Yeah, going to try and just get away from that Levent. A little love tap on the way out. Pink Pony's going to send down along the uh, the hillside past Double Barns. You see Liquidar. Yeah, Liquidar down to the south side of the hill. So they're actually going to come back in. Oh, T-Bone actually getting up. Catching she created off guard. And the Wildcats are split, so no real response here to be honest with you i'm gonna get to pick that one up for free you know i was just gonna say as much as those shots before were just small love taps it it really was crucial for omar because they had no clue that wildcats were pushing up here and well obviously them shooting towards pink ponies gave them all the info they needed so a free kill there van t pushing out into the open he's trying to see what he can find he will have uh well the remaining players 
from Sonobars over towards the east, but there really isn't any reason for them to sit here any longer. Scout further forward, scout on the move. That's what those bikes are good for. Yeah, Wildcats probably got to rethink their rotation now because they, they, they can't. I mean, knowing that Pink Pony obviously rotated away, that's going to be a factor for them. And coming back east onto Potato is just going to force them into this fight with Omicron. There's no reason for them to stay. Also, I gotta say, I mean, while it's happening off screen and nothing really is happening, I just love seeing all of Face Clan sitting. Like, if there's one team we don't expect to bridge camp, Face Clan are sitting four people, is holding a bridge right now. We might actually get to see First Face. Yep, there he is. They're bridge camping Spiro, and there's no way in hell he's gonna be expecting this. Down he goes, and look at their faces. Look at Spiro. Oh my lord, that is just <laughs> infuriating. <laughs> Face Clan down here. Now, let's see. Where or oh, where is the next circle headed? It's a repeat. Well, it's a repeat. Uh, the only thing here is that uh, yesterday, obviously, that we knew that it was going to bounce back, but this now doesn't give Fades the same option because they knew that that cliffside was going to be in the next pop. It had to be in the next pop. This one could cut out. Oh, well, now that Ivor and Apex have opted mm. to move away from double barns, that leaves a massive hole for somebody to uh, to get into they've got to make that move if you're the team of, 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 of Fendabachi you've got to read that the players came from there and take the compound but no they're stopping to the scout let's see in the meantime the pachinki fields is where all hell is breaking loose at least for wildcats they're under fire it's just BSD left alive and he's going to be in trouble to say the very least when I'm looking at this circle I'm seeing two maybe three spots available for teams to play from there really isn't a whole lot we shifted out I want to say 90% of compounds available with that shift and Oh my lord, is it going to be... Wait, what the... <laughs> Calendar? No, I became... <laughs> Batulins! Style Batulins. points! 10 out of 10! Get control of that horse and get yourself a compound. Batulins doing his best Cherry Poppins at PB PGC impression there. But, uh, he, I mean, he stuck the landing. He stuck the landing, he that's did. for sure. With a 360 wheelie to follow, that's some uh, some solid style points coming in there. Kind of kind of unnecessary showboating, but I guess he was just that happy to get a center compound this late in the game. Yeah, pull up now, coming onto the back side of the Pachinki Hill. Saw the boys are set up at the shacks in front, but uh, Banty actually going to give away their position by popping off a shot there. You can see the response is a little bit of damage, but... Meanwhile, after all, going to make another mad dash, similar fashion to what we saw them do in the previous game, actually. Paving their way through the circle. I mean, it paid off for them last time, and now we're going to make another blind send. My only fear is where the hell can you go that you might actually have a chance to claim at this point in the game. Greg's going to fall of the vehicle. Ibargo is going to be taken out as well. Daniman mm -hmm. taken out by Saga. That's a clean cut kill, and now Goose. Well, there's your shack. Oh. Nah, it ain't. Batulins and Perfectix gonna be able to work together. Take him down after old E eliminated. Now DA finding players too. That's going to be Omar getting in trouble trying to push forward. As far as I know, DA's only two or one one or two players left alive, but getting the double knock there, Jim two falls, T Bone's already down. Omar can in trouble as well. Yeah. Marco gonna get the better of Gem T over here at the flat top. Phase now. Obviously crossed over. I'm going to be looking for something over on the west side. And uh, a little bit of yeah. bumper cars in the field here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Senya is ready. They've had no chance to scout forward. Where the hell do we... The worst, the worst thing is Phase are going to drive up the hill and get that hill for free. They're going to drive up the hill and they're going to get it for free. They have had no chance to scout. And here they come. And there's no one shooting at them above. They're going to get a center position for free Crazy. oh my lord how in the universe is this allowed to happen did we talk did, did, did somebody I, mean, I, mean, I don't know they're actually they wary of it they're, they're kind of thinking there's no way this hill's free you can see them kind of circling a little bit it shouldn't be free and they actually committed to a place there's already people and no one's taking the draw of the hill eight defines one jury will take down a return Crossfade is down as well. They're in trouble. Uber coming in late. Ghost of Swollen already. They had a free hill, but they did not know Syria. 
and still alive he will not Opa falls face clan falls too and oh my lord had they just known had they just known yeah and again it's 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 a lot to pull up to there at this stage of the game and not expect any contact at all and again there were a lot of teams that can pressure that position i mean they would have kind of been committing to 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 play in prone for at least the 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 remainder of this circle but again the pull up here oh archie so lucky not to get run over there but kept enough bullets in the clip to to get the second knock as well just really unfortunate for phaser whenever they like in 25 minutes when when we hit this point and maybe maybe it it's coordinated well with the next game not having started yet when they see that that hill was free tables will be flipped <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be frustrating but of course you cannot play off of info you don't have that's simply impossible to ask from anyone but now you see them playing rope they're looking around for info tab in the meantime in trouble his two teammates are down and it's the texas rangers a team we haven't seen too much from over the course of this tournament really uh doing them dirty here yeah i mean that's a situation has been going on since circle one as we know the molotov in the shack is absolutely perfect yeah kill your guy will find that one with the molly onto calendor he will fall for the batch yard split obviously there's no response here try and save their fallen teammate Speaking of fallen teammates, Orange is down next to the UAZ, and we do know that the other member of the Rangers did pull away a little bit, but Top actually coming back mm. over to try and prevent this cross. Zero kills still for them. Orange, unfortunately, say complete for him. He's in the blue as well. Ain't going to get back up on his feet. Tap. Oh, Top, I should say, not Tap. That's confusing when they're right next to each other. Not able to uh, do a whole lot. Will maybe get a chance to try and pressure Navi off. But even for Navi's sake, where the hell do you rotate here? Do you stay on the shoreline? Or do you try and cross somewhere towards the buildings that Liquid are in? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna happen. Look at their faces. Look at Tab's face. <laughs> well, we tried. <laughs> we tried. We did something. Now, let's see. I want to see what Liquid does in this. When do they push out? Lou, in the meantime, let's hold a thought. Finds a double. And James, well, I said, when are they going to push out? Already here. They're already here trying to take control of a battered team. Yeah, the nade over is actually going to be perfect as well. It's going to do a lot of damage. That's wow. a 2017 James nade for you there. Perfectly done. Clean up all three members over on the edge of the hill. Wow. And Nate Master strikes again right in between them. But it makes these coins sitting right next to each other. Calculated the perfect, nothing they could do. Noki finds Udyr. Ray Stretch continuing to struggle here. Monkey is on his own. I to say that actually. No, he's not. He has a ship there to help him. But how in the universe did they get across the street? Uh, this is a really tricky position to get out of. Oh, the Molly actually might be good beyond that. Oh, it's not. He's set looking for something, not going to land that tag though. Monkey did get his first aid kit off Shiv for that. Looked like it was an easier headshot than the first, to be honest with you, but whiffing both of them. Yeah, and getting, getting away from this pipe is so difficult when a team pulls up in the position Sauna Boys are in, especially with Liquid in the mix. It's a really tough spot to get out of. What are we seeing here? Well, that's Lou, and that's four people sitting on top of each other. <laughs> Had he thrown one more instantly, it might have oh, been even more damage. Oh, my God. Gets the uh, gets the double, and you thought Schofield was down to minimum HP. Top, well, he stayed alive. Now he has the rotation to make. And fortunately for him, you're actually seeing all the Northern Knights players leave. So now it's a matter of does Liquid maybe look back now to try and make sure those snakes are crossing in the open? That's where he's finding himself. In the meantime, Mongi under fire, never taking control of the hills above, and somehow Ship is still alive. Yep, that nade doing a further 40 damage on here, but you can see now Clip got an angle on this. Let's steal that one away. Another one on the board for them up to four kills now. Marco still clinging to life. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> it was only going to last him so long. Props for trying. Ain't going to work, though. This is some David Attenborough stuff. US in the... And to be fair, a position to, to grant some cover for Shift, but uh, I'm not sure he's going to be enjoying it all that much because he's still... Oh, wait, wait, actually, oh, he's just exactly inside the circle. Good 
again. Gonna be able to live to see the close of this one unless something miraculous happens on the next though. It's uh it's an open run for him. Yeah, top is gonna try and throw it off the smokes. Will he stay alive to see the end of it? I'm not sure Lou is positioning himself up on the top of it. So um He's gonna be. He's gonna be. He's meeting it. And I like the fact that he's playing this on aggressive. He knows that he has Apex behind him. He needs to go aggro in this direction and maybe, hopefully, he can get the kills. And what he doesn't know is not getting to placement points, but wants to get into placement points before anything else happens. Top is on the side. No eyes just yet. Molly's thrown forward. There's only so many places he can be. He spots him down. He goes. He's gonna fall immediately after. One more point, though. Make sure to hold on that before they go out. And again, just look at Liquid set up here. Teams of Mexi down on the south side. Still Clib and Ibby. Trying to pressure over towards both the Sauna Boys and Shiv, the last man up for Raise Your Edge. Just so much control here from this split from Team Liquid. They're just... Uh... <laughs> I don't even think they were expecting that hillside to be free. With the way that they've been able to push out on it, because that's actually surprising. Yeah, like the problem was comfort they were sitting in. That is surprisingly difficult to scout ship. Well, it was only going to last so long. Fortunately for him, at least he does get some placement points with him. One naked. Sona boys now they can change their focus to what's happening south of them, and well, that seemed liquid. But I don't know if they have any interest in pushing up that hill. I'm going to see Apex trying to. Uh move forward a little bit find something over on this eastern edge i'm looking off to the north of them you can see the amount of pressure coming in from liquid just as they pull up here but maybe we're gonna see a little bit of a regroup from liquid to try and stop apex getting any further in calvin i think may have heard oh can pull up you can see He's creeping back this way. Vasco and Paige will be first contact for him. We can actually Paige going deep enough down here. Actually, I was going to say, Alvin didn't spot him over on the edge of his screen and he will lose his life for it. Ivel now got a hold against the two members of Omican. When he's not too late, Ivel trying to hold off here. Nate does do damage. Vasco is still on his feet, though. In the meantime, as you can see, they need to commit to this now, the Apex players, because Liquid are coming in from behind, and they do not want to find themselves in the middle of what could potentially be a third-party situation. Calvin's going to fall. Now, Vasco trying to hold off. He's just around half HP. This is a push that I feel like Apex have to make. Either you take the fight to Liquid, or you take the fight to Omak, and you do not sit still. Look at Mexi's position. Now, Mexi has come all the way over to the east side here, and he's going to get a fantastic anvil. Ivel will fall... Should be another one got over to Liquid Simsy. We'll get that first aid kit off. And Omicron again, they're the ones that they need to just play time here. They haven't got the man advantage. The spray is actually good from Simsy, but he will fall to the blue. Regen's resetting to get. Yeah, yeah, they were. They had the chance to push a two man Omar, but they opted to play it passive. Which, I mean, in some situations is fine, but as soon as Liquid starts showing presence from the hills behind, you need to do what Intense is doing right now. You need to just sprint through those smokes to start shooting oh, people. No. Unfortunately, now it's too late. Mex is in position to shoot them from behind, and so are the remaining players from Liquid. They're simply, I mean, indecisiveness. It's getting them killed here. And Ivor will fall, and it's Omicron that cling on to life here. Paige will stay alive with a little bit of help. And the Guardian Angels in the form of Liquid, who are still four-man strong, still in a fantastic position now. Ibby and Clib, still over on the west side. There's Mexi and Jeem still holding down the other side. I think they're going to have a good spot to hold as well once this one closes in. You can see Zoppy now the last man for Shift W trying to pressure onto Pink Pony. They've been chilling, big chilling down here in the trenches. Can we just for a second, by the way, appreciate the PUBG map designers? Just because this whole field would have been a flat pancake had it not been because this terrain was added. So thank you for making circles and being in this area actually playable. It's still not, it's not easy to play. Believe me, it's difficult, it's tricky, it's tricky, but there's actually something you can play. What is uh, here? <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, this all kind of depends on Zocker's utility situation. I mean, we can think of the vehicles here as some form of utility for him, but again, he's not really got a foothold to take this 1v2, but Liquid now getting into the mix with 
sauna boy. Sakura actually got himself quite far up on the side of this hill. Liquid I'm weren't sure able to stop it. No, I don't think Sauna Boy has the ability of able to really make this push without the fear of Pink Pony shooting it from behind. Now, as you can see, Archie actually a good angle. And this to me is when Sauna Boy has to make the committed push. Archie will find Noki. Vests were busted from the fight they had earlier. And oh my oh. lord, the last bullet in this break area finds Sucker Shift W out in fifth. But once again, Shift W managing to find placement points and kills with it. Sauna Boy still three up. They got Noki back on his feet. Pink Pony will have to make a move at some point, or will they? Yes, they do. Circle shifts down towards the south. Let's see now if this win has liquid written all over it, or if there's still paper made. <laughs> the bike actually resetting perfectly for them there after the res came off. But Musa and Nuki are going to be trapped behind this one. And you see the utility now coming across. That's a big nade from Liquid. The second one. Fantastic. Jeems oh! again. Pick it up two with one nade. That just leaves Sakura for the Sauna boys here. The impact a well-placed state can have. Teams shows us time and time again exactly how to do it, Archie. And the remaining ping pong player, Gary and Gary will need to push further forward. Page right now, doing his best to try and grind as many placement points as he can. He's looking into the field, but as you can see, Clip has him dialed down. He's not going to make a move until he absolutely have to. It's going to be real damn soon. Now, Flo is going to get the better. He might just want to tank it out. Don't give any points away for free. You are playing for that top spot. He will find the flush on Misa just before he falls. The one point obtained from Omarken, or for Omarken before they will eventually go down in third place, or fourth place, make that sorry. Now Liquid, I mean, everyone's on the edge. You can see there's practically nothing to play in the middle. Sakura, prone and forward, should be visible to Pink Pony, but uh, they have other troubles right now. There we go. Now, give you now getting caught up with a little bit of blue damage there. Archie trying to counter peek off that. They've got to be the team to move forward first here. And Clib actually going to take a huge ridge in the middle of the circle. That one's going to be right on the star for the next circle yeah, here. Archie. Not... Mm, Archie's <laughs> no. just going to deny. Yep. No. Don't fancy it at all. And uh, Liquid will close this one out. First game on a wrangle. Seven kills and the chicken dinner. Again, circle ending very, very close to Pachinki, but... Very good moves from Liquid again, staying active. That split they were able to maintain through circles four and five, just a, a huge influence on this game. And that's what makes them scary, right? The amount of control that they're able to take through the mid game and no one's in a position to contest it because the way that they approach this, they only go aggressive when they don't have anything to lose. And when you saw the way they were splitting, Mexi had all the space in the world to take those shots over towards Apex and Omicron because they know there is no way in hell they can prioritize us right now with them being that close to each other. But interesting game for sure. Liquid gets himself a second win of the day, looking damn strong. Let's see what the desk has to say about that one. That's right, our DreamHack champions, two wins in four games already. Brilliant stuff by them here in this game. And I think, uh, Martin Froz, as we look at this game and take a look at the highlights, one thing that really stood out to me, Patrick, was that Team Liquid's control of the South, as well as their patience in the South, was second to none. Yeah, I mean, this is typical Liquid play, right? They play very safe in a certain way that they have all the control in the world. We saw them flexing back and forth, west, east, middle, making sure that they always have as many as they need to hold people up, but also being able to frag out uh, while holding that angle. And they would just take down any team that comes in their way, and they know that they have all, all of the teams uh, wiped out. Basically, they had Sonar Boys, of course, getting a little bit closer, a little bit too close <laughs> to comfortable, more or less. But yeah. they managed to solve that situation as well, and it's just it's just beautiful to see how they are actually playing this out. How many clips do we have of a frustrated best loss for this one? <laughs> we had a few clips of, a, uh, of some frustrations as well, for sure. Did you see? I'd see laughing as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lou with his nades today. Jeez Louise, he's been on point. Very, very nicely done. Uh, but as you can see here in the highlights, Martin, just Team Liquid continue to do Team Liquid things. Yeah, they maintained a, a stronghold on the south, southwest side of the circle, and that, that really paid off. We saw some uh, some sendits that uh, the full sends. I really enjoy those, but uh, un unfortunately, it didn't pay off for all of them. The, the phase one straight into the ditch was rough. Mm. Apex here on the, the edges is also very rough because you see here, there's so much open space in the in the end if you don't control the vast majority of the south, and the pressure that. 
uh, that liquid was able to to keep on everybody was just it was yeah it was second to none to be honest pink ponies were not wanting any of that last fight there and they will be going out in second spot here's the points coming in ninth through 16th uh, plenty of points coming in actually here down towards the bottom uh with phase notably getting 13th place after frost they'd played very similar to how they played the circle that was you know akin to this one yesterday however it wasn't mm. to work out yeah, I mean, they tried to go for the trenches out in the field there, but there was one team that was standing in their way, of course, and it was Pink Pony. Pink Pony took mm. that really early on, which kind of surprised me, because they came down straight from Potato, straight down into the trenches, where it's kind yeah. of open all around them. They could have taken so many other better spots, but look at what they got, though. They got 10 kills. They got a second place by taking that. So I got to say, it all worked out. Uh, and I don't think FaZe was uh, expecting a team to be down there because usually that's kind of the last resort when you don't have anywhere else to go. Yeah. Uh, you will go into the trenches. And that comes down to there's so many sidelines down towards the trenches that it's sometimes super hard to play from down there. But Pink Pony, mm -hmm. they played that super well and uh, got themselves a lot of points. Super impressive plays from them so far today. Two second places, one third place, and uh, 16th, yep. of course. Very consistent, Martin, and they've been FaZe's kryptonite in the, some of the positions that FaZe's tried to crash. They've beaten them twice uh, in those kind of crash situations, but Pink Pony looking great. As a Pink Pony. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, Pink Pony here with a double five, uh, Archie and Gaia. Yeah, yeah, I, they've really been a standout performance for me. Like, I, mm. I, I didn't, I like, I didn't, I didn't expect them to be able to come into this perform like they've had so far i honestly expect them to have a rough time maybe even struggling trying to get to the to the grand finals here but no they've really been performing extremely well there i would say with what we've seen from them so far pretty much i would i would already put them in the grand finals yeah great to see it from them so far as you say um i think that it what is really going to be the test is the longevity required uh by the team i suppose for us when you think about of course Yes, if this was a three-day group stage, then absolutely fantastic stuff. Probably the congratulations is required. But with a six-day group stage, another two days worth of play for them, they've still got to keep this up, still got to keep it up. But the thing is, the more they play, the more they get used to the teams they're up against, mm. the more experience they get as well against these kind of teams. And that's what they need right now. That's the thing that they're lacking most. So that will make them even stronger towards... The finals if they make it there yeah. uh coming out of the groups with this many games in the bag maybe maybe well we're gonna go to a short break ladies and gentlemen and when we return we're gonna have more erringel on the way for you here for pcs3 eu we'll see you in a few no kill to send back to three factors getting the first aid off circle will force this fight though TSM have to advance into the open. Two third parties though. TE behind. Straight into the back of TSM. On point, on time. The dream breakers, but my word, oh, Vardy's here. One, two, thank you. Woo! Murder! Absolute carnage. Destroys all three of them, and now they have an exit plan. Good God, what a freak. But then he's got it for a reason, he's watching a roadside. There will be certain circumstances, very limited ones, where it's viable to run and it has its own usage, but. It's viable to run and it has its own usage, but he's gonna get run over, isn't he? Bye bye. He <gasps> went over his head. What? Tumbled You're rich. I'm just a... happy. We're away from yeah, farm. Keep... I've seen so many endings that way. And actually, a bit of a, a turn of events. <laughs> Oh. 
Blaze were in the initial 2 2. This is the other stronghold, and actually the crossfire is holding for now. Lipson needs one more. Ooh. Two more games to go for day number two here of PCS3 EU. And we've got our groups A and C in the lobby, raring to go for into our next game. I've got Frost as well as Avenger here. Gentlemen, it's been a good day so far. It's definitely been a good day for Team Liquid so far, Martin. Jeez Louise. Yeah, but it's also been a great day for Shift W. They actually got one more point sure. than... Um than Liquid has gotten so far today. Even though Liquid has two wins, they've really been fragging out, been consistent, a third and three fifth places so far, with a lot of the kills to boot as well. Face Clan sitting at 102, Shift W84, and then a big jump down to Pink Pony on 63. Honestly, I did not expect Pink Pony to, uh, to, to be here in, in third mm. place after this many games. It's a little bit of a shame, I suppose, for a Shift W here, Frozen. Hear me out a second. Hear me out. Because mm -hmm. if it weren't for FaZe looking ridiculous throughout yesterday, Shift W's 84 would seem right now to us amazing. I mean, it's still amazing. I don't care sure. what you think. It's <laughs> still been a super amazing performance from Shift W, not just yesterday, but today as well. All of, their, uh, all of the games, they've got themselves a top five position. First game, they got a third place, and then it's been a fifth place in the past three games here. And with two mm. games more to go, are they going to keep on having this consistency? It's just insane. It doesn't matter if they go down to one or two persons early on in the game. They still manage to salvage it and be able to grab themselves a good placement, but also kills on yeah. top of that. Very happy to see as well the moves up from Northern Lights, of course. They get up another three spots here after a pretty decent day. That first place, seventh place, second place. Not quite sure where they got in this game just now. Uh, does anybody recall their position for this? Sorry, one? which which team did you Northern say? Northern Lights, game four. Nine, ninth place with eight kills. Right. Yeah. Okay. So plenty of kills to boot. Yeah. Martin, thoughts? Yeah, plenty of kills. Uh, like there are four points off uh, Shift W on the today's performance. Shift W, two more games to go. Forty-eight. Uh, 47 for Liquid and 44 for Northern Lights. It's a really, really good performance. Uh, higher than what we saw from uh, the other teams than uh, than Flayskin yesterday. So that's that's really impressive for these guys to, to perform the high. It also means that there's not a lot of points in the bottom. Uh, we are, we're having some teams that are struggling at the bottom. Ratio Edge on five points, mm. Texas Rangers on seven, and uh, after all, uh, on eight and pull up on nine. So they've, they've been struggling a little bit. And there's not that many points left to the bottom teams, considering uh, how many points that the top teams are uh, vacuuming up. Yeah, one team that I have had my eye on a little bit that I thought was on the up and up uh, and uh, talked to me about this, Frost, potentially, is, is Istanbul Wildcats. They, it, today, they've had some decent placements. They've been in top 10s constantly, but I feel like it's not coming together in terms of the kills. Even though they've got someone like She Created on the roster that we constantly tout as an amazing player, uh, what do you think about their campaign? The thing is that they often lose a lot of players in kind of unlucky situations. Uh, you can take the last game as a good example, for example, how they were on Potato Hill, they were shooting at Pony, uh, Pink Pony, sorry, that was trying to lead Potato, and just yeah. next to them, they have Old Market. They were not expecting Old Market to be there, and because of that, they lost the uh, play straight away, and that's kind of the, the story of uh, Istanbul Wildcats right now. Kind of unlucky things like that is happening to them, and that is affecting their game, because they are a team that I feel like it's not playing the kind of aggressive uh, uh, game one, once mm. they lose players. Uh, while we see other teams, maybe they lose one or two plays, they will still go super aggressive and play like they were four uh, people up on the team. But if some of the Wildcats, they go a little bit more passive when once that happening. And once you go a little bit more passive, usually yeah. it won't end up too well to, uh, for you. Especially they were doing so well, especially since it shifted from a one man show. BSD rupture event was stepping up before. But anyway, it's time to go to our penultimate game of the day. Toby and Hypoc bring us the plane. Thank you so much, James, for that one. Hypoc, last game, other than some um, some wild rodeo shenanigans by Batulins, 
it was a pretty quiet game. I feel like the game was really trying to throw circles to force the aggression, but overall, it was a pretty quiet game. It was, yeah. I mean, we even said just then off uh, off camera, or off off the microphone, if you like. But uh, the, the, just a couple of teams just losing one or two, and then you know teams would back off. They know that they're weakened now, and it only really mm. kind of started kicking off once we got to circle four and five. I mean, other than phase pulling up and all dying at once was the only real crash that we saw or, or, or pull up really. Um, but uh, I am glad James brought up Wildcats because we touched on this yesterday. Yes. I mean, their dream hack run was, well, they had two placement points up until the last four games or something. Um, mm. And yesterday when we talked about them, they were in a, a few situations where I, I, I feel like they were getting to, again, if you can put a label on it, kind of game winning spots and it was actually them misplaying, um, which is weird because when, when they went on a little run towards the end of DreamHack, it was kind of this full W key. They were just running through mm. teams. Um, and usually that's an indicator for a team to kind of carry that momentum through. That's, you know, you, you shake off the anxiety, you get those little confidence boost games where you're not in a good position, but you still come out and place really well and get a load of kills. Um, but they haven't brought that in to PCS and it's 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 weird to see. It, it it really is because they have been, as you say. I mean, it's. I, I kind of want to put them in the same boat as after all. Let me hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is, intention got to riddle is hiding. Okay, so he doesn't have a weapon. <laughs> I really wanted. I really, I really wanted, wanted to see scope fly yes. off the hill there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to start a game. Well, Riddle is gonna be hiding. He's gonna be hiding. Please don't come down here. Nah, it says it's going the other way. But that's okay. We wanted action to start the day off. Thank you so much, Intense, for bringing us some um, some chaos to start off. Do you know, do you know what? The, uh, the last game of the day. I was gonna say it's a rare opportunity for us to see Apex not be the ones getting run over. Because uh, it's usually them drown. doing the run over. That is true. I mean, them getting something done with a vehicle, that is, yeah, you have to go far to see that. But Amel just drowned. Interesting. Are we going to get a please, let's see, we're going to. Uh... So, look, he looks, it, it's because he hits him against the side of the shack. <laughs> it was a layup. He just needed the other Apex player there to uh, to bounce his corpse off into the into the abyss. Intense. That's going to be a little bit of a laughter to start off the game, and I guess you can say that that Apex might need that. They hasn't really, really gone their way, and they want to get something going here. Fourteen points in total for them sitting in twenty second currently. Off of, uh, I mean, what we saw from them on the first day of um, of Dreamhack, massive first day, even up to contest with how well Shift W's been playing today. So. Want to see them? Want to see them really get something going in the final two games? Da as well. It's been a bit of an up and down rocky boat for them, despite having wins today. It's been uh, a little all over the place. All over the place is definitely uh, what I'd say. I mean, other, other than the Miramar game, it's uh, we haven't really been seeing them get too involved. And obviously, again, coming back to a, a team that's really had a switch up. Code Marco's brought a fantastic tempo to this team. Uh, I mean, early on, it was very, very clear to see the difference he was he was making. But again, just carry that momentum. It's they're not often a team you find in these these dominant positions or game winning spots, but uh, they have found it over the last few weeks. Yeah, let's see now. Apex, the team were engineers before. They're going to be rotating forward. And to be fair, I mean it's a pretty straightforward circle. Omar can in the I, I like the split actually a two one one split with um with good center control. Will it be contested? It could be, but I feel like Omar is one of those teams that are known to be contested. Oh, let's see DA Mert in the compound. It's gonna go up against the Nusi real soon if he opts to stick around, but nope, DA they're just gonna swing wide. No need for them to take this fight early on, despite it being kind of in their territory. I'm thinking Mert though. Get healed on up and peek back down over that ridge line. It's weird. Marco and Mert were obviously wrapping over towards heaven and obviously looking for something else. You can see the other two members of DA over at Glasshouse just down on the left side of the minimap. But now that they've kind of find, found a little bit of contact out here, I'm not sure what they're expecting hmm. off the back of it. That's also just a dress for a second that Liquid has two players on the east side of Potato 
and EP is sitting on the west side of Pachingi. For those of you guys who can't quite put that together, that's a split of over a kilometer and a half in the center of a circle. That's a, <laughs> that's something you don't see too often. Um, pull up. Well, they were. I thought for a second they were going to contest face and looting, but face said, "Nah, we don't. We can't be bothered. They'll just let them do their thing." They've crossed over early. Face in the meantime are going to be uh, looking for vehicles down towards the south, and here's an MK with a 15x and a med kit available for rescue. Yep, nice little pick up for the Omicum boys. Again, got themselves to a decent compound as well, considering the circle. Only problem I see is mm. that Vasco's secondary weapon is uh, Vector. So hopefully he's going to be able to find something else coming back here. Yeah, if they're expecting yeah. to get breached, that's 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 not the worst gun you could be in position of. And given that some it's teams might have rotated It's not there, an ump. That, that is true. That is true. And it's not a shotgun either, even though we have seen those to be pretty deadly as of late. I don't know why, but the DPS has come back and played with full force. Now, let's see. GMT, you can see it now. He's already in the car. Whether he heard something or if it's just his spider senses tingling, he knew there's going to be people. He heard the vehicle. If they were coming in his direction, he's going to back off. And that's how you do it. When you're in those wide splits, that is how you get away. You don't sit around and go, Hmm, are they actually coming here? Because you can always just you make like if you realize they don't, you just make a U-turn and go back to the compound again. But he left early, knowing they were gonna come, and he gets to stay alive. Smart way of controlling your splits. You see a couple of teams gravitating towards. So, would you still call this warehouse, or do you call it gallery now? I call it museum. Yeah, but museum guess... gallery, yeah, yeah. Museum's probably better yeah. actually. Since that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> but I guess okay, you, an argument can be made for both. I guess it's it's a gallery, not a museum. To be honest, I'm not sure what the difference is. Necessarily, like I feel like some galleries are more museums than galleries, if you know what I mean. And the other way around. A gallery is privately owned, and museums are more government owned. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Why do you gotta ask those type of questions? The real I've questions. Let, I've the let you down a path questions. now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe somebody in chat can enlighten us. The, here you go. There's your. This has got to be a museum, right? It's, it's got to be a museum. museum. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be a museum. It's a hall of fame. Maybe that's what we should call it. It literally says on the wall, "Hall of Fame." PUBG. 2019 trophy. Oh, let's get us back on land. Please, Corona, get the hell out of here and allow us to cover these games from a big stadium with roaring fans enjoying PUBG, the best esport there is. Yeah, hopefully fill that with more pictures and trophies. Maybe hopefully. a little a little a little less Gen G actually going forward, hopefully. <laughs> well the future is just gonna be computers. Because that's what they were playing on when they won the game. Because they were from home. I like webcam photos, you know, for winning because <laughs> it's all online. <laughs> Got Marco, a 2x, a level 1 helmet, and a bold action. Kind of goes to show that the looting has not been as efficient as uh, DA probably would have wanted it to. And I don't think they're the only team. That's what I was saying before when we were addressing the Vector. It might not be the worst gun because a lot of teams did move out early. Face, they're now thinking, wait, oh, we've been here before. What is this area? Is that Mills of Power? Is that what it looks like? Indeed it is. Now we have to rotate further forward, though. Let's see where they're coming into the circle. Are they going to go all the way north, all the way as Naya, potentially into the hills? Or are they going to try and get down from prison in behind pull-up and play it slow in the southeast? And Faye's actually returning to the area they would be initially rotating from if they would have got to their loot spot, but... Familiar territory now to come north out of here. As I say that, Simzy oh. has to pull off the seat swap onto Orange and it. try and get the hell out of there because all four of Na'Vi best are actually trying to chase him down now. Did, did we just two times in a row see Apex succeed in doing something that involved vehicles? Yeah, and they didn't run over a teammate. They have been practicing. They have been practicing. I love to see it. I told them you cannot have this vehicle curse hover over your head for that long. And clearly, clearly, they've done something first. And Tens get the vehicle kill. And then Simsy gets one. Now Simsy gets two. I will go four. But the rest is a um, this potential one. is right next to Calvin. The smoke's going to come down. We'll keep it back on his feet. And Tens trying to cover. Tabs has to shoot as well. And then Tens finds him. So finally, things going in the way of Apex. 
we should be able to clean this up. I mean, we can see Besto now making a mad dash to try and get away. Timsy trying to land the SK shots, but uh, not going to get anything done from there. Ivor now confirming Senya out. It's just orange to clean up, and there he goes. So Navi down to a solo, and he's going to be able to get all the way over to shelter, but will he be able to hide anywhere decent in the next circle? To wait and see. Look at the splits coming in. I mean, Spiro is all on his own. Northern Lights trying to take control of the entirety of Yasnaya with multiple teams in between them. Actually, kind of dangerous. Mexi in the meantime now. We saw him hold off 1v4 against DA earlier. Let's see if he can hold off 1v4 here as well. Finds the first purpose there immediately. And help trade the second. Pancho pulls down. It's a 4v2 now in favor of Team Liquid. Yeah, that's. Oh, actually, it'd be going to get caught out. DA over in the field. Gonna get the damage down, and he will be instantly flushed out of this. So as they try to collapse on to defend this crash from the Rangers, and actually top and anyway are gonna see that in the kill feed, and I think assume that's gonna relieve some of the pressure. They have to try and push on this and oh. see if they can secure what? Some more. Anyway, he's almost taken down by that Nate. Not quite sure how he wasn't, but he's gonna stay alive for now. Anyways, we'll fall. Clip starts him on the edge of the smoke, and there's just one more left alive for him and the team. Jeems though. Falls the top. Solid taps coming in with the SLR. Will he be able to get more off of it? TTSN is trying to call back. I'm not sure that's going to be allowed. Clip spots in mid air. Low HP for top. No one's here to contest. It's all you now. Clip jumping around like a kangaroo. <laughs> trying to see if he can find the kill. Doesn't succeed in doing so. But in the end, no, he's still not down. How is that not yet? yet? <laughs> Might as well just iron side him or hip fire him. With the mini, get the kill. Somebody get a cut up that hillside to get the second. Time. Well, there's the case on the other side, and once again, Face Clan in trouble on wild rotations. What the hell just happened? Yeah, I mean, we saw 80 fall uh, in the picture in picture there whilst that other fight with Liquid was going on, and it was Shift W trying to hold down this uh, secondary Alamo, if you like. And uh, we saw they tried to regroup onto it, and Shift W able to recover a little bit better than Phase. So Phase do this... fall in 15th place. It's. It... Yeah, it's weird to see them do it two two games in a row, but I yeah. guess they they are in the best position to to have a couple of bad games when they when they want to gamble on plays like that. Given how insane, I mean, to be fair, there really wasn't that much space because it was Shift W's own split that they had with Heaven and uh, and the hills below it that really forced the whole engagement with Face. But there was space for them to contest further below. I think they just they saw the split, they called it, and to be fair, I mean, Shift W made a good stand against them. It did indeed. And again, FaZe had invested so much time with that Eastern Wrap coming all the way past Milton Power. By the time they get in, I just thought it was worth pulling up on and committing to uh, taking the compound. But we can only speculate. Indeed we can. Yes, Naya still in play. You see Racer Edge, a lot of north side control. Pink Pony kind of making their way up in this direction, trying to see if they can get a piece of that pie. In the meantime, Wildcats, that's not the place you want to stop your vehicle, especially not when Intent is hitting shots, which he's continuing to do in fourth. Wait, okay, yeah, I guess you might just kill your teammate, and fortunate for you, that doesn't deny <laughs> point. If you're going to get damaged somehow, might as well just shoot your teammates. Is that toxic? I hope it wasn't. Eh, thank you. you can fly under the radar uh, with that one. We'll let it slide, we'll let it slide for now. Imagine if that was the case. If you farm ADR on your teammates, that would be a little, I mean, little, little, little Apex would be topping all damage charts if that was the case. <laughs> they would be way up there. Indeed, they would. I mean, no, this game, we can't, we, we got to cut them some slack. They've done it. They've been effective with the vehicles. They've, mas they've right mastered here. the two seater. They have. They have indeed. And now let's see if they're going to be blessed with the south side shift as well, because they are essentially in like, they have one fourth of the circle to themselves right now with that heaven. Uh, hilltop control. So shoot the circle, bless them. They'd be in a joyous position. Monkey, it's going to make us way back down towards the teammates. Ray Church reuniting. Woodier is going to stay up on the hillside and try and see if he can grant some vision for the team. In the meantime, Riddle is running around with a gas can. I guess that either it goes to show what type of setups they're trying to do, and he also has an Uzi, or it's him trying to fuel a car because they've been rotating for a while, and him having an Uzi still kind of tells me that they have indeed rotated quite far. There's also a gas can on the ground. What, it's it's what, a weird what, setup, what? Toby. It's a weird oh, setup. You haven't heard of that? The new the new Uzi gas can meta? 
have no? it. We have to wait to see oh. it in full effect. <laughs> I guess we do. This is Best weird. Besto, managed to, Besto actually managed to make it all the way into Yasnai and then dies crossing between buildings. Yeah, that's that's yeah. just, just unfortunate. I mean, there, there are, to be fair, quite a few people in there. So there is, to go well, unnoticed. five teams, technically. Yeah, exactly. Lots of him going on no notice for that far. We're, we're, we're rather slim, and with the beating they took from Apex down south earlier, it was bound to happen eventually. Research. Are they going to commit all four to the plank house? Yellow house on the hill? They might do. Lou, you can see from the uh, police station roof, trying to get some shots popped up in that direction. No damage is going to come in. So Udi and Monkey, as you can see on the map to your right, will be able to stay in this split. But a desperate team, and I'm right now looking towards being phony, a desperate team oh, might end up for... Oh, there's the Udi. <laughs> I'm flushing with it. Go on, go on, go on. It's just not the best weapon to flush people with. <laughs> the Uzi comes to play. Cliff is going to try and make the same rotation. He's going to succeed, though. Him and Jim, they're going to go down south. They're going to get Vision. Vasco falls down. Lou finds him from the roof. Now the rest needs to come in, which should be possible. And there is your Uzi flush. You don't see those every day. You definitely don't. Definitely not with a suppressor on it. <laughs> That's for the ultimate BM. What's worse, getting punched as a result of being knocked or getting killed with a Uzi with a suppressor on it? That's 17 minutes I, I, into the game. I, I always think it's worse to die by the pan, especially now that you can throw it. Yeah. But that, 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 that's always the worst way to die. Or get flushed, I should say. For those of you guys who don't know the terminology, clown car, well, here it is. Four people try and squeeze themselves into a vehicle. After all, another one's driving. Sims, he's got to be aware of this. He must hear him anyway. He does. I will does find teams, so Team Liquid in trouble. The Simsy is trying to see if he can get something here. The Simsy is what we call him now, apparently. But somehow, all four of After All survived that rotation. Yeah, and again, this isn't... Uh, I was going to say this isn't as much of a risk now with obviously the changes to the vehicles. Um, and obviously, you can't really blow up vehicles anymore the same way that you used to be able to. That's some nice taps, actually, from Lou there to... Get Vasco through that angle, but uh, yeah, clown carling, clown carring used to be, uh, I mean, four guaranteed kills really way back in the day when you could line up with AKs and the AK was uh, as good as it was. Used to be an easy blow up for the 762s. He also showed the game experience high podcast when he remembers a time where the AK was actually a good weapon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Set there was up, a time. Fall. There was a time. There was, there was. There was a time indeed. Pull up will fall with them. No, as a matter of fact, sorry, if an Apache will fall with them, pull up are going to be the ones to claim all the kills from the plank houses. The former yellows are now turned somewhat blue. Calvin, in the meantime, will try and hold off. He needs to push further forward inside the circle, go a little further up towards the north. And uh, I think their main task right now is got to be making sure that pull-up does not opt to go towards them. Because if that should happen, they're going to be really, like exposing themselves to some extent towards that north side. But look at the amount of control. I mean, there's no one sitting north of Apex before you hit that road spot. But the entire dip is completely theirs to control. Look at the control Apex has here. Yeah. It's actually huge. I mean, it, obviously with Liquid being forced off that hill... It opens up now. They can obviously plan forwards. They can secure the backside, the south side of that hill. It gives them another really good foothold in this next circle, Toby. Yeah, pull up. Not in the best position anymore. Calvin is going to find Creator. Omar can from the other side are trying to chime in as well, trying to see if they can find some damage. The vehicle, the only vehicle they had available, is already toasted. So they're going to be in a tough spot. I do see almost the same. I'm not sure what that was being thrown forward there, but here comes Razor Edge. They committed to go down the hill. They actually opted to leave the um, the, the, the house up on the north side into the field and sit all four in this one story. And now, well, one clown car is never going to stop. Completely Dynamite <laughs> comes forward. Simsy is there. And unfortunately for Apex, they just weren't ready for it. And honestly, I don't think Simsy was ready for four people jumping out of the vehicle either. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. That's the, the rare occasion you see a clown car paying off when uh, you can pull up on top of a solo like that. Calvin going to get the opening with a nade onto Goosey, though. He's going to try and actually take the fight onto this. His teammates, Ivor, on the right side of the Ooh. screen. Intense land in the double nade. That just leaves Greg standing. You can see this off angle now could come into effect for Apex, and they could clean this up with relative ease. 
all oh, by himself, but look towards the south. Pull up, but doing exactly what the name is saying. Adusi is going to molly himself. That's elsewhere on the map. That's not focus too much on that. Intense is going to fall. Calvin's going to fall. Pull ups, pull up is working to perfection right now. Idol has an off ankle and he's desperate and needs to do something to keep his teammates alive here. He does get the confirm there. Three standard for pull up still. Ivel maybe just going to opt to take one more of these kills. He does. Intense and Calvin still bleeding. And Creator looks like he's going to try and go forward and pressure after all. And there you go. That is absolute heartbreak for Apex. Because they actually got the opener wow. onto pull up. And worse comes to worse. They're going to get any kills. They're going to get zero kills out of this too. That is so tough for them. What could have been a massive game had they gotten the control of the bridge ends up not being and in my opinion a lot of it comes down to sims being the only one moving up there early had they all gone to that position they could have taken out the clown car instantly they would have been ready for the pull up from pull up afterwards as well and now ibanko and somehow after all are going to be the victors in this they come in four guys strong they almost get eliminated greg was the only one alive and somehow they now sit with four or three people up in a somewhat decent position in the circle yeah it's relieved a lot of the pressure again we know the situation he has now very congested over there Shift W still got hold of this Alamo over to the east side as well. And this next circle is going to tell us a lot about how this game's going to pan out. Oh, they didn't actually get, they didn't. Oh, yeah. Greg actually went down in the blue. They couldn't get that res off, Toby. I think they got him up, but then he went down again. So denying the points as best as they could. Oh, shit. Nope. Will pull. And now is when it gets tricky for after all down towards the town. But having said that, I mean, if they can stay unnoticed, at least just for, I want to say, the better part of another minute and a half, that's going to be, if not top five, then maybe even better. Placement for them's locked down. Omakin has to move. Sauna Boy is almost in. Pink Pan is up towards the north, needs to make a move too. And you can see the small arrows on Ratio Edge. That's where their eyes are really peeled right now. They need to look north. They need to make sure that pink ponies don't come to contest them in that small one story building. That's all Lou going to land. The shots immediately. Vasco and Gempty will fall out of the vehicles. T-Bone and Paige still pulling up on the backside. And I've got a decent angle out the window. And actually, T-Bone going to find perfect on the roof. So, good hold here oh, from Northern no, Knights. Nice. T-Bone burning in that one, though. And to get out of it, should be able to get the heels off as well. Geary and now falls. They're still in the open. They have to press too much on it. Code Marco from the side tries to charm in as Sona Boys makes the run forward. Solid attack coming in, but he can't get the second to follow. He will stay alive at least for now. So a lot of teams trying to move forward into this area of the map that's already being massively contested by both Northern Lights and Omarkin. And Shift W now flexing out onto the hill a little bit. But again, it's going to be difficult for them to really clean up any of these kill points because of how tightly these teams are able to hold each other on the edge of Yasnaya. Perfect now, going to try and underhand the snade over the wall. Could be good onto Paige, actually. 28, because he's prone as well. It's going to mitigate some of that damage. It's another, it's another good molly, though. It's to hop on down. Yeah, that should be it. That's the issue. That's a counter to the prone player. If you're mollied on a, like, if you're prone on a molly, you'll most likely go down. Luke and Screamy Anonymous outside the wall, able to take him down. Pink Pony will be eliminated in, eight, in the end of it. And now let's see the Sauna Boys have a chance to push forward. Here, perfect. on the roof. But he's been massively contested by Sauna Boys out towards the west. They need to push forward. They have Nokia in a pretty decent position on the north side of the building. And they're all pushing forward. Still four guys up for the finish team. As they try to make their way into the circle. And things slowing down a little bit. But uh, Sauna Boys have managed to get four up on the wall. So this is again a, a crucial fight for Northern Knights. The fact they've lost Lou when they did doesn't give them an awful lot of opportunity to peek off the roof here, Toby. So, Sauna Boys are going to able to get right up. Spyro actually going to find Mise on the way in, though. And he will get the flush. He doesn't find the second. Nookie good with the barrel. Perfect. Going to get Anonymous down. So, they're going to make it costly for the Sauna Boys to push in here. Secure the point. I'm not sure what more you're going to get there. It is a pretty difficult staircase to have to push, but... I mean, to be fair, he's still inside the next circle, but perfect is if he's, he can go to the roof and try and prone it out there and just play placement points and hope that Omarkin will do something to try and take them out, but it's really going to be tough. Perfect is probably looking at uh, going down outside of top five in the 
in this game. Having said that, though, after all down towards the south, they need to make a move. And you can see DA playing real good contain here in all market. Yeah, and again, another team that's just been in a weird situation, not able to really clean any of this up. After all, just getting ballsier and ballsier with the vehicle rotations this game. I mean, it's been oh. working. <laughs> I was going to say it's been working for them so far, but Goose pressing F a bit too early on that one will end up falling. T-Bone saying thank you for the one gifted kill and the placement point extra. Nothing more is going to come up. It Chris and Shift W now. They have a top rotation to make. Raise your edge sitting dead center. They can be pressed with the rotation they made out earlier. Oh, there's going to be one to find them. Will they get the kills as well? No. Code Mago is there to steal it. Braxco is going to fall too, and now it's just Iliakai left alive trying to wrap it out on where can you go? There's not a whole lot for you to do. Nope, ain't going to happen. T-Bone has that one locked down. Out goes Shift W, and we find ourselves with just five teams left alive. Perfect. Still on the rooftop. Again, the later this goes on, it just makes it so much harder for him to really do any damage to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> if Arca getting knocked off the driver's seat there, yeah, just, I mean, there's, there's no getting out of that, going that speed coming in, to be fair to him. He tried. Perhaps for trying, T-Bone knows that he cannot peek a corner without the potential of three different teams seeing him. Perfect, he's starting to realize the same thing. No helmet, busted up vest. Needs to crawl forward. 11 bandages and nothing but that. Can you get a placement point off of staying alive here? I think that's all you can really hope for. In the meantime, we have Ratio Edge. Four people alive, but look at it. They just have two kills this game. It's been quiet, to say the least, as everyone's been finding their way out of his Naya. Ratio just haven't been able to really gain anything from that. They haven't been able to third party. The position they've been in has really not allowed for them to uh, get in on the action. And again, Sauna boys, I mean, not really out of the woods just yet. Now they've got to get away from police station. With Perfect on the roof, it makes it very, very difficult. They've got to avoid sight lines from DA inside the secondary building that I used to call Gallery and Museum. So that makes it even more mm -hmm. confusing for us. But uh, raise your edge this whole time. I mean, they're just going to be eyes locked on the kill feed, just waiting for this to clean up and this is exactly no. what i was talking about here perfect gonna get secure a monkey gonna clean him up but will we be able to That's get this happen. off i don't think the blue's gonna touch him blue's gonna touch him before this goes yep ain't gonna happen that is massive had they been too alive there might have been something they could have done but now noki will have to make this run on its own they had they had to know that there was a player in there still and yet they opted to go for the smokes forward rather than try and hold the angle. Let's see now, Monkey. Oh, hello, oh, Tebow. How are you going? doing? <laughs> That's a big oh. one. No, Monk, you got to watch out here. It's dangerous pick you're forcing yourself into. He knows where he is, decides to not go forward. And that might actually not be people to die. I guess. Nope, 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 nope. Keep for him. No surviving that. One of those is there to help the kill. No keep. Stays alive for one place and longer. Let's see if it's going to be two. DA now. A lot of utility outside here. The smoke cover, fantastic for them. But Marco did get picked off. Merck should be able to get him back on his feet, though. Monkey still trying to get something done from the rooftop. But Razor Edge just laying in wait. I mean, we can see the star here, Toby. It's 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 Razor Edge's game to win here. Yeah. I think it's going to yeah. take a a huge effort from Nookie and the re remaining DA players to really take this away from them. They made a wide split early. It paid off as they got themselves a compound secured. And if Ray Shirts doesn't win this, I don't know what can be done in order for them to find themselves a win in the tournament. Monkey, last bullet in the spray, finds Noki. That's going to be him down. And now, four versus three. DA versus Razor Edge. This should have Razor Edge written all over it. But let's see if they're going to be able to bring it all home. Ooh. Smash landed a nice spray, though. Ended with the headshot onto Shiv. But no meds on Smash. He's on 30 HP, and I can hear Marco. He's popping a couple of bandages, so I don't think he's looking too good on meds either. Here comes the utility. Smash and Marco just trying to play time here, just waiting for anything that Razor Edge potentially gives away to them. But Smash falls, and it's just Marco now, and it's nah. just a matter of time. He's actually going to deny. And there you go. Razor Edge will put a chicken dinner on the board with seven kills to boot, Toby. Definitely a... That's, uh, well, definitely a switch up from the games earlier on today. 
for sure. 17 points, very well needed, coming off good rotations on their part. A quiet game where they didn't really get a whole lot going until the very end of it. But still, I mean, they sit four guys in that compound, or in that house, I should say. They had the two-way split uphill. They opt to go down. It works out for them. They hold off multiple teams that have a chance to push them. But without getting kills, they get enough pressure and forcing them to go elsewhere. After all, had a chance. Shift W had a chance. They kept them away and got themselves the win in the end of it. We have one more game to go. But first, let's hop back to the desk and see what they made of that finish there. Right, Razor Edge is able to get themselves the victory here after being able to take up a compound and waiting for it to come to them. They were able to take this very convincingly off the back of some of those final moments. We have Martin as well as Patrick here joining me for the highlights. Uh, let's take a look. I'm so sorry, Schofield. No escaping from the prison for you today. Uh, what do you think, Patrick? Ah. Uh yeah, no, no escape before him. But no, uh, raise your edge. They, I mean, they had good control. We saw them coming in uh, early on. They took the yellow house on the field there, and they uh, apt on the west uh, east side. Sorry, northeast side mm -hmm. of Yas. But when they yeah. grouped up there in that one store, I was I was getting a little bit afraid because they were not trying to take any ground at all. Uh, they were basically just waiting for everyone to come to them. But they could have taken so much more control and taken care of the situation. Having more control, they could probably have got themselves a little bit more kills. But nonetheless, they got the win. They got seven kills, which is great because they definitely needed these points. Yeah, definitely. So, Martin, what do you make of Raise Your Edge's uh, victory here? Uh, first of all, uh, for, yeah, Ray Ray Trade pushing this. They're basically taken away from Digital Olympics at that point here. The pull up onto Simsy, that is him done. Uh, but I want to say. I was actually going to point out that, okay, Faceland is just having fun with it now, but you, then we saw AC's face with what was happening. He was actually disappointed that they didn't make uh, better of that pull-up there on the mm -hmm. compound. A nice brace from Hibaku here with a ball X uh, barrel. You're definitely not going to be able to do that anymore after the nerf is coming into effect. Uh, probably not until a few competitions is done, though, when uh, mm -hmm. with the esports players are playing that. But overall, I love these kind of pseudo urban endings even though it did end up outside it's rare we have these endings yeah. here but uh, the teams that are able to kind of rotate around that we saw uh Razor Edge full form and pull up onto Metralius and, and take this this specific house away from them and all the other teams they had to kind of fight their way through uh yeah. I was kind of surprised to see the the small amount of teams uh staying inside like yasnaya though because it was there was quite a significant amount of yasnaya still in uh, i guess it's uh, it's us preaching often we say you're never going to the city unless you know so it, end, it ends there but still we sometimes often see you know these kind of um mm. hail marys that are just you know one two guys trying to survive for as long time as possible at this point there was actually only sauna boys and omakin that was that was in there uh inside the actual city and not in the prison or library yeah, cheeky commitments here and there. Sometimes we do see it going. Here is the Raise Your Edge, though, with 17 points here for this win. Digital Athletics and Northern Lights clean on their heels with the 10 pointer Roonies each here, uh, Frozen. Yeah, there were moments where, because Raise Your Edge had been quite passive for the most part there in that compound, I was a little bit scared as to whether or not somebody was going to come and steal it away. But the position proves too strong in the end, given the circle. I mean, they did uh, hold it down very good uh, towards the end yeah. there. But the thing is, like, when you're all grouped up like that, it's super easy for teams when they come in that they maybe they smoke you out and stuff like that. And you basically have nowhere to move. You have no information at all what's going on if they mm -hmm. would throw a few smokes on you instead of smoking yourself, which we saw uh, DA, we saw Son of, uh, sorry, uh, NLT do there towards the end. Ooh. But if they smoke Raise Your Edge instead, they would have a great chance to actually move in. Uh, the only threat would have been Monkey on the roof there. But, I yeah. mean, once again, if you just take him out because he's the only one you'll see, you can basically move anywhere. You can flank around and they will have no clue at yeah. all. Very big fan of Northern Lights' position here as they do very similar damage to Digital Athletics in this game, Martin. They had the top of uh, that building and it was like shooting fish in a barrel for the most part for them. Yeah, it was. They have been uh, consistent throughout the day for sure. Intent here, four kills, and the other guys on three. I uh, I gotta say though, a team we haven't talked too much about that's also been silently mm. consistent today is actually Omakin. They have 40 points so far today, and uh, they've had a really consistent day. The last three games, they've had f fourth places all the way through uh, with four, uh, five, and uh, four kills with that one. Seven yeah. kills in a second place in our second mirror mass. So they've really been silent consistent. And if you can keep that kind of consistency up, eight points on an average, you're definitely going to hit up in a, in a great spot.
T-Bone surviving towards the very end there with plenty of damage coming in for him. And it's 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 funny for, for us when we when we look at some of these big roster names like Omicron, like Team Liquid mm. and Navi or FaZe, there's often times in these group stages where we almost don't want to talk about them that much because we know we're going to end talking about them quite a bit later on. It's just, you know, as you say, it's fourth place is across the board, a second place in that top second game as well. Omicron been looking good. Yeah, they've been looking good, but one thing we do see is they keep a lot of uh, players alive on the team toward uh, until the late game. And then when they need to do this kind of uh, rushes or push where they know, okay, this is do or die time, they basically lose one, two or three players on that. And you have one guy left alive that's trying to snake his way in. Uh, I want to see them making a more proactive move a little bit earlier, maybe trying to make a play before that so that they have more players up towards the late uh, end game. Uh, if that happens, I feel like we're going to see them take home a uh, chicken dinner here tonight. Yeah, would be nice for the final game, of course. Let's take a look at those standings coming in. Shift W uh, in second still now with 90 points here. They they had a bit of a rough spot to actually try and get out of towards the later stages of the game, but that's that. Northern Lights moves up uh, three spots, 54 points throughout the day. Very nice, Martin. Very impressive considering they didn't play yesterday. They're literally in fourth with only five games played and the other teams that are playing today, Sound of Voice is one of them, but they, like, they've played six more games than them. Same as Liquid, 51 points, only played five games, Sound of Voice played 11 games, so that's uh, very, very impressive here. Ratio Edge with that win, they're putting themselves up to six bases here, 44 points. This is the kind of average you need to get in the top 16. But if you want to contest for the top, if you want to be a champion, you really need to get better uh, at the consistent top placement or start fragging out a lot harder. Yeah, definitely. So anything else that jumps out to you here whilst you look at the leaderboard for us? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to look for something here, but I'm not seeing too much. Uh, I mean, Shift W, again, we talked about them being top five so far in every game this game they got himself a sixth place with four kills that is okay. also super consistent but seeing sodom boys making a little bit of a move here coming back we saw him in the last game uh getting a third place with five kills and now in the previous one here as well getting a third place with three kills they surely are getting the placements right now but i want to see them frag out a little bit more because we know that they have that fragging power on that team they have showed us that in the past as well and it's time for him to bring that out yeah, fair, fair. Uh, a few placements moves up here for Apex. It's not been the easiest of days for them, but it's by the by. Uh, we'll see some more of them in the next day as well. After all, is one team that obviously right now is sat uh, dead last right now. But given what we saw in terms of a glimmer of hope for them, uh, Martin, when it came to their first day of uh, open bracket stages for DreamHack, that was an amazing performance. And I think a lot of hopes uh, for people were like, wow, well, after all, are they the next big team or one of the next big teams? Uh, but it's not been as easy a road for after all, despite them having some very good players. Yeah, they uh, they had some rough times here recently and also start off rough here. It's, uh, I'm not sure, like we've, we've seen a lot of great things from them, but then again, the meta changes slightly during periods and you see also so small meta changes and teams adapting to your strategy. And yeah. if you don't keep it fresh or kind of adapt ahead of the teams that are coming in and watching you every day and then suddenly playing against you then uh, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna end up well here we have a lot of new teams that are uh, like wanting to bite for the top wanting to get into the top mm. 16 um and and if you don't change or don't stay ahead of the curve then you're gonna get swallowed up yeah it always shows the depth i think of quality in oh, these yeah. kind of in this region especially in europe it's we have a, an amazing top lineup of rosters and then even just below that as well. Just a huge wealth of uh, not only experience, but also talent uh, here when it comes to some of these rosters. Uh, Fenerbahce is another team, Froz, that, you know, they're currently set at 44 points after those 11 games here. Um, but it's not too bad, all things considered, um, even though they had a bit of a rough start to this previous game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely some, uh, some rough starts, but at the same time, they are being sort of consistent here. They are making sure that they yeah. are getting the points, uh, especially yesterday. I feel like we saw a little bit more from them, especially in the start. Uh, I think in the first three games, they had two third places or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that is what we wanted to see coming into today as well. But it's been a little bit more rougher for them. And we're not seeing too much uh, from the games today coming out from them. And I mean, it's still there up there in the top 10 right now. And that kind of shows you 
that they have the potential. If you look at like the lineup that is below them, even though some of the teams have played less games, sure, yeah. but they are keeping themselves in the top 16 at least. Can we solve this mystery? How did AMLOL drown? Like, what happened? I, I my we should mind... solve another mystery. <laughs> What's the other mystery? The other mystery is that a lot of people have been pointing out that you're sitting in a green screen. Can you stand no. up and go around the couch? Well, I've got, wait, I mean, I've got like comfy <laughs> pants on. I should have said I have no it pants at all. Then I wouldn't have had to move, yeah. but. No, well, yeah, move. you have pants on. It's it's a real room. Wait, like, look, I can move things. There you go. It moves. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, what else? Can I throw something across the room? Maybe you can see that. I don't know. Anyway, the point is, it's a real room. All right. We've just got a new camera. We'll blur it out in the background. Froz stole the same camera from me because he has no creativity. What do you think about that, Froz? I don't know what you're talking about. I bought this camera, That's... then you bought the same <laughs> one. You have the same setup as me. What can I say? Literally I not first. true. All right. Anyway, it's the final game of the day. It's not a green screen. Frost is a faker. It's time to get into our game. We'll see you in a few. Toby and Hypoc, bring it. <laughs> Who brought the camera first? Is it a green screen? Some questions might get answered. Some game questions might not. The only answer we can find right now is that, well, this is the last game of the day. Now, let's have a good one. Hypoc, tough plane for south side rotations. Not so much. Hmm. Tough same for the north side rotations. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, I can't help but feel like we're going somewhere funky with this one. Um... <laughs> is that a prim? Are we getting Primorsk <laughs> again? Are we getting that Primorsk uh, ending again? I'm just... Just trying to, again, pull up, going to come down to Soznovka. That was similar to the last game, but this south mm. coast is what uh, what I'm going to be looking at because obviously the usual suspects, Wildcats over in Milta, obviously Shift W and Apex and Na'Vi all the way stretching down to Ferry Pier. Raise your edge actually coming down to the mix as well, right at the end of the playing path. So, uh, yeah, but, I mean, not as much of an overlap as you'd maybe see, but a little bit of madness over here. VSS actually getting sent over. <laughs> towards the rangers as they try and take some vehicles and dip but um yeah this this could be a messy one it sure as hell today. can everyone's down south and if the circle stays around here it's gonna be a cluster of teams trying to make their way to military and as a matter of okay. fact it doesn't even with that though this is the uh the ultimate field ending area i feel like the odds of you getting a field ending in this first circle is bigger than you not getting one there are so damn many fields south and west of um, of Pachinki that it hurts the eyes to watch. And look towards the east, how many teams will have to transition into this. I'm looking at After All, I'm looking at Omakin, looking at, hell, I even want to say Face Clan. There's a universe where they rotate north around from this circle. Yeah, there, there, there definitely is. It's going to be the area that they're going to be assuming is the least congested, but they have got a bit of a situation to the north. It depends how quickly Fenerbahce can get out of there. And obviously the range is where they end up settling or deciding to rotate in through but uh yeah i mean sauna boy is able to really stretch out and i mean they are spread thin right now you can look how far out they are looting hmm. thanks goose didn't it seem like you needed that vehicle <laughs> anyway so i'm just gonna Grab a hold of that, get looted on the west side of Yasnaya and get uh, going us out, please. If I go alongside what oh the Uzi. It's back in play. Maybe it's a meta thing, you know? Maybe they're just bring maybe they're making a statement with the Uzis coming into the city, two guys on a who buggy. Was who was it in the last game? It was, was Riddle. It? Riddle from uh, from Fenerbahce, yeah. I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's um, now another team is opting to go for the same meta. They saw it and they were like, damn. That's a lot of street cred you're going to earn yourself if you get kills with an he's, OC. He's planted and the he seed. Did. Yeah, now he's picked up an M16. It's, this is going to be... This is uh, this has high-caliber competitive gameplay written all over it if they do maintain control of those guns. No, jokes aside, Liquid are known to make some pretty interesting west side splits on these circles. And I'm thinking, I mean, if you're Liquid and you know that the Sauna Boys loot down towards the Gat Carrier, you know they split. If you punish that early... You're going to get free positions because Sound Boys is a team that backs out early. And also, if you're lucky, you might get a kill on a team that doesn't rotate fast enough. It is. And I, I mean, that's where we've seen Liquid really 
kind of put that early split gameplay that they've been employing recently i mean really really put it into effect as this here again you you got to assume with that plane knowing how many people drop in the first half and obviously how many roughly players are left in the plane they're going to know that a lot of this territory is uh, unoccupied right now so i'm expecting them to go for something ballsy they're going full speed forward I like the uh, I like the aggression. Apex knowing there is there is available for them. In the meantime, BB trying to do a drive by, not succeeding in doing so. Ooh. Teams on the other hand, those managed to find Mesa. What did I say? Rotate early, get the compound you want, because mm -hmm. the Sonar boys will back off. And if you're lucky, get a kill, because they are simply too slow rotating out. This has been a trouble. For, or this has been a uh, an issue for the Sonar boys before. And just like that, we see them punished for doing the uh, I guess too late reaction once again. Yeah, it is. And I mean, ultimately, that is the best team that Liquid could get a kill on coming into this. Because, uh, I mean, we commented on it. We saw the, the map, obviously, how thinly spread the Sauna Boys were across that area. It's very easy to isolate a player so quickly like that. And ultimately, you know, when they're driving away, you know that their, their teammates aren't close by on the hill or anything like that. There would be absolutely no reason for them to be set up at this stage of the game on that hill. Mm. So that's the reason we saw them give chase in vehicles out of the compound. We let loose the uh, the idea that face might up to rotate all the way over here. Naya, that didn't happen. They're going over potato. A lot of other teams are going up that direction, though. Texas Rangers already up there. You have Fenerbahce making their way in that direction, too. And you still have two teams in Yasnaya having to kind of figure out what they want to do. And then you have Pink Pandas. Is what I want to call them all the time, because that is the most obvious thing to call them. But they are ponies, after all, making their way over Gatka. I was just waiting to make that mistake, by the way. I've been really trying not to say pink pandas all day. <laughs> but they are they are the pink ponies. They're going to make their way in. Over, 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 God, can I, can I, I kind of like them opting to sit north as they haven't really had a chance to scout anything further forward. Yeah, you're right. FaZe, actually, again, you got to assume they know that Liquid are going to be gone early from Pachinki. So a lot of this is going to be unoccupied with the timing on this rotation. So... Going to head over towards Highway. Maybe the Yellow Houses to the north towards Double Whites. Still a lot of players to come in. We've got four teams still on the north side of the Rosok River. Omakan, Fenerbahce, the Rangers, and After all. And just down south of that, we've got the Wildcats and DA, which is what's on screen right now. You can see they're passing each other, crossing paths in rotation. A little bit of a seat swap, but oh. uh, actually it's going to be BSD that finds one of DA out of the Dacia. So that could be problematic. We're obviously going to peel back a little bit off this. The Wildcats are still trying to pressure towards them, though. I have to admit, as much as I'm enjoying the mechanical aspect of people being good at doing drive flies, that's what I thought Mert finds one she created. Are you going to go down as well now? They're committing to the rest here. I kind of like it. And they're now all trapped in the dip. I was going to say, as much as I like the mechanical aspect of these drive-bys, because it takes a lot of skill to really, like, do them successfully, and these guys are getting damn good at it, I must say, I miss the times where if you wanted to have an on-rotation fight with someone, you had to bump your vehicle into the opponent, see who flipped first, and who could stop and get out of the <laughs> yeah. car first. Like, back in those yep. days where you really had to, like, full commit to the challenge, because she can drive by, shoot a little, keep on driving, no. It's all or nothing. You have to stop your vehicle, you need to risk losing that rotation, in order to take the fight, those were those were fun times. But still, kudos to the guys for, uh, for for the skills they possess in order to make those things work. I prefer when you had to full on pit maneuver people though in the field. Just ram Just them, arrest, yeah. arrest them, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Got to go full police car on it. Maybe that's what we need. Instead of horns, you gotta. Is that the new thing? Like car skins, but it's sounds instead, like different horns on the vehicle, so you can get like police sirens and different things like that. That will be. Um, that'd be next level i'm down for it I'm down for uh, it yeah it would make chasing yeah, people up let, front you could add a police siren to it <laughs> that would be perfect actually that on the two-seater because that was the original <laughs> pit maneuver <laughs> just grabbing the two-seater and just ramming a you as exactly well one can only hope maybe there's a def sitting out there enjoying all the uh, weird and wonky ideas Hypok and I are throwing at them. And just uh, just let us know. Let us know if you're out there. Let us know. And uh, 
if you want to. Feel free to add an RDS. Of course, there's going to be royalties. I'm going to take a, a mere 5%. Time, right? I mean, they, they rotated Sendo over Eastern position, and now... Have we seen a kill that hasn't been a drive-by yet in this game? I don't think so. It, it's all involved vehicles, but after we're actually going to get the better at Shift W initially here with this. What? Not going to kill you guys still up. Kill you guy gets another seat swap here. Greg going to try and tap him out with the SLR, but Zocker not able to really get involved in this fight just yet. And there you go, actually, he's going to hear the pull up. The engine did kick back up there, so Greg holding this angle on Zocker. Is the enemy going to try and drive by him? No, he's going to hop out. Thank you. <laughs> We've seen enough drive bys for the next three days of games, I feel like, in this game alone. At least attempted drive bys, that is, Zucker. Playing it safe, he knows that he has Kildikai further back to maybe try and help hold the angle. Oh my lord, he'd been in the car, that would have been a perfect nade. Kildikai now in a car, trying to rotate it up and help maybe get a better angle than where he was already positioned. Or maybe it's a bait! Maybe it's a bait for his teammates, but the first one gets the second! Confirmed oh, 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 as well, oh. Sucker! What a transfer! And they're going to be able to get both the reds up, both of that one as well. And now Apex committing to it, intense walls up on the roof. He's going to go down instantly after. So once again, Apex, while off to a good start, this was the team that dealt with them last game, that turned what could have been a winning game into a... Well, not so much winning one as they went down north of heaven. Now, let's see if they can find themselves a bit of a revenge. Intense, still somewhat restable. Ivel is down to low HP out towards the east, but they have a chance of pushing forward down towards pull-up. Yeah, the door swings open. Simsy's going to see that, so he knows the player is close by in the kitchen. Ivel taking a lot of damage, though. He's got to put some smokes down. He does get the first aid off, but... Intense just dodging oh. the ball off the roof here. He manages to get off, but I will not really able to convert too much damage from this off angle. This game has been all over the place. And the fun thing is, I mean, the circles really ain't that tough. It's just because the plane was so far south. There were so many teams already kind of in the midst of the chaos by the time the circle popped. And there's just not enough space for all these teams to rotate. That's why we see so many teams run into each other. Areas you think are going to be clear and available early on, they're not there at all. And teams that have had a tough day are trying to make up for points by going a little more aggressive and is catching other teams off guard. You see now Ivor trying to get a little bit closer now to help out. They do get Intense back on the feet, which is actually pretty huge because he's going to get a nade knock. Creator will fall. Vanti now trying to get a little more pressure. Sims is going to find him with the barrel. So just one standing for pull-up now, and here you go. That's that's definitely the go signal for them. They need to commit to this. The rest did come up. There's going to be two guns pointing. Will they get them down though? Intense, nice prone down. Gets the first. Will they get the second? Yes, they will. Door to be closed. Don't reveal the murder that happened in the bathroom there. Apex, once again, staying alive this time around. Unfortunately, only with three, but they get to deal with the bullies from last game. A good recovery after losing Calvin at the start of that fight there for Apex. Not going to see a repeat of the previous game. Code Marco finds, well, I say an easy one, but uh, anyway, kind of pull it up right on top of them. So more of a delivery than anything. Just two members of DA out here, actually. There's uh, one still alive elsewhere. I know they lost one earlier on over by Shelter, but uh, you can see it's actually Smash. Yeah, you can see him on the minimap now. He's way south of uh, Highway. And Pancho's got himself into Pachinki Red. The rest of his teammates are up at Ice Cream at double wide. Oh, no. The circle doesn't look tough on the map. There's plenty of space. There's plenty of teams here already. But believe me, casual PUBG viewer, this circle is god awful. Because where the hell is your approach? And how does Navi regroup here? Because I feel like they have to. Yeah. Yeah, they should. Oh. Smash is going to get tapped out of that US. Lining it up for him. He was ready and waiting. If there's one angle you don't want to come into that building from, that's the one right there. DA sending two inside, trying to push forward. They want to clear this out before they move further. And if you looked at the map, I mean, look at the uh, remaining Tempo Express. They aren't there at all. Code Marco ready to shoot. Mert at his back turn. Wasn't ready for it at all. But fortunately, it works. And now, well, Shift W. Air drive by all the places before. Let's see if they can continue on that track. Or if Spiro is going to get the better of them. Yeah, Spiro, got to be careful here, though, because he's uh, he's caught out in the open here. Luckily, brexco has got to stick the kit. You can see Kyokai coming over from the east, trying to find an angle. Brexco's actually going to find Spiro before he gets away, but Tulin's 
will get out of there though and that will give shift w an opportunity to pull up and find themselves an edge position here on the south side Four people up. That vehicle is probably one you want to swap as soon as you can. Chris is looking further forward as well. Is there anything available towards the west? Nah. Let's just head back towards the north. Go into the forest. See what we can find from there, and uh, and make our ways, make our ways potentially out across the field. I mean, Navi, as expected, have opted to go back down the hill. The pink ponies are rotating side by side with the Texas Rangers. Is this going to be a fight? Is this going to be a drive-by? Is this going to be upside down buggy? Well, that's it is, but no kills to be confirmed off of it. All right, and this is uh, TTSN and top, obviously the teammates of who we just saw getting into it with uh, DA down at Pachinki Red, but need to find a way into the circle still. They were previously over at Ice Cream next to Everest, but uh, now trying to find a ways in on the west. And this for me is the worst part of the circle, really, especially considering that yeah. shift. A lot of teams are going to gravitate towards the area they're headed towards. We will have to get really, really fortunate in order to be able to claim anything up in the northwest area. Wildcat's already here. Pink Pony's coming in here as well. And if you're the Texas Rangers, pff, I don't even know where you're headed. Try, maybe try to wreck back east and see if you can get a spot in the forest. That'd be where to go. But DA, <laughs> they've seen them. They've heard them. They're pulling up down. And in the meantime, the Pink Ponies and Wildcats going to have a little bit of a fight here. One falls instantly. Rupture, nice spray coming in. Could be kill number two for the Wildcats in this game. They might get the third one. They might get the fourth oh, one. They're no. all over the place. Getting them down. BSD is foul. But if they get the flush here fast enough, there might be a rest opportunity. Yeah, uh, there isn't. She created. I'm going to close that one out. Vampire will fall. Pink Pony eliminated in 14th place. The circle just slightly off west side of center, but looking good for FaZe again with that early rotation. Mm. Shift W coming into the mix now, pulling up onto the backside of the dog hill. Nice rotation from Shift W there as well. They were set out in the forest. They scouted forward. They saw the hillside was clear. And they just full speed sent it up the hill. Really, really smart rotation on their part. It's a dangerous spot to be in, though, because you know there's teams on both sides. You can see Apex, Na uh, Liquid, and Navi shooting towards them at the same time. While they're trying to kind of alleviate some of that pressure, they have Omar and pushing up on the hill with them in their direction. DA, though, well, they know that the Texas Rangers are here. And <laughs> I think Texas knows that that the DA were here. Yep, a little bit of honk salute as they leave. And now Shift W, the fight we were just talking about, could happen. Will. GMT, try and run off. Will he leave? For now, it seems like he will. It seems he's actually going to... Yeah, not going to kill for you. We know that's the situation slightly off to the north side of this, so it could become a factor later on. Shift W. Again, it's a tricky push in any of those spots up on top of that hilltop. Hmm. Really, really difficult to close down the distance between teams there. Rangers do find themselves to the Wizard Tower, which isn't a bad spot, to be honest with you, Toby. But only as a duo. I'm not sure what else they're going to be able to get done in this game. You can sit there for now, but you won't be able to do a whole lot more with it. First phase, trying to spray down the DA players. Won't be able to connect anything, as a matter of fact. You've got a few shots in return, but as you can see, <laughs> you're really not in a good spot here. If you're a player from Digital Athletics, prone down all they can do in this spot. If first face does repeat it, find himself code Marco, and that's going to be DA out in 13th in the final game of the day. Face able to alleviate the pressure, pushing forward towards them as they now take their attention up the hill. And in the meantime, Ray Church, winners of last game. Let's see what they can do here. Yeah, got themselves a good position on the edge of Quarry again. Since the changes are Angle 2.0, I haven't seen too many endings actually in Quarry itself. I've seen one or two in, over in North America, but it's always nice when we get to explore a new part, which is why I was happy we had the docks down on the south coast yesterday. It's always mm. nice to see how a game plays out there, but uh, yeah. meanwhile, uh oh, Sauna Boy is going to pull right up on top of FaZe here, Toby, and this is a difficult compound to fight around. It sure is. Let's see if AT can hold off. It does have ghost up there. And actually, now Uba is over here to help out as well. Not sure exactly where Fuzz is positioned, but they will try and utilize any sort of help they can. In the meantime, Shift W. Well, they hit down Shift W, and it ends up getting them killed. Omarkin will take them out. Clean, swift engagement. Ghost uh. out. Tries to get a knock. It won't happen. No, he pushes up the ass. He's going to fall as well. Anonymous wins that trade. Great shooting for the guys. From Finland, Sonoboy is staying strong for now. Haven't lost a single player in this engagement thus far. 
And now first face and Uber will need to stay put here. But get the bit. They're pushing it from the side. Uber falls first dose immediately after that's clipped from outside on the south side. Just like that, face clan are eliminated. Yeah, rough games today for FaZe Clan, but uh, they get themselves a head start. Meanwhile, Omicron, who just dealt with Shift W in very quick fashion, now getting a lot of pressure from Na'Vi and the Northern Lights down at the hangar compound. You see how much space there is inside the circle for Razor Your Edge to go forward into. But you can see Monkey already trying to pressure down and capitalize on some of these kill points on the south side. Liquid taking over the fight that was happening before. Now they're engaging with Sonda Boys and uh, Omak in the meantime. If they can clear out Navi here, they're going to have a lot of space towards that east side of the circle to push in from. Jemsey knows there's a player still down the hill. He's going to spot Best Nice Ooh, headshot, headshot comes in, finds the flush on him as well. Eight kills for Omak. And as the analyst desk was saying, while it hasn't been all that flashy today, Omak has actually had himself a pretty decent day overall currently, sitting on fourth. On the uh, on the day, it's just been placements, and whenever they haven't had placement points, kill points have been there for the monkey. Now finds the first kill for Ratio Edge. Let's see if they get something going here against Northern Lights. Yeah, Fenibachi making a move over from the west side, and that's going to be over towards Razor Edge, or at least the, the northern side of Razor Edge's split. I should say it's not really a split; they're just kind of spread across this area of the map here. Monkey still trying to hold down. Couple of these players from Northern Lights from getting free access onto the hill. But he is going to have to give a little bit of it up here. Aduzi and Shiv kind of tunneled north here. Udir pulling back a little bit, but he's just grabbing a vehicle. I want to see somebody come over to Monkey and try and hold mm. down this edge here. I mean, I think it's a matter of time before Omar and Ray Shirts are forced to take the fight to one another. The thing is, Ray Shirts, I mean, how many sides can they clear before the fight really escalates? There's currently five teams, or four teams make that inside this compound and to be fair meanwhile it looks clunky and wonky they don't have to fight each other right now because they're all inside the circle i don't think anyone really is going to be willing to make that move but about you in the meantime trying to make a crossing on the field ray church have a chance to prevent that from happening but don't succeed in doing so they will be allowed to push to the dip on the other side yeah, wildcats also pressuring over on the north side here but uh oh Again, not able to do too much damage. And now there's five teams involved in the compound, Toby. <laughs> Here comes the fifth. Riddle will fall, Mr. Sadat. Gonna have to try and find an entry of the apex, and he's just going to try and walk in the front door. But uh, Did he not realize that he was getting it. shot from that building? No, that really isn't it. That's called over-rotating, uh, friends. You had a chance to stop early up. They did, and then they pay the price forward. Out in ninth place, they fall just short of placement points. Now, a knock comes in for Sona boys, but it's immediately traded in return. Jeems falls, but so does Anonymous, and that might mean that that engagement is going to be paused for a little while. Bad tool in the meantime falls. I thought maybe Northern Alliance could become a third-party factor in the fight. Just about to happen between Ray Shirts and Omakin, but no, they fall first. Now, let's see. T-Bone is on his own with Monkey and Udir nearby. And down south, it should be a proper 2v2, but Udir already has eyes on. Yeah, Aduzi and Shiv actually in a disgusting off angle here. Not going to expect this backstab at all from the same spot they just dealt with the final member of Northern Lights from. T-Bone did spot Monkey on the rock here. The molly up is going to force him off and Jemti picks him off as soon as he comes off the rock. Fantastic opening for Omakun in this fight here. Shiv and Aduzi need to make something happen from this position now. They've got to get some value off this. Desperate to do the thing of this is whichever team wins this engagement is going to be pretty much top three guaranteed. There's going to be so much space for them to run around. Oh, Aduzi oh, no. saw the buggy. And an opponent now gave up his position to Jemsey. Falls that Nate looks good to me. Will it take down Vasco? No, it won't. Just a bit too far. He's even going to be able to get the first aid off. But look at the amount of utility being thrown in the direction of Omar. And they need to bag off. They need to try and buy themselves some more time. Unfortunately, the circle ain't going to allow them to do so. Circle's crossing in. Oh dear. Trying to stay put. T-Bone will fall. That's actually Ivo from a bargain zone. And now Vasco, solo player, trying to do the work, but it ain't going to happen. Once again, Rachel Edge stands strong in the meantime. Now the fight has to ensue here in the compound. Everyone has to make a move except for the Texas Rangers, who are going to wait and wait. Oh no. Apex trying to send it up to the front door of the barn. And Pop and TTSN going to combine Intense and Simsy with four. Ivo, the last man standing now. Apex on eight kills. So a much better game from them again this time around. But let's see what he can done get done before he goes out. He's going to walk back to the one story here. And I think he's actually in there. 
You can see the player oh. mark on the minimap is overlapping, but Nookie gonna flush out Ibby there. That will be Liquid yeah. falling in sixth place. Three guys pushing up that side. That ain't gonna, ain't gonna, ain't gonna happen, Ibby. It's not, uh, not the same thing we saw in Miramar earlier today with Mexi. But look at that. While all this chaos ensued, Wildcats have been able to take full control of the hill. Now they are somewhat vulnerable to Ray Edge. They have a chance of getting good, good position and good, uh, good couple of kills out of this if they can third party it. Probably. Let's see. Nate, oops, ain't gonna go anywhere. Outside goes, and I'm thinking Wildcats. I mean, while the engagement is happening inside the compound, they have to been kind of focused on that. The remaining Wildcats players need to try and deal with what's uh, with what's happening towards the south. If they can take out Racer Edge, it should have Wildcats written all over it. Rangers now just trying to get as much utility down to try and lift this one. Oh my god, they come bursting through. <laughs> bursting through the smoke. One foul Full swoop. Sort of boys will be the ones to conquer the compound. Ivel's still alive on the lower side, though. You see he's tanking a little bit of blue. He's going to try and get around to the south side of the building just to cut off some sight lines, maybe. Oh, good little prone spot, actually. But the shift mm -hmm. is... Uh, no bueno now. for the compound. <laughs> the shift is in 20 seconds, and I will. Well, I think it's just a matter of time at this point. You gotta give it to Sounder Boys, though. I believe it was uh, Mark Avenger saying earlier that they need to step up here if they wanted to get something going on a wrangle. And to be fair, I mean, third, third, now they find themselves in the top four once again. Great final three games for uh, for Sonic Boys. So they're really making up for a, I guess you can say, somewhat terrible start they had. On the Miramar game. So uh, let's see. Ivo, he's smiling. He's trying to make the run on Inu. <laughs> it was going to be uh, a matter of uh, luck if he was going to make that crawl. I see a smile all over his face, though. Can't really make more of that one. Unfortunate fourth place for Apex. But they go down and now Ray Church. They are not really forced to move anywhere, but I'm surprised to see Wild gets not aggressive more because they know, they know that Thorner Boys is coming in from the other side. And because they didn't aggress earlier, they are now going to be the ham in the sandwich. Yeah, Levent's position could be deadly here for Sauna Boys if they try and push up. It's a good nade in from She Created, actually. Did 45 damage onto Anonymous. The second going to do 40 damage onto Nookie at the back there as well. So if Levent can get something done from this flank position, Wildcats might be able to stop Sauna Boys getting any further up this hill. Wildcats, 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 you need to do so much damage. You're desperate and need to take down Sonar Boys in a matter of seconds if you want to prevent Right Edge from being able to push into this one. That's a lot in hand of She Created. But Sonar Boys have turned on the thrusters. He's going to be crucial. He's going to be, he's going to stay down there. He's going to stay in yeah. that flank spot in order to get them down. Oh my God, if he picks up at the right time. If he gets up here, that's one shot shooting instantly. Gets the first one, gets the second one, almost gets the nice. third one. That was exactly what they needed. Clean, swift kills coming in. Levent, you're dead. She created, turn the hell around and be ready to take the fight to raise your edge. I think they're going to commit to this res here. Rupture, going to have to hold the line here. Shiv. Right up on top of him as well as Udyr, but Udyr's going to find it with the AK. Rupture will fall. It's now a 3v3. With Razor Edge trying to storm their way down the side of this hill. Could they get themselves the back-to-back -back here in the final game? Shiv oh, nearly getting caught off guard by BSD, but he's going to respond. He will land the shots, unlike BSD. He will fall. The Wildcats the now, point. they need a miracle. That was the plank that was the eyes on the side, and it's all crumbling. For the Wildcats, Levent, you got a double just before. Now you need to get a triple. If you want to win, that's what it ain't going to happen. Race your edge. Able to come back in this one and get themselves two chicken dinners in a row on a wrangle. What a hell of a game. Yeah, fantastic way to close out a day. I mean, going back to back is is always fantastic. But to finish the day in that manner is 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 really, really good for Race Your Edge. Because, I mean, they've been quiet, right? They struggled. We talked about the underperformance on Miramar. Uh, so really, really big confidence boost for them coming into, uh, well, the next set of games, obviously next weekend for them. And as quiet as the win was on yes in Yasnaya just before this one, they were fighting all the way through the middle of it and through the end of it. Great game for Rage Rich to bring double wins in there. Let's see what the desk had to say of this one in closing out the day.
Thank you, Mr. Windblast. We have the back-to-back -back from Raise Your Edge. They're raising the stakes. The hashtag, let's crush in it. That's what they do. It's an interesting hashtag. I think it's to do with poker. But there you go. We got Martin and Patrick here joining me once again to break down what's going on. Raise Your Edge, Martin. Back-to-back. -back. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Like, they uh, they had a massive step out. Like, yesterday, they had some rough games. Jeans taking over Mizu here. But... They yesterday has some rough games, stepping up and having mm. one hell of a day over the back-to-back. -back. The first two games out of 15th and a 10th place, zero points. Then they started getting back into it. A 6th place with uh, two kills and an 8th place for placement points. And here in the previous game before this one, seven kills and a chicken dinner. And now getting this one as a winner is like really showing what they're capable of, but they really need to step their game up on uh, Miramar, that's for sure. Froz, nice nice i mean it was a very questionable performance from race your edge until the last two games today they only had five points coming into uh game five but then again as you said 17 points there and then 19 in the previous one here now 36 points in these last two games that's gonna put them up there but you also gotta consider how they've been playing so far hopefully this is the step up they're doing and they're gonna keep this up because yesterday oh. wasn't the greatest of days either 22 points overall uh but they had good control here and uh that's what we want to see from them uh we know that they have the potential to do that and they have the roster they have a really good roster and they showed us that yeah. in pcs2 as well yeah definitely so as you can see from the previous moves as well they were able to pick up a few people on transition uh texas rangers getting themselves a few nice cheeky kills here as well apex stuck between a rock and a hard place as sims might say here uh as and towards the end, I think Ivel knew his time was nigh, Martin. <laughs> yeah, I think so too here. The line, nice flank from Ray Shirtshire, they were really, they were taking advantages and capitalizing on the knock. I would say though, they were in a, in a stand-up 3v3 if they, they took it up, but they really took the time to capitalize on this. Look at this as well, only six points for our bottom uh, eight teams. That is uh, really <laughs> impressive. And Navi finishing off the day with a... a kind of rough performance from them uh faceland as well also had a pretty rough day so far but again coming off such a strong day yesterday they can have uh, they can have time for some uh, fun five teams to have double digits and three to have 12 points in total that is very impressive let's go yeah you're right that's very impressive indeed Ormican with 11 kills once again uh Froz, and as you were mentioning in terms of their stability here throughout today a second a fourth a fourth a fourth there was an 11th at the beginning, but let's ignore that. And then a fifth place in terms of the kill points coming in, I should say, at least. Just brilliant stuff mm. from Omakin today. I mean, this is what we were missing from Omak, and we know that they have the fragging power, but so far today, we've seen them get the placement points, but the kills hasn't really mm. been there compared to where they're getting the placements. Now, seeing them getting 11 kills here in the last game, it's so, so nice. Even if they get a seventh place, they could have kept on going, but, I mean, they were just getting swarmed by people towards the end there. Uh, but I mean, it's just amazing to see. Now we know that they have this as well. They have the kills and uh, they've gone a little bit under the radar the whole day, but yeah, it's just amazing to see. Out of all the people to step up when we asked them to, Istanbul Wildcats, we were saying that, you know, they'd had a rough time here, Martin. She created for a long time was possibly the focal point of that roster. But people like Levent being able to step up and then show it here with, if, with his ethereal hair. I love it. It's great stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I love you pointing out that it's ethereal. I would call it spiritual, but that's also nice. They were able to step up. They had a fantastic day. Uh, Omakin, again, also closing out the day quite nicely. They were able to take 12 points in this one. Gemti with a standout performance with five kills. We didn't shift also more than 500 damage on both of them. And uh, Ratio Edge really, uh, really stepped up in the last two. Also a surprise performance, as Nuki is always surprised with his fantastic eyebrows. Always important. We have to point out the eyebrows every single time. If we don't, then what's the point in talking about? Uh, yeah, exactly. fantastic stuff. <laughs> uh, and it's been quite the day in terms of not only consistency from some of the rosters, if you think about Pink Ponies as well, getting themselves a few second places, a third place hit here, Mar uh, Froz even, I should say. Just brilliant stuff from some of the rosters that we just didn't expect it from. I mean, yeah, we were already surprised yesterday when they played pretty decently. Yeah. And today has been even better. And this is what you kind of want to see from them right that, that what was we were talking sorry what we were talking about in the uh earlier today mm. that they will just grow more they will get more experience the further in we go here in the group stage 
All right, and our interview is ready for the final moments for today as we've rounded things out here for day number two. Let's talk to Team Liquidu. We've got 17 on the line. How are you doing, 17? What's up, boys? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for asking. How are you guys doing? Yeah, not too bad at all. Not too bad. Uh, so you guys coming off the back of uh, the uh, DreamHack win, uh, looking pretty darn impressive. And today, uh, double wins as well. Um, is this is this now the iteration of Team Liquid for you that you feel is going to be taking you guys to the heights of taking the PCS3 uh, trophy? Yeah, I mean, that's always the goal. Uh, we feel like we're in a pretty good position where we're, we're learning and growing. Um, we know our potential is very high. Uh, and that just makes it kind of easier to where every day we know we have to come in and work hard and try and improve. So we know what our potential is, and now it's just about like ironing out any uh, wrinkles we have in specific games or zones and things like that. Yeah. All right, Martin. Cool. I uh, I want to ask you what uh, what did you see from the games yesterday and it kind of the team's view on what today. What have the teams that you've been playing against had the most improvements from last PCS, or what has the surprises been from the teams that are new coming in? Yeah, I mean, group stages is always uh, an interesting uh, obstacle to tackle. Um, there's some new teams that pop up out of different regions that we're not familiar with, new players, things like that, um, which can often change the dynamics. Uh, our goal is just to adapt to any lobby that we're in. Um, some, some teams are obviously... Uh, Impressing, you know, playing really well. Uh, Bystanders, for example, is uh, a team that gave us a run for our money in DreamHack, and uh, they, you know, played pretty decently yesterday as well. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple of new teams that are uh, popping up, and we got our eye out on them. I think Pink Pink played pretty well today, I believe, or you know, overall mm. throughout uh, the past uh, this event. So yeah, we're just looking out for a couple new up and coming teams. But uh, group stage is always just about survival. It's just about getting through it. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you fall. Of course, you don't want to be, you know, in that 12 to 16 range. Um, but we just want to play well. We don't really care if we finish top one in the group. We just want to be in that top five and know that we played well. So, All right. Patrick? Uh, coming in here now, of course, uh, you guys come from a uh, back-to-back win and now playing here. What do you feel like uh, is the biggest change you guys have done lately uh, in terms of gameplay on the team? Uh, I feel like the communication is really good. We've kind of slowed things down a little bit. Uh, I felt like we were playing rushed at times in the past. Um, everyone's feeling comfortable now, you know, clip coming in. Uh, every, you know, it takes a little bit of adaption period where everyone feels starts to feel comfortable with saying um, what their thoughts are, what they believe, and like what, you know, for issues or for things we did well. Um, so, yeah, I think that we're in a spot where everyone's comfortable with you know, taking and giving criticism and, and we're just kind of building on that. So I think the biggest change is mm -hmm. that we've slowed down uh, what we're doing and we're trying to, you know, work on the thing, uh, like implement the things that we work on when we do practices, so. Mm. I, I actually have a follow-up question. It's a bit specific. So I, if you can't, if you don't have a specific answer to it, that's no problem at all. Um, but obviously you guys are in the same group as DA, Miramar is a, you know, you guys have this conflict going on in the first, in the first uh, encounter with them today, you kind of just murdered them. Uh, but is a DA step up in quality that we've seen over the last event and this one a little bit more, a little bit of a worry to you guys on Miramar specifically, or do you not mind too much? Um, we kind of try and focus on what's in our control. Obviously, DA has yeah. been improving. They're playing better. Uh, they have a lot of good fraggers, and now they have a great coach in Sixmo, I believe. So um, they're definitely, you know, we've, we've noticed their improvement. Uh, we're not really, like, too cautious about any team. Uh, it doesn't matter who's, like, in our way. We're confident that we're going to fight against them, and we're mm. going to win most of the time. Um, sure, there's some times where we're going to lose fights to, to really strong teams, and there's times where we're going to lose fights to teams that aren't even strong. Um, but that's just the nature of the game. Uh, we try and just, you know, take every fight with the same approach and uh, make sure that we're doing our best. And then afterwards, you know, a, a big part of it is afterwards looking at it honestly and saying, like, were we just in a shit position? Um, yeah. Like, were the circumstances against us? Uh, those sorts of things. And then, you know, audit it that way. All right. Well, fantastic answer. Thank you very much, 17. Uh, any final shouts you'd like to give before we let you go? Uh, just looking forward to the rest of uh, these group stages. Uh, good luck to the other teams, and make sure you stay tuned in and watch. 
Thank you very much, friend. Good luck. See you later. <laughs> Have a good one, buddy. Awesome stuff. That was 17 uh, from Team Liquid joining us here. Always good to get the coach's perspective as well uh, to kind of round things out. Oftentimes, we get to talk to a lot of the players, but coaches, fantastic as well. Uh, some great answers. Very, I was very interested. It just kind of came to me about the DA thing. I, I was definitely interested to see how their perspective is since they are effectively neighbors, I suppose, on Miramar and they've run into each other a lot in the past. Uh, but a great day of yep. games, nonetheless. A great two days of games, nonetheless, here. Look at those oh. big old moves, Martin. Big moves. That is uh, really impressive to see mm. these guys come up in the top nine uh, and take over. Obviously, there are some teams that have been playing uh, two days now, and then some of them is not in the top nine, it's, and they've yep. had some rough time. Uh, Navi had two fantastic games to begin with. Uh, I was really liking and hoping to see that they were going to continue that. Uh, but they had some really rough games here. The last four games they only had four points. So I'm hoping to see that they will improve on that tomorrow. Uh, they usually come back extremely strong, though. Fantastic. Uh, Frost, thoughts before we move on from the standings? I think it's great that we see, like, this is what we're talking about before everything starts as well. You can see new teams shining here in the group stage, new talent showing up. I feel like Pink Pony, like, they're one of them. Look at how far up they are. Sure, they have played um, a bit more games than some other teams right now, uh, playing both of the days. But you also have, of course, a team like Sonom Boys. We saw them having a rough time after the first few games yesterday. But today, mm -hmm. they've been bringing it back. In the last three games, they had a third place on each of those games, uh, grabbing yeah. himself a lot of points, putting himself up there. So it's always great to see this kind of things happening. And... We're not too surprised to see teams like OMAC and Liquid, Northern Lights getting up there in just one day because they're big names, they're big teams, and there's a reason for that. I mean, look at it this way, Froz. There were eight teams that have played two days right now, and Pink Pony was third out of those eight. So brilliant stuff by them uh, right. when all things are considered in terms of the talent in Europe, as we mentioned before, and also the talent in that group. There is one constant that remains. Face Clan does not move because they're just really good at the video game. Uh, gentlemen, that is it for day number two here, groups A and C. Tomorrow, we're going to have B and C going up against one another. It's been a great day. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, to everybody tuning in around the world. We are going to head off now and we'll be back same time, same place for more PUBG action tomorrow for PCS3 EU. Bye for now.